everybody. Welcome to the English broadcast for the next tournament. We're starting off with an amazing show match, but first let's introduce some of our talent. I'm Lemon Kiwi, and this is Leg Day, and our two talented teams starting off this amazing tournament is the Shanghai Dragons versus the Guangzhou Charge. Two powerhouses in Asia, but there's a third introduction to make. We've got Jay on production today. Thank you for Monkey uh, to Monkey Bubble for helping make this English broadcast of Vanetti's Esports X Tournament Summer a reality. We've been looking to try and get it to be a little bit more clean for a while. They've helped us make the leap. But speaking of clean, the clean players are going to be coming from some very special players. Speaking of which, we've got Gaguri in today. Very, very interesting. Apparently, Shanghai Dragons are going to be pulling out their Zaya specialist or their substitute off tank in place of Void for today's matchup. So you are all in for a treat. It's about time. I haven't seen Gregory play <laughs> in is forever. <laughs> yes, the queen is here. Frog queen herself. I mean, people on Reddit were wondering, where is Gaguri? Is she still on this roster? Yes, she is. I mean, it's hard because Shanghai roster have a substitute for almost every player on the team. And Void has been just a top Sigma in Apex. So, of course, Gaguri hasn't had her chance to shine. But in, in a show match like this, where there's not much on the line besides the pride, uh, it's cool to not reveal your strats and try out some of your bench players. Yeah, when in doubt, just give over some uh, give over some bench time to people who need to see some play, be part of those common structures. It's like being part of an official, except it's uh, more for the people at home watching. Obviously, Netties has huge reach in China. It's going to be very important for both of these teams in their home markets to curry some favor. We might even see Crystal for Guangzhou. Like, that is very much a possibility, like an Eileen Crystal kind of lineup. When it comes to Guangzhou, everyone knows that I am a Krong stan, bro. I've been watching him since the O2 Blast day. He's been like, whoever picks up Krong is going to get themselves an absolute bargain because people keep sleeping on this guy. And he has turned into one of the best off tanks in all of Overwatch League. So I'm hoping we get to see some of his Zaya as well. Like, Gakuri Zaya versus Krong Zaya, that would be an absolute highlight matchup for me. Yeah, you pointed that out. We're, we're getting a Zarya specialist in, so maybe we're seeing that Winston Zarya or Hammond Zarya. And for the rotations of maps, uh, we'll have to see what we get into first. I would expect the Hammond to come out on Control, which I'm thinking the map rotation might be similar to the next tournament of Control, Assault, Hybrid, Escort, Control. And uh, first to three, I assume, as we're ready, or the teams are almost ready for us to uh, jump in and cast. And to, uh, to give you guys some context of the rest of this tournament, it is an Owl-centric. This is going to be a double elimination bracket featuring teams from both Contenders China and Contenders Korea. I know we were all sad we missed out on the Pacific Showdown and the Atlantic Showdown this year in Contenders because of the ongoing world events, which are kind of putting a stall on uh, all events really right now. But this is going to be fairly close, except we're not going to have people from Australia and Pacific Contenders. Sadly, Korea and China will have to do. Coming through from Korea, Team Runaway and O2 Blast, the former home of Krong and Lee Jagon, who will also be featured in today's bout, representing Shanghai. And from China, we've got six of their top teams, and you'll be able to see all of those matches after this show match. So for those of you who want to support Tier 2, you better buckle in and brew some coffee, because it's going to be a long night. <laughs> It is. It's 11 p.m. where I am. It's 6 a.m. where like day is. Our producers in Australia and uh, the, the Chinese casters are doing just fine. It's like mid afternoon for them. So all over the world, we're bringing you the next tournament, uh, which also features a pretty uh, large prize pool. I think in U.S. dollars comes up to about twenty thousand dollars in total. So I'm super excited to see who comes out on top. Is it going to be a Chinese team? Is it going to be Contenders Korea, uh, Runaway or O2 Blast? Uh, I'm excited. Oh, Runaway used to uh, attempting to win these things. O2 Blast, I think. Uh, they No, they came second in the Pacific Showdown last year after Element Mystic, who I think won, won both the Pacific Showdown and the... Uh, the gauntlet as well of course and obviously winning the gauntlet meant that basically everyone on that team got picked up for fresh teams in overwatch league except for alpha uh commiserations to alpha someone really should pick up alpha he is a really good main tank who i think has been heavily slept on in uh in tier two korea but i'm gonna drag you back up to tier one because this is a very interesting show match Everyone who's been following APAC, Al, knows that these two are like the big boys. Got some nice graphics coming through. And let's have a look at that NEXT Tournament Cup as well. 
absolutely beautiful. It's, it's nice to see a good trophy. Like I love the I love the contenders trophy lemon, but some immaculate trophy design comes out of Overwatch. Like the MVP trophy and the Overwatch League trophy, to me they look fan bloody tastic. Yeah, especially in 3D mode, as I see it on my screen, <laughs> the graphics for the uh, the NetEase tournament, man, it looks so good. I'm excited to get into this match, and we kind of got uh, asked to help out with this English coverage, and me and Lugley don't got much else to do outside of contenders, so uh, <laughs> DJ schedule live. check. <laughs> the check. Yes, we can do that. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll be up for a while. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like it's, it's a more to cast. I'll figure out when I'm sleeping afterwards. That's the uh, <laughs> that's the general go to. I want to look at uh, some support lineup matchups as well because there's a potential we may see Luffy. We saw Luffy last week uh, in Overwatch League representing Shanghai Dragons are doing a really good job of it on both the Baptiste and the Anna. Seems like they've really stuck him into this flex support role more, more than the main support that he has occasionally flexed over to. But is he Yaki? This is the year of Iziaki. This is a resurgence for Iziaki. Not the greatest start on LA Valley and Lemon. A lot of time on the bench. And I think he was somewhat sidelined last year as well. Luffy and Coma obviously being a support duo that was very hard to break up. But this year, the starting flex support, he has got a lot done. And it's in no small part due to partnering up with a prodigious young main support in Lee Jagon who came from the Runaway 2.0 roster, which a lot of people came to love. And just speaking of a whole name change in general, you talk about Shanghai Dragons, who are not really a team to be feared, as it looks like we're already in our match. Red team being the Shanghai Dragons on the attack, starting off on Hollywood, so it's not going to be your control rotation, but so far, so good. The attack have lost a few members. The shield's a little bit weak, but they've stepped onto this point in a pretty speedy fashion. They've somehow become goats versus goats. I didn't realize they weren't going to be doing non 2 2 2. Very interesting. I lean on the Zaya right here. Uh, there's the Baptiste from Shu instead of the Brigitte. So I suppose that Shu thinks that the, uh, the Baptiste fits into this composition a little bit better than the new Brigitte does. And they even have Stan Wan, who's usually a main tank specialist on the Diva. So. And we didn't, we didn't see Giger. We saw her on maybe the roster graphic, but not appearing quite yet. It's okay. We'll see We'll see the queen later on. Just a uh, gentleman's agreement to play some goats right now. Void trying to stay alive up on the high ground, but this is a little bit of a feed, buddy. Up here, it's going to be Lee Jigon making a climb to try and uh, extract Void from these situations. <laughs> but they could get onto this area at any moment, get rid of all that energy. I'd like to see slightly more aggression here, maybe from Guangzhou to try and remove Void from his high ground, because Azaya on high ground is a very difficult prospect to deal with. And it looks like Shanghai are just focusing on getting on this payload. You don't see any rotations to their right side to get onto the uh, elevator to dislodge them, but there is a charge jumping down from heaven. Transcendence from Mappy keeps them up. Amp Matrix to break down these shields, and the Graviton is unleashed. Luffy. Keeping the team up as Shanghai tried to swing away at this cart. But the immortality placed from Shu kept charge up for most of that fight. And they were able to just clap back. I lean very quick on the trigger here. Being able to move on forward. Stand one. Is she going to get the mech back? Maybe able to... Oh, no. <laughs> it was a trick. We didn't let Stand one get out at all. They're just like, thanks for free old charge, bruv. We'll put that in our back pocket. Save it for later. Void once again. Hanging on by the skin of his teeth. I feel like Void just has like nine lives. It's like a cat. He just can't get taken down. He's maintaining this energy. And this gives him a huge advantage coming into this fight compared to whatever Zarya may suffer from trying to go in with zero energy. Okay, self-destruct are pretty far in the back. This forces Shanghai to go farther forward, dealing with the immortality. But the kill is following through. Six versus four for this attack. As I'll just laser down the rest of the tanks, maybe chase down Eileen so he can't keep that energy he's been working towards. And still a decent push now going for Shanghai. Without the Brigitte in the mix here for seemingly either of these teams, it does mean that the Reinhardt shield really does suffer. Remember, he has a little bit less shield than he does during the GOATS meta. Only 1,600 now, and both a Baptiste, a Lucio, and a Zenyatta plinking away. That means it doesn't last very long at all. Rio can match Fearless. It's going to be Earth Shatter for Earth Shatter here. So we've got to look at the shield management of these Reinhardts. It's going to be so important to defend their teams from these grabs as well. 
And on slight high ground, the Shatter, I think, got a bunch down for Shanghai. Self-destruct in the middle of the Graviton. That's an old combo that we missed dearly, but the Transcendence keeps this defense up. Aunt Matrix just maybe to try and scare off Shanghai, and there's only really three or four on the card, maybe trying to start to back away. Fearless is leading the charge. He has taped down the left-click button. Eileen is gone, and you can see the rest of the charge backing away because Shanghai just got point B. Fearless may have been leading the charge, but he was putting the charge down down as well picking himself up some kills over the course of that fight it was an expensive one for shanghai dragons a lot was expended to try and guarantee that second point push that one's got to get out of dodge very quickly here but wait lee shay gone just assassinated shoot what <laughs> that is some impressive lucio play and you can see the stand ones come to extract him from the danger shanghai are being very clean he's in a going. ghost meta he's, he's got another one <laughs> The absolute madman. And look at the Rio charge from downtown. This is a little bit chaotic. Uh, there's the Graviton thrown from Void and Eileen. No one can really move. But Lee Jae Gong with the sound barrier, I don't think, uh, helped too much. But Shanghai still have control of the cart. They've lost a few people, though. But charge have respawn advantage. So hopefully they can slow things down a bit. Not pushing the cart right now. So Shanghai are trying to stuff these guys into their spawn. Well, they're not really getting too much of an advantage on the objective. Stand one there. Nice defense metrics. Keep Void alive. That seems to be the consistent theme here for Shanghai Dragons. Keep Void alive. Keep that energy up. Keep the momentum moving for Visaya. So you can continually try and generate fresh Gravitons. Lots of fresh transcendence on the cart. Amp Matrix down the field. You see Charge just clear both lanes, split on both sides, but still continuously falling. Happy gets stunned. He wasn't able to use transcendence in Shanghai. Clearing the field before Charge could really get ready for one last fight. Happy, somebody has to touch so Happy can use transcendence. Burn just a few more crucial seconds away. It doesn't seem like a dent can be put into the Dragons. It's a pretty good timing. Two minutes to 29. Man, these teams, they probably haven't had comms this hectic in a while. Trying to get back into the GOATS meta. So much to consider, especially when you add the complexity of the Baptiste into the mix. Potentially a lot more to deal with mentally compared to the Brigitte. Handling for a generative burst. Handling the immortality field. Where do I put my window? Can I combine it with a fire strike to try and pick off a Zenyatta? Or try and pick off a Lucio? Still here. Really good time for the Shanghai Dragons. Li Zhegong really showing off at this point when it comes to the Lucio. But we've got a little bit more info for you guys regarding the nature of this show match. It will be three maps. Regardless of score, it will be three maps. And <laughs> that was an unfortunate door slamming on the Observer right there. The next map <laughs> will be 2-2-2 two, 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 and the third map.
Tracked right on top, sure, why not? <laughs> just just some a bonus given over there. Maybe gives over some energy to Eileen, but giving oh, no. me 11 we see. Oh my god, he's going straight in. <laughs> Rio the Madman and the feeder himself. Fleda picks that one up. I didn't even notice it was Fleda playing the uh, Baptiste, an interesting addition to a hero pool. Now there's a Graviton below this diva, happy with the transcendence. Maybe buys a little bit of time, but can't save Krog. Is charging into the spawn room doors is Stan One and the rest of the dragons. So some roll swaps uh, surely make this pretty entertaining. Stan One is obviously taking over for Reinhardt duties as well. Feel of some of the diva. Feel of actually used to play quite a bit of off tank for Element Mystic back in the day, including quite a bit of Roadhog. So a fairly uh, fairly wide variety of heroes in Fearless's pool. Rio looking to weave in this slam. It's a Graviton from Eileen. Luffy able to counter that with the Transcendence Charge. Now using the Sound Bear, they have to engage now, but the Animatrix is standing in their way and Stand One stunned, taken out. Fearless about to lose the mech, throws out the Self-Destruct to make room as the Charge clear the field. They're back on this cart now, chasing after the Dragons now without really much of a shield or any tanks to protect them. It's going to be a rough time. Rio <laughs> manages to catch one. That's revenge, of course. Wait, Rio? Uh, you do know you have a shield, right, buddy? Just runs it down mid into Luffy, trying to work him in the neutral, but too much damage came through. Void there with the save, and this is going to give Shanghai Dragons a chance to get a pretty good contest here. As long as they don't fight undermanned, they are actually going to fight it. A little bit. Still a good push, though, from the charge. Pretty equal times. One last fight, I think, before the end of point B. And Stan One is coming in like a storm, and Eileen knows what's coming, assessing. Get any more extra ult charge. Don't think he'll get the Graviton this fight. As the charge, have a few more meters to go. Shanghai stuffed at the doors. Luffy holding on to that transcendence for maybe a Graviton from the attack, but they weren't able to get on the cart. No, that is going to be a capture there for the Guangzhou charge. Four minutes and 20 seconds on the clock right now. Krong sends in the self-destruct to the back line. That forces out multiple ultimates. And Rio gets caught with a counter charge, getting absolutely decimated on these engages. He's going to lose his life for the trouble. And Eileen's going to have to be taken out, escorted to safety by the big bouncer of Krong. So getting through to point B, down by one, spawns are close. Shanghai, wonder if they want to take this fight. Fearless away from the team. Shielded there by stand one. He has a shatter. He's going to be dueling over Rio, who's close to his. This could be a big one. Shatter comes down. Stand one floors the people he needs. The first two kills, majority of the healing gone for the attack. And Shanghai Dragons have held the cart. Here they have. Will they be able to take out Rio? Obviously so. Really good reactions there from stand one on the counter charge to make sure that Rio is not going to be too much of a problem and man are you ever going to get rid of Lee Jae Gone he's like a mosquito just bouncing around the place <laughs> oh there's a graviton now this time from Eileen catches a bunch of the front line of the dragon stand one needs to hold that shield up he's got the discord on him the shield's about to break as fearless sits himself to struck into the back line it's easy if he can cut off the healing momentarily as you got to shatter onto a diva just to take care of the mech from fearless and charge or just sailing away <laughs> somehow that shadow seems to not hit fearless not sure how that happened. They are going to take out the baby diva before they can touch the car, but there's been enough stall here. The Shanghai Dragon. <laughs> what was he doing? Was he hiding in the corner? Man, we're on a mad one right now if you're stand one. Can't be saved by the Transcendence. A touch too late here, but Rio's been given the nano boost and he's going into the back. The instant pin on Void. The instant slay onto all of these people, but Lee Shigon thinks he can save them with a sound barrier. This is chaos right now, Lemon. <laughs> Chaos, you shatter the other Ryan. Let's bring him into the line of fire. Your kill feeds all blue for the charge. About to bring this payload home with a pretty insignificant time bank difference. Maybe someone from the dragons can touch one last time, but not going to be the case. 18 second difference between these two teams. Does look like it is going to be taken down, of course, to the two minutes. Keep things expedient here on Hollywood. And I have never seen as many buck wild charges as I have <laughs> in this particular map right here. Both Fearless and Rio. Well, Stand One in that case, actually. We had Stand One in the on the defense playing a little bit more of a Reinhardt. Stand One getting a load of very strange counterpins because Rio is just 
turbo feeding on the Reinhardt at times. <laughs> Let's see if the door will close on the observers this time. You get... Oh no, they've diverted. They see the, they see the clock going down. Got to take a smooth left-hand turn. Uh, we're having, I at least am having some feed issues. So we're going to throw it to a quick one minute break so we can get all synced up. We'll see you guys on the other side.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Shanghai Dragons Guangzhou Charge Show Match before we kick off our next Summer Cup. Uh, we had a bit of an issue, but we're all synced up, and you, may, you missed a bit of a charge attack, but we'll see if the Shanghai Dragons can get all the way to that box of victory at the end of point B. Still 3-3 three, three versus 3-3. Three, three. We're actually seeing a little bit more Brigitte, and now Flo's going to be picking up that particular hero. Was, of course, one of their parts of the Shanghai Dragons Goats comp. Leisure Gone has once again got himself another assassination, of course. But Rio trying to weave in the wrecking balls of his composition is one of the more interesting choices we've seen over the course of the 3 3 versus 3 3 matchup. Uh, you got it charge uh, into the uh, back lane. we got a Hammond, Rio harassing. He's got the bubble, so he could be as crazy as he wants. Shanghai will eventually break out of these spawner doors, charging down as fearless. He's got the bubble. You can see Shanghai getting ready to pounce on this attack. A big bio hits the charge as they back away towards the point. Gotta worry about this charge from Mylene, though. This has to be a heavy target for the dragons to take down. Can't believe I'm seeing double ball goats with my very own eyes. Fearless gets slept there, but there's not real too much execution prowess to get rid of him in that large health pool. Rio's ready to facilitate another engagement, but they are being guarded here by Li Gone. Now, jumping down. Dragons, the fight is not done. They only have a minute left. They gave the nano over to Void, I think. He's probably have high energy. Need to get that grab online. Throws it down. Krong holding on to the self-destruct until he wants to uh, gain a second life. Thought maybe he'd use it in defense. There it is now, right in the middle of the point. Dragons back away, quite literally in a corner. Is high energy Eileen is just going to be sending Void packing. Stand one can't hold on to the mech. And 43 seconds, Dragons have one last push. In the middle of all of that, Luffy did somehow die to a uh, a mine. Quite interesting. Krong's going to have to back out here. They are going to be able to give over a huge amount of ultimate charge though. Too happy. The Anna of the Hour, making use of that Widowmaker skill set, of course, to play the more heal centric sniper as they try and get a load of mines here to stop Eileen's disengage. It's a feed, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a feed. <laughs> well, Rio also wasting Dragon's time, bowling in, bowling out. Bio hits them, able to cleanse out with the Zarya, the beauty of that. The bubble just allows Rio to survive for so long. Stan wants to self destruct to maybe cut off the healers. It does finally, Jay. Er that's, no, sorry, that was Chara. Either way, a couple seconds left. Dragons might be able to touch. <laughs> There's Eileen <laughs> Graviton in Casual his Casual dance face. party. Void, Void is still alive. Void is I, living. He's getting pocketed from Luffy. I think Shanghai have given up on this one. <laughs> They've been astounded right. by the power of Rio and his Wrecking Ball. He is actually one of his more interesting heroes. We don't get to see it too much for Rio Wrecking Ball, only really on control. But you got a sneak peek of it on Hollywood. And Guangzhou Charge are going to take our 3-3 three, three versus 3-3 three, three matchup here on Hollywood. And we'll be going over to the 2-2-2 two, two, two mirror next. And I wonder if it's a Shanghai, I guess the, the loser picks the map rule or just whatever both teams feel like. Um, pretty interesting <laughs> map one. We saw a little ham and Zarya, uh, the goats. Uh, it's definitely bringing back some memories. Yes, yeah, bringing back some uh, some long buried memories <laughs> that were banished a long time ago. But... It's interesting to be able to take a look at the hero pools of some of these uh, players who have been uh, pretty heavily pigeonholed into other roles over the course of a season as for meta would demand. Seeing the fearless diva was quite interesting to me, given his past of playing off tanks in what was some fairly wacky comps around Element Mystic. We all know that Rush, the Element Mystic coach, was um, a bit of an innovator, an inventor, a, a, a deviant mind when it comes to Overwatch strategy, but also being able to show off Rio's ball, I think was a super important uh, sort of like taste test, a litmus test for mm -hmm. Rio as a main tank with a lot of variety, because I think that's one of the main strengths of Rio before the season. I enjoyed putting Guangzhou at high ranks because I think that Rio is a very meta-proof main tank. Really good Reinhardt, really good Winston, really good Orisa, and a really good Wrecking Ball as well. And he sort of surpassed Mano this season, who is the only other person who has a very good one of all of those. Maybe Gushue is up there, but we're not so sure about Gushue's ball. Well, we're also not sure about what we're doing for map two, so we're going to throw it to a quick break to see if Shanghai Dragons can tie the series. See you soon.
We're in the middle of the action. Nepal Village Shanghai Dragons versus the Charge. Shang of oh, the Charge took the first map. It's a Shu was able to get resurrected. Lee Gong not getting that pleasure. Big bio hitting fearless and Neva sleeping. I don't even know who Ava is, to be honest. I'm sure uh, <laughs> the Chinese cast have been informed. Maybe. Oh, I, hmm. Very, very hmm. curious. Maybe New a Smurf account? Emoji? Evidently, everyone's on their actual accounts. You can see their levels in the bottom left-hand corner. Eileen right now has been a little bit of a troublemaker on the point. But Gaguri, the Frog Queen, coming out on the Monkey King. The Winston's going to tear them on down. This, is, it, this does appear to be a main account with, uh, with, a, with a gold border, nonetheless. Maybe part of the coaching staff? Hmm. Uh, let, let us know which one you guys think. Uh, Ding 2.0 or question mark new pickup. Eyes emoji, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> it's Rio jumping in, starting off his initiation. He's got the Winston bubble placed. And Pulse Bomb at the ready for Fleta goes right. Oh, he misses that onto the Ana. Surprisingly, Shu does give over the Nano. <laughs> Krong with the mines. It's a bit of a fiesta, to say the least. Oh, Fleta didn't see that one coming and walked right into it. Ava wins out the door with Happy on the high ground in the air. Shanghai going to maintain control of the point for now as Eileen tears through the targets. This is a tear of an echo play right here. Oh, insight. Apparently, Ava, or Ava, as Light, Light Day likes to say, is uh, Lip. Lip's other account that is Gold Border, apparently. But uh, current a lot of point overwatch. control. Uh, current point control for the charge, though. Interesting to see Lip pick up a non hit scan roll. Nice little uh, proof of concept right here, but going up against Happy. Hit scan versus hit scan on Pharaoh. We'll see who comes out on top. We're about 1-1 one, one in the duels right now, but the barrage is quite foolhardy. I think Happy was really on top of that right there. Still, we are getting some nice trades here, and Rio's going to be able to clear away all those mines and get a Winston achievement. Yeah, doing the Lord's work of taking care of those mines, because I'm the support that runs around the corner. What's happening? And runs into that mine by accident. So... Charge, clearing away of the point, flipping it over. Shanghai trying to dump their bodies onto it one last time before they reset. You have Lee Jae Gong on the Moira. That's a cursed image. And <laughs> Charge will be able to flip it. Wait, on um, forces out the duplicate. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be a question mark in chat from me. Eileen's doing the best of what they got. But of course, fixed DPS means that it's going to take you a while to generate the coalescence and only now doesn't have that for the forthcoming battle but Kron once again has for mines it's going to be quite difficult to navigate through some choke points if Kron decides to lock them on down and Happy has a barrage again could be looking for an early assassination onto a less mobile target who can't get away Looks like Krong did manage to place the mines, but I think the real interesting part is who's going to win this fire duel. Happy got the nano. He's able to one-tap Ava now going after him. The Mercy is very elusive in the Valkyrie form. Don't get pistoled by the Mercy. Don't. Where's your fucking yet? The barrage to the Mercy. It's, this is messed up. You know what? That's what you do to avoid the humiliation. When Mercy decides to fight back, you can't really take that risk. Fleta trying to fight back himself, but Rio takes him down still. That is going to be both the DPS from Shanghai Dragons falling. Fearless is trying to take the point, but Shu is just tagging in. Maybe can try and get the 1v1. That's not the power driver the Fearless was looking for at all. And Kaguri is just going hog wild in the back. <laughs> really trying to swat down the, the fly from the sky. He's still chasing. <laughs> oh, he's actually know. gone over Eileen. I think he confused targets there for a second. Then you had the Shu versus the, the Hammond matchup. 99% for the charge. Overtime into effect. Shanghai cannot get off of this point if they want to continue this circus that is going on. Well, Fearless right now is the main circus attraction. Gets taken off of their pedestal by a hook coming through from Rio. And it looks like Guangzhou Charge may be back in control of things as they stand. Fearless desperately tries to get away, but someone needs to tag the point. Isn't going to happen. Nepal Village goes over to the side of a Guangzhou Charge. Nothing like a bit of hog and ball torture at 11.46 at night. <laughs> this is peak <laughs> casting career right now. <laughs> This is peak life choice is equals correct time right now. <laughs> you're like you're like 6 a.m. I got up, not ready for this. <laughs> We're going over to Sanctum next, Lemon.
Could be yep. a couple of knockoffs. I expect the double pig. I think that that's uh, fairly easy to anticipate given the attitude of both of these teams so far. Fearless on the pig, though. This is what I came to see. I, I talk about the good old days like ZP reminiscing about a monthly melee, but I fondly remember the fearless pig on many junker towns. Element Mystic used to run a triple off tank defense where they would have a Zaya, a Diva, and a Rotom to try and defend Junker Town first. And it was a little uh, bit wild. Speaking of which, Happy's been showing the wild side. Couldn't even get into turn four. <laughs> yeah, he was still rounding the corner. The speed of the Shanghai gave them the better position at the start of this fight. A little bit of a hook. Is that a Symmetra Nothing turret? caught yet. <laughs> Symmetra turrets are tickling Fearless, and he's probably fine with that. He can at least get more ult charge out of it. Good hold in the hold. And hook combos, another uh, dear memory of mine. But so far, charge trying to get back this point. Eileen with the double kill, fully charged up, and he gets his ult. Oh, it looked like it was canceled, but it's still up. 900 DPS, by the way. That's a Bastion Sentry mode firing through. <laughs> yep, Gagori found that out the hard way. Firing through <laughs> the app matrix makes it difficult, and Shara's corpse just floats nicely over towards Happy. Remember what I did for you, son. Remember all the sacrifices I made. Shanghai Dragons remain in control though, despite a lack of personnel leaching. <laughs> you can't, you can't do that to a Bastion. Shu is just BMing in chat, I assume. I can't read Korean. Me neither. We'll have to call Jaws or somebody to translate this. Um, the point in control of the dragons. And now you're worrying about attack visor, whole hog, and see if you can land this hook. But he's got the pocket, so Fearless doing a smart thing, trying to get back towards the point. He can whole hog them right here if he's not careful on the hook. Chara is not a happy mercy. <laughs> Try the frog curry out. <laughs> oh, oh, this no. match hits different, Lemon. This match really do hit different. Shu gets a melee kill on Talijie gone. And there we go. Caught around uh, the pillar. Happy never saw the hook coming. But Fearless saw the soldier coming in real close to say hello. Strong can maybe facilitate some kind of push with the supercharger here. But it didn't actually hit the, the halted Rotom. Very interesting. Early on a fat flank can get a lot of ultimate charge here off an unsuspecting Roadhog. At least he, he'll he make that jump. Okay. I was a little concerned. Now he's behind some Twonky tanks. Down, and if that, hook hit, if that hook hits, Eileen is not going to have a good time. But he's still throwing mines. No one cares about Eileen. What about Eileen? And now he's dead. Rio is there for backup. The whole hog to maybe push him off the map. And Fearless, while he's helping, watch over the point. Now the tanks of the charge are cornered in a big open area. Luffy is healing at a distance. And Charge did manage to flip the point over. They did. Question is how much of a uh, precedence is going to be given for this remaining in their control. Happy going to try and get away here. Puts down the... Oh, puts down the main tank. Gaguri's been taken out. <laughs> and still, Shenko managed to cap that back over the course of that. Oh. Double headshot from Flatter. Lovely to put down Happy. You're happy for that. 98% for Shanghai about to flip it over. Or they have it. Charger trying to flip it over. Eileen with the rip tire. This has to be a big one. You can see in the x-ray. I think there's maybe some supports around the corner. He has to go hunt for it. As someone on the point. He does get Gaguri low. Rio should be there to finish the job. And Charge will manage to get the point. I don't know exactly what Fearless is doing here. Going to try and use the whole honk to knock some people off while coming out. May try and force a fortify in it. No! But no, nope, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful hole from Fearless. No fear at all. That's how he earned his name. Looking for the hook. Somehow manages to miss Chara there. Nice little use of the physical cover. And now Fearless is in deep, deep trouble. Oh, the kryptonite. It's an honor. Oh. Later. Later. Yeah, the <laughs> ultimate Roadhog kryptonite. These honors, man. All you got to do is bio and they'll go away. But tie game on Nepal. Final map. Point being Shrine. We'll see who walks away with this one. Well, I have no predictions for what compositions we may see here, I must admit. I knew that they were going to try and have fun with the Roadhogs, the old whole hog and uh, hook combination. Very funny when there are some environmental deaths to be guaranteed. The Guri, it's interesting that they would play the Orisa here. I postulated before the Overwatch 2020 season that Guri may actually be a Arisa specialist for Shanghai in the forthcoming season because at Shanghai Masters, which was a tournament between all the Chinese teams before Overwatch League started, she did play a lot of Arisa and played it quite well. So, uh, interesting to see if the skill has been kept up. Oh god, a Doomfist 
in your back line. It's Eileen. He's buyout. He's still living. Fearless takes him down. Six versus four for the Shanghai Dragons. Point will unlock shortly, but it looks like the job's already done. Charge is maybe going to dance around a little bit before giving this one up. Nice little play from Lip there. Great prediction on Shara's movement with that Helix Rocket. And it's interesting to see a premier hitscan like Lip picking up a Soldier 76. We like to see how they fare with these particular heroes. Because obviously, in a meta where, where Soldier 76 may become relevant, you're going to be counting on them to play that Soldier 76. And a lot of the hitscans we currently have, we don't really have too much proof of concept on that they're really good at this hero because he's been irrelevant for so long. Nano tag visor might be big. I mean, there's no D where the Matrix is. There's only a shield of a Winston. You can see Lip using that tag visor. <laughs> really good a dive. Bit too much, too much action in the club. Rio pounces on that. Shanghai down a bunch, and so are the charge. But charge missing more. And despite the initial dive from the charge, it was a failed experiment. Really good dive there, but unfortunately the rest of the team weren't quite so successful. Flutter tries were a bit of a meme sticky, but Eileen puts him down with a fist to the face. Lip going to try and get out right here. And with the help of Luffy, it's not going to be too much of a problem at all. Finally, control goes away of the Guangzhou charge. Five, six percent now already. Look at look at the huge <laughs> numbers that are coming through from this team. I want to see how Krong facilitates the next engage. Fearless has been found out by Eileen, but I don't think there's enough of an advantage here for the Doomfist to take the 1v1. Look at Eileen's skin. This is stuff of nightmares. And he'll just be in your, in your back line. He'll be in dark rooms and now he's dead. He ain't gonna do much. But Lee Jae Gong, the window up top, really only benefiting him, shooting down on the point. But Charge just trying to withstand their own. They're getting pushed almost at their spawn room doors. There's a primal that just snuck up on Lee Jae Gong. <laughs> he might Rio be dead. Rio came from an orbital <laughs> drop pod. That was an orbital simian strike presented right there. Fall of the Planet of the Apes in this case. Flutter making sure all of these targets caught with Immigritic Flux are going to be finding some pain. But Eileen's all about the same. Eileen, a very prolific Doomfist here. And it seems like Wong Joe Charge may be able to regain control rather quickly off the back of some splendid DPS play. Oh, hello. Open Adobe After Effects and put that one in a montage. You have to Google that one. 40% and more for Charge. Really, one, maybe one fight difference. Shanghai have to win. Maybe take this map. Is Lee Jae Gong bouncing away? He's pretty exposed right now. I don't think much can protect him if these tanks decide they want to kill some supports, but also need to heal up uh, these DPS. You can see Lip using the TAC visor, getting these tanks low here for the charge. As Dragon's just trying to regroup a bit on the point. Yeah, going on that wacky source right now when both of those. What is Shu doing there? <laughs> Okay, Lee Jigon manages to get the headshot. Uh, I think Shu went on a little bit of a misguided dive on the Moira, and so did everyone else. Like you were saying, like Lee Jigon and Luffy were essentially alone as two supports on the right-hand side. And everyone else decided to just dive for Rotog instead. So um, maybe they were <laughs> they had a taste for bacon at the time, and Lee Jigon can lock down their method of ingress with this amplification matrix. Huge amounts of damage coming through. Oh, jeez, 1 HP. How did Lee Jae Gong live through that? We have Nano Lip leading the charge on the front lines. Fearless hooking the back line. Charge uh, disorganized but not able to get a good fight going. Eileen finds a pick, but no one else from Charge is there to follow up as 99% goes away. It will be the Dragons tying the series. 1-2-1, one, one, and a last map will decide it all. Remember, we're going to have ourselves... A, uh, a different rule set for that as well. It's going to be a mandate of triple DPS from both sides in honor of Shanghai Dragons and their win in Season 3 2019, where they toppled the GOATS composition with a combination of Doomfist, Sombra, Farah, and Widowmaker. And you never know what can go with three DPS, because that's the only rule. You could have three tanks, maybe three supports you can have one or two three supports well, i don't even know how many supports we're gonna see all i know I, is you we're just gonna suggest three, three tanks and three dps yes no keeling <laughs> that's the kind of fiesta this show much has been so far and hey there's some self healers that you know you got your healer of the soldier hey, you, 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 you pick rotog it like looks like you guys need, need healing <laughs> sounds like a you problem anyway we'll see you guys after this break for map three
Welcome back, everybody, to the Shanghai Dragons Guangzhou Charge Show Match, the final map decider. No matter what the score is, will be dragons on the attack <laughs> on Dorado. And that ain't it. <laughs> oh, no. Guangzhou not giving them any breathing room, but I'm actually very excited about the Krong Farah. I, I've spoken with Gospel before of a Krong Hanzo. I'm going to I'm going to assume that uh the Korean character's Farah is Ding. Obviously they're playing as much as they can from the previous lineup. Oh, how did Eileen lose that? <laughs> He's chasing over anyway. It's fine. Dragons will eventually get this car pushing through underpass, but you got to worry about Happy's Widow. And I'm worried if you're a Farah in this one. Lee Jong Gong going to resurrect uh question mark back into the game. I can't read Korean <laughs> or Chinese. Um, so dragons are halfway to point A. Lip, of course, playing with Doomfist today. Uh, F's in chat, pull one out for our boy Youngjin. Not sure where he is at the moment. Eileen, for now, controlling the high ground and Gaguri's gonna be the one taking over ball duties right now. You can't lose that. No, you're not gonna. Thanks to the attentions and affections of Ding, they are gonna get rid of Eileen here. Two resurrections come through and our team's gonna be about equal on manpower right now. Sneaking around the, oh, poking out above the roof. Krong finds that and maybe you're trying to deny the res from Lee Jae Gong. Looks like Lee Jae Gong's not even gonna risk it. Gets back to safety, hopefully, as the Tomb Fist battle at the start of the cart. Meteor Strike, can you align it? Luffy trying to dodge around the corner. Charges the punch, can't find the kill. And Dragons, meters away from point A. Oh, good, good presence of mind here from Eileen. Actually manages to survive both of them. They aren't actually going to get to point A. This was beautiful survivability. Manages to... <laughs> oh, welcome to the game, Lip. Krog's just like, yep, landing, are you? Well, don't worry, you're going to be landing with several rockets. DM's going to try and bring this one back. But going up against Happy, this is a Widow Duel of the Ages. 2019... Well, best way maker versus potentially 2020s. Now you got Infrasight for the attack. You have Giguri going to harass maybe Diem. Or sorry, not Diem. Uh, happy in the back. But oh, just barely getting away with one HP. Also been uh, told that the far from Shanghai Dragons is Ding. So no more guessing there. Thank you, production. <laughs> Look at those mines on the top left. Some excellent placement there, of course, from Rio. Eileen could be executed, and it's going to be the case. But during that, even while they were taking out the sleeping Doomfist, still Happy trades it. DM takes out Happy as well. What? How does Chara get away with this race? Surely this is a troll. They must be playing with me right now. You're having a laugh, mate. And Eileen, the laughing's finished. It's back to spawn with you. Silence is enforced, and this is likely going to be a first point cap from the Shanghai Dragons. <laughs> the double dive onto Shu. He's able to sleep one. Damage done. Point A earned from the dragons. Finally, it took quite some time. Three and a half minutes to get through to point B. It's the Doomfist Battle of the Ages. Eileen maybe going back towards his mercy, who actually left him, and maybe Gakuri gets the finish. Eileen, two HP, a dream, a meteor strike, and, and can't live that one. Feels like rockets are always landing at the same time as these meteor strikes. I'm not saying that there's a causation there, but there's definitely a correlation that can be found between the Faro rockets and the meteor strikes. Happy for now. Oh, manages to avoid a headshot from DM. That's going to reveal the location of the Ernst Wild Widowmaker and could precipitate another duel between the pair as Lip makes some space and wants to slam down on Shu, who's more than prepared to dodge Whoa. out of the way, but your dodging ain't good enough. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball, but you can't dodge a meteor strike. Not for now. Shanghai Dragons getting closer to point B. High ground control there for Krong. He's going to make sure Dragons can't be comfortable. But at this point, let's be honest. There's not any kind of coordination here. There's a lot of one-on-ones. Eileen going to make kind of BMDM who's trying to find the headshot. Can't get it. But hey, gets the kill on the shoot. A lot less healing. He's able to give the nano to somebody. Maybe probably to Krong because that barrage has got a double kill on the both supports of the Dragons. No healing left. DM and uh, Lip are 1 HP. So dragons are for sure resetting now. Chara's like, stop playing with your food or I'll finish it. And manages to get the uh, slap onto DM. It's always good as a mercy when you get your revenge on the Widowmakers. Okay. Gagory feels like this is winnable. And they're damn right that it is. Rio gets taken down. Still, enough of a hole was carved through the minefield. But Chara could get the resurrection. And Gagory gets out. 
Yeah, Luffy trying. He's getting pocketed there from Lee J. Gong. Rio, I think he's gonna get out of there. He got the mind <laughs> shoot. Just what got are completely you doing? left by himself. He should have left the it. other way. But Shu keeps hitting these sleeps that, and he just bios himself, so he's pretty fine most of the time. Dragon's got a lot of kills in that last fight. Should be able to reestablish back on the car, get closer to point B, and charge up one last chance to touch. Island's going to be able to come in from a top rope here. The RKO style going to look to get rid of Luffy. For now, go, oh. just going to touch the car so low at this moment. Getting the shields, though, and getting the pain. Eileen just crisscrossing around the payload to yeah, at least walk away with one kill before the direct rocket kills them, and that's that's that happened. The <laughs> dragons they need to just group up a little bit, and uh, charge are just probably going to focus on getting this high ground in point C. If there were a strategy there, I think there's someone from Shanghai Dragons deep in there. It's Lee J Gong, and he's dead. Lee J Gong is officially done with this. Doesn't want to play the Mercy anymore. With this many squishy targets, you know you're going to go for the assassinations with the Speed Freak Frog. Also, of course, the Frog is a uh, a tithe, a devotion to the Frog Queen herself, Gagory. <laughs> oh, it was always a distraction. It was always a play to make sure that they got exactly what they wanted. Oh, oh, but I feel like Ding must have been emoting there just to have been standing in the way of that rocket punch. Okay, play of the game. We know how it feels like that. <laughs> the meteor strike in the spawn room doors. Dragon's just flexing. One last fight coming up for the end of point C. Pretty decent time bank despite uh, the chaos going on. A lot of ults coming on. You got the nano, the barrage. Can Kronk get into position? Can he at least make it out of the spawn room doors? DM. Good bio. He's a little bit low. Gonna back off. See if he can find the pocket there. Luffy gets dove by Rio Krong with the double kill charge, fighting this one back. Man, Shu's reaction speed is actually madness. The man's neurons fire at above the speed of light. He's cracked the code. It's gone above and beyond. Krong waiting for a sneaky barrage here, of course. You can see him floating up high. Excellent fuel management, by the way, for a mostly off tank player. Are you a fanboy like that? Maybe just a little bit. He sure likes pain. He keeps shooting himself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dragons, now do they see this corner barrage? Krong has their name on it. He's looking for supports, and if dragons are smart, they rotate right side, get to that high ground, but they go out in the open. It's not going to be a good time. Floats up up DM. Oh, the solo barrage. He didn't do it. <laughs> but a good sleep to uh, well, slow things down a bit. You can't just do it to him that way. Poor DM, no resurrections this time, just like Loki versus Thanos. However, maybe uh, an alternate timeline will return them to us. That's an interesting minefield right there. Lee Jagon never stood a chance, surrounded by mines with only a flail in hand. You're joking, bruv. Especially if we're getting with like a cardboard box for a shield. Like it's not gonna help you because of 6,000 mines. Dragons now in overtime, touching the card maybe one last time. Lee Jagong, you're the savior. But he eats the punch from Mylene, and that's the end of their attack. Still, given how tough it was to take first, I think the dragons are fairly okay with this. And the uh, Pharah became a little bit weaker as they went over to the, uh, the third point here. So Ding was a little bit less useful. Well, that was... That was an experience. The, the Krong far, and now we know some of these uh, some of these tanks can flex the DPS. You know, if, if anyone ever gets sick in the Overwatch League, if we ever get away from the two two two, well, it'll be a fun time to watch. <laughs> Not sure if that'll ever happen, but you know what? When Overwatch <laughs> Two eventually comes, maybe it'll bring a plethora of uh, new rulings with it that will change competitive Overwatch forever. I'm very excited. No idea when it's going to happen. Hopefully soon. I, I want to. I want to play Sojourn as uh, as fast as possible, personally. And like, and also the the Nano Faras, the directs doing a ton of work. And I'm, I, I like that the Hammonds are just more of a distraction. And they kind of, you know, have been uh, Shanghai been doing a good job of harassing Shu, but he hits those sleeps, you know. 9 out of 10 times, so he's able to live longer than you might imagine most Anas can in uh, when no one's really peeling for you, but will be the charge on the attack. Box of victory at point C to determine who's the winner of this show match. I personally am a fan of the uh, coordinated uh, blood sacrifices of the Doomfists when they land from their meteor strikes. Quite interesting. 
Eileen's already been taken down here by Giguri, and somehow Afar is being checked by a Doomfist right now. Opposite land is in effect, and Lip playing it risky, trying to get rid of Rio. A couple of nice shots, and you know what? Not going to let them move the car for free at all, even if you do have Krong in your backline over here. You have the charge on the attack, but kind of playing at the end of point A is this uh, far mercy, and Lip was trying to maybe cal- he got a calculator out, trying to see how he could get all the way up there, but there's the direct <laughs> from Ding. Krong down. Resurrect unavailable for Chara. DM finds the headshot and Charge now uh, missing a lot of firepower. She was so damn good at Anna. It really does inspire me to play that hero so that I can fail and then think, oh, I'm never going to be Shu's level. But then again, few people will be. No, not a point of shame, chat. Don't you worry. Shu is a very special case on that, Anna. Eileen's gone over to the Reaper, of course, in a fun match. You've got to inject just a, a touch of anti-fun to balance it all out. Not going to do much to the farmers. Yeah, unless you play on the ground like Lee Kong just did and somehow <laughs> uh, dead. So two missing from the defense charge. Somebody has to push this cart. So although we're having a ton of fun, someone has to do the Lord's work and get this objective truck in under through. The, uh, the bridge side, Eileen's on the high ground, a little bit closer to the sky so he could maybe reach the far, right? and you can see Ding and Lip are down. Krong getting a couple of head flicks in the air, trying to make sure, oh no, was that a solo minefield for Luffy? That's not on. Come on, Rio. <laughs> Somehow, uh, sh they actually managed to escape, but I don't know if they're going to be able to touch the cart in time. They don't really have the manpower to get there, but no, the nano far is going to be more than enough. Maybe winnable, ding. <laughs> they pulled him back up we're, we're, playing, we're playing at point B. The card hasn't got <laughs> to point A yet. Someone just has to touch it like for a second. It'll be fine. At least oh. you'll get closer respawns, but uh, Eileen is spawn hunting. Uh, are they both going to be back? I'm actually in awe of the fact that Eileen like called in an orbital strike from Rio onto DM during that. Oh, we're going to try and get him again. Uh -oh. DM, public enemy number one. Looking out. Oh, finds Eileen. Okay, playing with it. Oh, no! <laughs> Headshot on a body. That's more than enough. He was really trying to TP. <laughs> DM's like, don't do that. <laughs> Charge. Hard pass, bro. Hard pass. At least the card isn't going backwards. Still four meters away from point A. Missing some supports here and there. And so is the dragons. Of course, with Diem's infrasight, he can just have free range on anyone, especially going after Krong. And Eileen's still trying to find a target. And he's being shot before he can get close enough. Rio turns slip into roadkill. And Chara's trying to be the premier DPS right now with a Valkyrie. Figuri goes down. And this could be the opening that Guangzhou needs to extend this, uh, this match. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I can uh, call it that, but extend this gameplay of Overwatch to another area. While we were watching Krong do some nasty things to the other team, Eileen got his revenge against Diem somehow in the kill feed. That's all that matters. It's 1-1. One, one. Or if you guys are keeping track, let, update me. But Charge got through to point A. Pretty similar timing than Dragons. <laughs> and he still can't get the TP close enough. <laughs> Surely not. The bold face TP. There's no finesse. There's no there's no je ne sais quoi with this Reaper. It's just all TP all the time. Like Symmetra. I don't I don't know even know how to finish that. I'm lost right now, but Lip certainly <laughs> isn't found a target in the back line. Yeah, Lip's got a GPS in the back line. He ate a shield bash. He's got the pocket of the mercy. Dragon's about to siege. Eileen on the cart still can't have fun. Rio lays the mines right on top of the Widow. Back it away. DM got a double kill before uh, Rio harassed them a little bit more. Double kill for the Hammond player himself. Charge. Not really focusing on this objective whatsoever. You, I thought that was a barrage, but he's just trying to take care of uh, Lip, which Charge now can breathe a little bit. Really nice uh, health pack still there from Rio as well. Nice little technique to make sure that the... Uh... The Tracer was in trouble. DM is showing why he was the premier Widowmaker in the world in 2019, surpassing Carpe. Even if some people would argue it with me and almost has the Infrasights here. So Happy versus DM, still one of the main points of this match you need to pay attention to. And <laughs> Lip is... Did they give a nano to him to kill? <laughs> oh my goodness, they hate Rio. Uh, charge hating themselves and most of them are dead right now. The full team wipe. I mean, first time in a while we've seen a clear, decisive team fight win at all. But Charge 
They're gonna have to reset. Dealing with Ava should be easy. Misses the pulse bomb on like the largest hitbox. Too fast, too furious, and back to safety. Uh, you're not gonna be able to drift that sticky in Rio. Ready to try and go for the one versus one. And Lip's more than happy to take it. You do have higher DPS, but not a huge health pool to play with, so. Forces up a recall. Rio's going to get out of dodge and feed over some support ultimates to both of his supports who already have them. So I'm not sure if it's overly uh, effective. Wait, what happened? Liche gone. Used the Valkyrie elsewhere to take Krong out in the air. The premier DPS of a Valkyrie Mercy. No. And they get Liege gone too. She was rallying. He's about to be the raid boss and got headshot by Diem. He's killed three people in this fight. Is this guy actually trying now in for sight? There, he's going to find more targets. Char not able to resurrect Krong. Maybe going to play things slow and didn't hear me. <laughs> barrage traded and uh, still died. <laughs> yeah, the mid-air barrages, they do hit different. I'll tell you that. Let Brady show off some more of his marvelous tracking. Eileen in trouble. 1v1 and forces the, uh, the Death Blossom there. It was too much pressure to go up against Luffy. Eventually breaks down. Spins to win instead. Full Beyblade mode. Dragons. With one last fight, they have to win. Charge. Need to touch this car. A few more seconds left. It's a tie series. The last map. Who's going to take this win? So far, Charge getting a few kills. Gaguri down. And so is Lip. But Diem is a factor. He's on the high ground. Resurrect there for Charge. They're all topped up, and they're starting to pressure that top right side where probably Diem is hanging out at. Happy getting away from that Venom Mine. Quite lucky that didn't actually activate it right there. Looking at the enemy Farah. Hasn't been discovered yet. Is anyone going to look at the plant pots? No, it's a quintuple stick on to Luffy. Am I going to get the execution as well? But they aren't on the cart right now. Look at that overtime ticking down. It's a desperate struggle to stay on there, Lemon. Come on, Happy, you can do it. Fly faster. Uh, he can't touch. <laughs> Judge can uh, keep the overtime wig burn. The quick play action as now finished. Shanghai Dragons will be uh, your show match winners. Winners in uh, in the largest quotation marks that I can offer. Lemon, <laughs> that was uh, quite a fun matchup. I makes me yearn for the days of triple DPS, but at the same time, everything being a little bit more static now with 2-2-2, I think is a godsend for analysts and color casters. So I'll let that one simmer in our memory for a little while longer. But now that you guys have got through the, um, what well, this was essentially the warm up stand up comedy act <laughs> for to the, to the symphony of competitive Overwatch, which will be coming thereafter between our Chinese and Korean contenders teams that will be coming up very shortly and all of those will be best of fives up until the grand finals which will be best of seven so you can expect a little bit more um what would we call it try harding from those teams <laughs> a lot more sweat some real overwatch around the corner the start of the next summer cup our first match will be team cc versus t1w the rematch of the contenders china final where team cc won that pretty one-sidedly but maybe Get some sweet revenge. $20,000 prize pool for this tournament. We're going to throw it to a quick break to see if our teams are ready. So don't go anywhere.
We are here in our first match of the next summer tournament, T1W versus Team CC, the rematch of Contenders China Finals. We'll get the revenge, or will it be on two Pete for Team CC? It's a big matchup for any fans of Contenders China. And for me personally, one of the first teams I ever cast, it was T1W during a previous NEXT Cup in 2017. As you can see right now, Gaga and Dia going around the back, looking for a long flank. This is gonna mean that Protoss is gonna be in a lot of danger. Now, the point unlocked. Who's setting up here? You can see Liga needs maybe some shield up. Potentially, he's getting chased by the rest of T1W. By his side is the Brigida of Super Rich, giving a ton of healing over. High below, Pineapple as well. T1W forced to use the Immortality Field to buy him a few seconds. Liga <laughs> blows himself up. And so the rest of Team CC, T1W still in a good position to take this point. But you can see that Gaga is rolling around just to prevent that cap from going through, but not for much longer. Oh, it seems to see her a little bit sloppy there, engaging in on the Arrestor instead of on one of the more squishy targets of T1W. Obviously, Silver One can take a lot of the beating and a little bit more when popping that Fortify. Milan Run could get an early pick here. However, needs to be mindful of those Zaya shields. They can stop the incoming aggression. If you can force out the Projector Barrier early, though, that's going to make things very, very easy for your Trace to get some value. These mines are pretty good at zoning off the point. T1W, no sort of danger. They lose Milan Ron, but as long as they just play things slow, they can just keep racking up this lead that they already have. But Team CC giving over the Nano to Spectra, who was 20% off the blade. So big miscommunication there. Maybe thought he could build the blade fast enough so he could still benefit from the Nano. But meanwhile, T1W re-engaging with their rally. Here's a blade from Spectra. He gets stunned up once or twice. The pulse bomb from Milan Ron. I mean, Spectra barely dodges that. But the kill feed, all four Team CC seconds away from flipping it as a Gravitic Flux invested, committed from high B, but it's still not enough to take down Team CC. Really good dive there from Gaga to help facilitate Spectra killing Pineapple in the middle of that. And also, I gotta get gotta give a shout out to Super Rich there, uh, making the get down Mr. President play. Got stuck, pushed their shield out towards Spectra to make sure that it was between the Blast and the Genji that so desperately needed to survive. Brigitte laying down her life, and now Lige has this Gravitic, uh, has this Gravitic Flux? No, Graviton Search. I'm too used to the Flux. It's been a while since we've seen this much Zaya, <laughs> but what can you combine it with right now? Maybe Deer can get a pulse on very quickly, but maybe you can just do some vanilla play into it. You just trapped them long enough. Maybe a bio from 1987. Lige gets low, throws out the grab, traps most of T1W. The Immortality buys them time. The bio weakens them. They're trying to survive, and it's just not going to happen. Team CC angles around them, sieging and taking them down. Team CC now hold on to that point. Gaga with some Among level mental calculations there. The second that the grab dissipated and the immortality field was down, Gaga rolled through, knocked them all out of it and got the angle to get the pile driver as well and get an instant pick off there because he knew everyone would be low. They were in the grab and they were at their minimum HP that the immortality field would give to them. And now you have to deal with a nano blade. 1987 and Spectre are going to be combining with a lot of power here. And the bubble, bubble at the stars, we come down softly, but the immortality, Ooh. he was not able to get away from the pulse bomb. 1997 now eating a lot of pressure there from Milan Ron. You see the peel is there from the Brigida of Super Rich. The rally doing a lot of favors. This Team CC buying time for Liga to get back. They're lacking in damage and protection. Really only Hammond is bouncing around. The mine's not going to be used to zone out the point. And he's the last one to fall. Team CC will give up this point shortly to T1W. Very interesting there that Gaga was the one who got the nano boost from 1987. Maybe body blocked it while they were both messing around in the air, but Spectra potentially could have survived that pulse bomb stick with about 25 HP if they didn't have the nano boost ready. So that's unfortunate for them. But now T1W. This is going to be the last fight, no matter who wins it, I imagine. Milan are looking for another stick, and speaking, Sticking Spectra before has already shown off some excellent tricks and mechanics with this ultimate. Meanwhile, you have a supercharger from T1W that is invested, of course, behind shield. C Team CC waiting it out, but it's coming down to last fight. 87% plus T1W, full of ultimates. 
Maybe a Molten Core to zone it off. High B. Gravitic Flux that could initiate Team CC. Oh no, the stick right into Super Rich. A lot less healing. Now you have to protect 1987 with your life. And Dia starting to pop off, being a thorn in the side of T1W. The grab is thrown from League A before his death. And not enough people from Team CC are alive. Trades back and forth. Someone has to touch. T1W still in control. CC racing to the point one last time. It's a Lucio and a Hammond and a Dream, but a very small one as T1W in first round will crush it. Malaron gets a triple, Hybe gets a triple. Two excellent carries in that last fight. I've got to admit, Lemon, from what I know of Malaron, back when I cast them, they were very much a Farah centric specialist. I haven't seen a huge amount of their tracer. Maybe in more recent seasons of Contenders China, it's been more prevalent, but I was not expecting this much power coming through from a Malaron tracer. And as I speak of it, Hello, Milan, Ron Farah. I've missed you, buddy. It's been a <laughs> it's been a hot minute since we've seen each other. And definitely the pulse bomb uh, from Milan Ron onto Super Rich to stick him to make sure you have already 50% less healing with one of the supports gone. Team CC just didn't have the resources to keep trucking, but trucking in to round two on downtown. Surprised to see not a Widowmaker from Team CC. Maybe Spectra will swap, but Pineapple might be uncontested. Spectra will be on the Genji. Now he has to close the gap between him and Pineapple. Yeah, this is going to be all about finding these targets before they pick you off. The Milan... Oh, yeah, oh. that's a good start. I imagine that's a reflected headshot right there from Spectra. Will you find room for the Resvo? Zaki may have been baited in and destroyed in the process. Yeah, denying that res is so big. You don't want to just always get the first picks against a Mercy comp. You need to just crush them and overwhelm them with that pressure. Team CC warding them away, get on point, capping it pretty safely. Now Milan run and Pineapple know, well, the Widowmaker is not going to work. Going to the double flanker comp, Tracer Sombra, rotating towards that left side, <laughs> seeing Spectre use some cooldowns. Milan run through the Translocator. Get him, Translocator. Finish him off for me. <laughs> <laughs> Spectra scared away by that. Does a retreat to the safety of the team. And Gargamel just got a huge engage. Look at all those shields tanking so much damage. A good timing on the recall. Got a little bit close, but the Ana 1987 surrounded T1W, though. Also low in their health pools. Silver 3 Pineapple needing to disengage to get that healing. But CC not getting the same resources. Look at 1987 separated away from the rest. Super Rich can stay alive here. Pineapple can't take the duel by himself. Spectre doing good peels for the supports, the ones that are left anyway from CC. 40% now and growing. Just need to stall this one out. It's not a clear fight win for T1W. They'll chase away after Gaga, who gets back to safety. Interesting that Team CC did lose this, even though they had the superior pacing on that fight. Looking at both these comps, both of them are so fast. But often it's going to be about who can strike first, who can have the initiation power, who's going to win these out. Gaga will be able to initiate this next one, but this for Nanoblade first. They knocked him away from the blade. Not Nanoblade, the bubble, everything to enable Spectra as he's trying to flip mines also at the mid corridor just to slow down T1W. But either way, looks like most of CC are missing those, so even though they have control of the point. It might not be for long. Milan Ron getting the hack on the Spectra. You see Silver 3 got the memo, but doesn't want to round the corner, just trying to maybe. Wait for the rest of T1W to get there. EMP at the ready for Milan. Ron and CC not grouped up quite yet. As Silver 3 has Primal. Now he can go buck wild. He goes towards the back. EMP engage. Catches three. But the rally from Super Rich was used. So CC mostly healthy. The bio did uh, put a nail in the coffin a little bit for that fight. CC now maybe backing away. T1W down a healer though. CC might think it's winnable. Yeah, Silver's going to be in deep trouble here. Going to be very easy to take him out, but not as easy as going to be to take out Gaga. That's going to be someone wins that duel on the back foot here, but I think this is T1Ws to keep, and it could be theirs in the next fight as well. Look at the combo that's coming up. You don't have any mortality field, but you're up against a grab and a pulse bomb. How are you going to defend this? Maybe Spectra can eat this one up. Maybe Lige can shield it. Here, if you're Pineapple, you want to stick the ground rather than a person, because otherwise Lige can mitigate this all with a single Zarya shield. Waiting to see if Hybe also keeps the grab just for Spectra's Blade, and either way, Pineapple Pulse oh, Bomb why? does miss. Didn't work out. Now Tracer v Tracer mid-map. Meanwhile, keep in mind, T1W have control of the point. If this fight goes their way, Team CC 
We'll have to give up this first map. Grab thrown from high BCC falling one by one like Domino's T1W get back towards the point. Make sure no one is there to touch. CC will have to. This blade has to be big. He's up into the air. He's got the nano, but does he have any targets? He goes after the break who receives the bubble and that's just not ideal, but the bubble from Gaga will allow him to stay safe for now, but Pineapple is hunting for some Genji and CC got the flip. The other real, real hero plays getting multiple final blows on that tracer, taking matters into their own hands. Team CC losing in that fashion would have surprised a lot of fans of Contenders China. After these last seasons, Deer and Spectre have made quite the name for themselves as a DPS duo. Already T1W keeping their foot on the gas, waiting for Milan run to get that EMP. Lee Gay has already struck with the uh, with the graph though. Silver three jumped into the back. He has primal. He's been uncontested. And this could be just a disrupt the structure of Team CC even more. And there's a big finish from Pineapple. Spectra is down close to the blade. The winning condition maybe CC needed as 85 plus percent. It's the last fight. Will T1W take map one in this first to three? CC keeping themselves up. But Pineapple is hunted down. Dia is going to protect the point. See who's there to touch it. It's Silver 3 and Primal Rageborn from the heavens. Buying time and so is High Beam. Milan Run has to find the perfect EMP because his team are depending on it. And what a stick from Dia. 1987 following up. Milan Run's EMP caught a lot of CC, but not enough to slow them down. 99% T1W trying to touch one last time. But fighting this one back is Team CC forcing the round three. You know what? It's perfectly acceptable after watching Milan run on the Tracer in the previous round for Deer to be like, you know what? When I grow up, I want to be like Milan run. And they're getting it done. That was some fantastic Tracer play. Not only saving the final fight the first time around, when we saw T1W on 99% in overtime, to the point where Spectra had to pop the blade to get the double dash to trigger overtime. That's how dire things were. That's when. Dia really managed to turn up on that tracer and his tracking is hot to trot today. Evidently very much warmed up. Whoever Team CC warmed up with is going to feel very proud of the mood they got Dia in. Not sure why Ligue went for the solo grab on high B. But evidently you've got to get rid of that Zaya fast and forced to swap over onto the Wrecking Ball. But they died in the process. So that may have been a little bit too risky. And I'm not sure if Team CC can afford to take those risks right now with how much T1W is stretching their resources. T1W are really making them work for this. Absolutely. And what a close map one we're already getting. 100 to 96 for T1W on Sanctuary, then 100 to 99 on Downtown. Mecha Base, the last one. Of course, some Blades coming out, but I want to see maybe better target prioritization. Don't go after the break first, especially if there's a Saria. Not only can she you know stay alive long enough because she'll probably proc inspire heal herself but the bubble also buys her time to live um so i want to see these uh genji blades go after another support or at least soften the butter a little bit try to wait for targets to get low and then blade not just instant nano blade when you do get it either that or you've got to start tracking the cooldowns of his sire a little bit like we've seen yeah. high b doing a lot of peel with his eye bubbles and the Zyre Bubble is super important because against a non nano blade in Genji, you have to slash a bubble twice. You can't slash and dash a bubble and it'll be gone. With a nano, you can slash dash a bubble and it will go away, but there's still a lot of uptime on a blade, which can be wasted by a Zarya. So ideally, you want to maybe blade the Zarya first if you can, if they've already used their personal shield, because their personal shield is actually on a longer cooldown as well. I mean, you don't have to worry about the projector barrier afterwards, because the Zarya is dead and unable to really aid in this. Otherwise, force out the Zarya bubble first, then go on the squishier targets like the supports, especially if you have a nano, because it can be hard to react to those in time. And we're seeing a different pace in these fights than we do. Or if you guys don't know who we are, we cast over at um, Overwatch Contenders North America and Europe. And there's just a different play style and a different pace in these fights where as soon as you lose supports, you lose, you're down six versus four, six versus three. There's a clear reset. Teams back off. They don't want to waste time, especially if they don't have control of the point. No point of stalling. But with these T1W and Team CC, you're seeing a lot of these scrappier fights. Both teams committing ults when they're down a lot of players. They always think it's winnable where cc even at the end 99 to 99 99 were able to flip it and barely get away with the round win just from scrapping through uh, all the chaos 
Uh, there was some really good understanding, at least, of win conditions between compositions from Team CC on Busan. At least I want to go back to the rollout of the Widowmaker and the Pharah that we saw previously on a downtown. And it was very quickly identified by Team CC that they had to move fast. The advantage they had there against that composition was pace. The Pharah is quite slow to set up in a neutral fight, and the Widowmaker obviously is waiting to get a pick. And uh, Team 1W were definitely losing on pace there on both their DPS to get something done. And it was all about Team CC being able to strike first, get rid of those resources, and make sure that if they were going to play a pharmacy, a pharmacy would be uh, stranded up in the air like a bomber without fuel. And there was nowhere really that they could land and have any support. It would just be a two versus six down there. So really good uh, game sense from Team CC. I think that they've probably got a really good coaching staff behind them, given their long-standing dominance in the Chinese region. And I think Milan Ron brought out the Sombra at some point. I think he had a lot of numbers with the ZMP, caught a lot of people. But the issue is, is that a lot of the times there were support ults available from the other side of Team CC. They, would, I think, got one EMP, hit a lot of people, but Rally was up. And then the other EMP, they just grouped up around their Brigida without Rally and just were able to get enough resources. You didn't see the immediate follow-up from T T1W after the EMP was in place. And I don't think that many kills even followed through once the five or six-man EMP hit from Milan Ron. So... We just need to see quick reactions, the setup. Milan Ron has to take control of the comms when he's ready, when he finds the opportunity. And there needs to be a clear game plan on what they're going to do once Team CC are caught with their pants down. Yeah, when it comes to taking control as well, I'm unimpressed with T1W's Tracer uh, giving away the Pulse Bomb so freely when the Pulse Bomb and Graviton combo was going to be such a large play for them if they could actually track the cooldowns of the enemy. Usually, it's not as important to have the Graviton and the Pulse Bomb because the enemy usually has an Immortality Field ready to go. But with a lack of Baptiste from Team CC opting into the Anna and the Brigitte instead, um, I would have preferred to have had that combo be a little bit more refinedly used. I'm not sure what that word is. I've made it up. Smile <laughs> refinedly. Hey, you're the English major, not me, man. <laughs> but either way, Team CC high ground. We're back in the game. Maybe a minor DC happen. Either way, see Silver 3 just jump back into safety. Kind of playing corner. They're trying to identify who's the best target to go after. CC, a bit of a split. They have the DPS on the point. They have some tanks on the high ground sink. They just have the bubbles ready to probably give to Spectra so you can farm that blade as a first blood and second. Six versus four for CC engaging this high ground. T1W don't know what to do with it. Not able to fight back at all as the cap will go through for Team CC. Gaga coming in on that off angle was very impressive. Managed to put Protoss in a terrible position, just booping him into the center of Team CC. And then the piranhas of this comp chomped them down in no time at all. And look at the pacing on the ultimate here. They've outpaced the Pulse Bomb, they've outpaced the enemy nano boost. Gaga's going to be able to gather. Surprise minefield. Before Team 1W even know what's hit them. And Difference of second DPS too. You have an Ash versus a Tracer. Dia can play a more of aggressive playstyle. Was someone like Pineapple wants to play farther back? At least the Bob's gonna have more value. And speaking of value, the mines right at the front door, claiming two kills before T1W could even get a proper setup going. Let's talk about the tech Gaga used there as well. They saw that the uh, Silver Three Shield went down, and well, that could have been very quickly broken they actually allowed it to stay up for the minefield because the shield automatically triggers the mines and takes the damage but the aoe there meant that silver free caught within the shield was taking so much damage from those mines that were being automatically triggered really good understanding there of from gaga of all the tank mechanics needed Team CC with a flawless round three. Let's see if they can make it a third fight in a row. Oh, Nano Blade instantly that. deletes the supports. T1W just have no healing. And T1W tried to Nano Blade at the same time. That was just not bueno. Team CC 76 plus percent. T1W going to have to think about touching soon. And the color of the spectra that I'm witnessing right now is red from this Genji. Beautiful dash through both. They were even softened up by Gargar and T1W look lost for words at the moment. They can at least put Bob on the point from Pineapple, but Pineapple's already catching a bunch of poke. Look at Dia on the left-hand side as well, ready for... They can't get Bob on the point. Oh, that's tragic. They're going to need to put their bodies on their lemon and they can get stuck already. 
Well, the Graviton from Lige, Silver 3's Primal, not gonna have as much fun, but T1W, the pressure is on their shoulders. They need to touch this point. A huge pulse into Protoss. Super Rich, the only healer left, but T1W are not out of this yet. The rally, give him a lot of armor to maybe survive one last time. Team CC, they have the Hammond, oh, but they gave up the cab, so Spectra is gonna go towards Lige. You can see the Hammond of Gaga. See if we can find a pick onto the supports, but CC, I have to fight one more last time. Team on W have to play it carefully until Protoss is back, though. Until then, they've only got the Brigitte healing, but Vianna has made the commute back, and Spectra is being checked by Hybe right now, who almost has a Graviton Surge ready to go. What can you combine with it? Likely just for Silver 3 Cleave, but they forced out that bubble now from the Winston. He's going to be unable to make a very safe engage into multiple people. And Gaga taking damage means 1987 has Nano, Spectra has the blade, the bubble, but the Graviton Lighter. from Hybe traps him. And the bub and the uh, bio from Protoss denied any healing to keep him up. Huge response from T1W. And you stop Dia, who is probably trying to peel for his Genji. And as T1W know, they have the damage advantage. Look at them press into Team CC. This is the confidence we needed to see from them. 50% though, there's still quite a gap in the score that they have to make up for. Malaran's got his own little bastion of confidence to play with right now. The nano boost will be available for the blade. The question is, how are Team CC going to deal with it? If Gaga can get a good knockback on that Genji, it will be very troublesome. And Malaran's already falling low. Cannot afford to get picked off early. This is their main win condition for this fight. And they've already nano silver three. They're trying to get out some defensives. The rally started early from Super Rich, trying to give... Everyone to CC some armor, armor, mainly 1987. So he's gonna be, it's gonna take longer to kill him if you do decide to blame Milan Ron. He's gonna go in with a naked blade. No nano this time after the Brigida gets him low, but a huge buy from 1987. Keeps super rich, still kicking. It's D1W down, only one Genji, silver three with the primal to disrupt the structure of CC. 91 plus percent T1W, if you win it here, CC might have just choked round three. Lige still has for grab, but it's a sad time coming back on that Zaya. Don't know if they can even touch right now. They cannot. And Team CC upset in our first round by T1W. I imagine to much of the surprise of many contenders, China fans in our chat right now. I know that Lafon's there giving out the uh, the secret information, the same for <laughs> Kenobi. Previously, he put out some players of the week. Five of the six that he put out were Team CC players, but it does look like the multi-tiered attack of a Nano Winston into the fairly useless blade afterwards to get out all the defensives was more than enough to disrupt Team CC. And despite a huge lead of what I think was 99 to zero, Team CC consistently fumbled and fell at those last hurdles. Yeah, if you want some great insights, Kenobi did say Team CC is the team to watch. You know, back-to-back -back winners taking the week one final against T1W, but we're seeing a different look. I mean, it was a zero to 100 comeback from T1W. That was a huge challenge that they had to beat. They had to survive multiple rounds of blades multiple rounds of Gravitons and what have you thrown at them, and T1W really staying composed in this series. Doing a really good job of counting those opponent win conditions. I'll have to see if Team CC can retain the title of the best team in China when we come back from this break.
Welcome back, everybody, from the break. We're right in the middle of the action. T1W up first after that win on Busan. Now it's the Volskaya choice of Team CC. Also on the attack, no surprise with their compositions. Sticking to what they know in terms of these compositions, Gaga doing a really good job here of controlling Silver 3, but they will manage to get themselves out. Some really interesting angles coming through here from Gaga, but <laughs> the best angle is for one in the middle of the uh, Siberian Sea, of course. It's like he gave you a free first class, no return, one way ticket to there. And Team CC seems still seem happy to continue brawling out here. They can try and get a little bit of this extra progress while Gaga returns. Yeah. There was really good coordination between Gaga and Dia to take down Protoss. Already you're killing the healing, the resources of T1W. Getting this second tick, chasing after T1W who are taking a break on the high ground. Bubble given to Silver 3. And of course, Pineapple, not really a lot of room to work with. So Milanron isn't getting any support in the damage department. So Team CC just gonna keep on steamrolling this one. Getting that final tick in a few seconds. And with not much of a contest from T1W, it's gonna be a pretty fearsome time bank uh, that they're going into. Man, Gaga really is a second coming of Among, huh? They, they, they build the Wrecking Balls different in China, I'll tell you that much. Been very impressive with dives I've seen thus far, but it looks like people are waiting for Deer as they come through here. Deer sees that he has been discovered by Silver 3, and Pineapple is going to get the very good check right here, but the healing is good enough for Deer to remain in, and now Malaran is going to be the primary target. Nano. Given to Spectra, he has the blade online. Team 1W, you see how they react. They have the rally, but Zaihi still cut down. Protoss needs some support. He cannot die in this fight, or T1W won't have any healing to survive this final defense. Protoss gets the bubble. You can see Spectra hunting. 1987 with the finish. Now T1W might have Zaihi back, but have to walk through a middle of a. a Humongous amount of mines from Gaga, making it impossible for T1W to have any space to work with. CC with the final tick in a few more seconds. Is anyone there to touch? Protoss bouncing away, takes off maybe three seconds, and that's a four minute and 43 time bank for Team CC. Shame there for T1W. Still eventually got two members of Team CC down, including the Anna, who would have been very important for a protracted stall fight, especially against the dragon blade that milan run had ready to go but the pace from team cc here just pedals of a metal the entire time not giving any breathing room i think it definitely it gives a testament to the pace of team cc but they lost gaga and they were happy they, they were more than happy to just go without a main tank we we're like okay we're just gonna try and control point here we're not gonna give pineapple any angles we're gonna make sure that they're feeling on t1w like they can't do anything despite the number of players that we have available. Your team CC has such clinical dives at the start. I'm thinking of Gaga and Dia, how they were able to, their first blood was on a Protoss and having your Ana die is not great. Um, it's really hard to defend yourself as Ana when you're just getting dove on from multiple angles. And Zaihi, I mean, probably too fast, too quick and Protoss was dead before Zaihi could even peel. And then you had Pineapple who was on Widow when you know Team CC just run a ton of dive and have a really aggressive play style. So Pineapple was just non-existent in the point A fight. So it kind of left Mulan Ron to do the bulk of the work which not really much you can do in that case yeah it can be a bit of a, a sad time it was nice to see spectra and dia coalescing on the same target of protoss though some really good target calling coming out as well as location calling sometimes you've got to be able to call those locations pretty well as uh, as well as the target otherwise you may see a tracer blinking in the wrong direction already uh, we've seen silver three caught out here by gargar and dia who were trying to get an early assassination onto that main tank and you have T1W on the attack, got hit with a huge bio. It's probably 1987 playing high ground. And you have Dia able to follow up with that. You see, it's still a commitment on that left side from Silver 3. Even High B and the rest of T1W kind of hanging around. If they're not careful, CC will realize they could probably win the fight if they wanted to and go right on in. But so far, Team CC kind of just using this opportunity to farm ults. Somehow Spectra uh, maybe committed without any help from the rest of the team. So first of all for the defense, T1W trade out with their own Genji. Big kill from Dia. Now T1W starting to get on this point. It's really mostly Silver 3 taking the attention away from Team CC. Team CC, though, I think they could be faulted for playing with their food a little bit and allowing for the pick to come through. Wait, is that a Nano High B? How much energy do they have? Right now, they've cleared out 1987, but let's see if they can get anything more done. They almost have a Graviton Surge. They're so low on players. This can't be a W. And, oh, you 
you see Hypey focusing the Hammond? I mean, you shouldn't focus a Hammond unless you have some CCs lined up. And Gaga has so much health. He has mines. He has the mobility to just dodge you if he knows he's going to lose that duel. I want to see Hybe commit to these squishy heroes that are on the point in front of him, especially if you get the Nano, your high energy. Don't waste your time on Gaga. Well, this may at least force out some defensive cooldowns in the form of a Graviton Surge. Pineapple can maybe get that pulse on as well. 5% away, that's definitely going to be available. That could get a lot done, but Team CC are loaded for bear on the defense. They're ready to use the Graviton Surge whenever they ain't bothered at all. Five ticks and they're still growing. So given the bubble over Silver 3, not in any danger. You need to see the pounce in that top right area. That's probably where 1987 is. She can at least survive this sleep, maybe, but... Lots of ultimate starts with the mines from Kaga right in that top left doorway where the supports are hanging out. Forces out the rally from Zahi. Just to reinforce uh, Hybe as much as he can, but they're they're just getting slapped and they're just not able to do anything. That was such a slapstick kill onto Zaihi. Gaga just come in from stage right to knock Zaihi into those mines. I have no idea how they're getting it done, but man, I want to study some Gaga VODs to get better at Wrecking Ball. He's putting on an absolute show right now. Dia could get an early stick in this corner if they are patient enough. Of course, Lige could facilitate that a little bit further, but you may want to combine that with the Blade instead, or even with just a pile Driver and some vanilla play. Yeah, Nano Blade available from T1W, Rally, Graviton, like, you name it. There's so many counters to this combo. He has to choose this moment wisely as Team CC, their defense is on the complete other side of, of this map, on the top right area. So how Team 1W are going to close this gap? They keep getting distracted by Gaga and they build enough time for Spectra to Nanoblade first, trigger pulled, and has shot down Team 1W in the last 46 seconds of their attack. Distracted is exactly the right word for you use. That's an interesting crosshair. <laughs> Just uh, a bit Wait. of a, a, a corner <laughs> of, a, of a black crosshair. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that's one of the more unique ones I've ever seen. But distracted is the right word. hybe has been sitting on this grab for like three minutes now. At, at this point, it's fermented into some sort of gravitic wine. It needs to be used. Team CC, they keep getting the engagements because Gargar just demands so much attention. Right, Milan, Ron, it's your time to shine. The last, do not die with Blade. Do not do it. T1W, they have the ults. Seven seconds left. They're now positioned on the point. Lige holding onto the grab. He throws it out, trapping the oh supports. Zaihi, Protoss, he gives a nano out, but Milan, Ron dies with Blade. I told him not to do it like that. It didn't listen. Team CC, full holding T1W and tying the series. T1W's attack right there was paced like a slug on wet concrete, man. They died with a blade. They died with a bomb, with the grab, essentially. The Team CC just commandeered every single fight. It was about Gaga getting these engagements done. And I thought that Silver 3 had got uh, a little bit of a good engagement with the Wrecking Ball there on that final fight. But still, they're, they're, they're scared. I, I don't know. They just don't press Q. They're saving it for map number three, evidently. Uh, just Gaga gets the trophy for the most annoying Hammond that T1W has ever played against. I mean, the guy had so <laughs> much freedom. I never really saw sleep or any shield bash or anything to stop him. He's getting in, getting out. He's got mines on top of the support spaces. Uh, they're dying to that. They're getting pushed into the mines. That's how free low Gaga has been. And <laughs> you're just not seeing that same tank pressure from T1W. It, it just it isn't it isn't mirrored. Evidently, you can yeah. see why they selected to go to Volska. Gaga and Gaga be like picks wrecking ball. I know a spot, and then boots your <laughs> Brigitte into a minefield that they never saw coming. I am concerned if T1W continue with this pace of their attacks. It, it feels like they are waiting for an opening rather than making one themselves, and you can't rely on Team CC to make mistakes. It just, maybe it's just uh, Milan Ron suffers from perfectionism a little bit. Don't we all have just, you want it to be perfect. 6K blade or nothing. Off. Yeah, 6K blade or I don't use it at all. And just <laughs> padding the stats. But um, uh, it's okay to shield bash and die. If you can at least get a one-to-one -one trade, you did something. You applied pressure. You you made space, Cap. I, I don't know, but you, you got to make a decision. You cannot see this lack of confidence. And for T1W to lack that after taking map one is surprising to see.
Well, we're going to go and buy uh, T1W a couple of uh, <laughs> life-affirming motivational books. We'll be back after <laughs> a quick one-minute break.
Welcome back to our first match of the next Summer Cup. One-to-one -one tie series between the rematch of the Contenders China Week 1 champions. CC taking that 3-0, but T1W putting up a better fight in this tournament. Indeed so. We were told by our Chinese correspondent Kenobi that T1W flips a coin at the beginning of each map to decide whether or not they want to play Overwatch. It was Tails on Vault Sky. It was very much Tails. Let's hope it came up heads this time. Team CC, they're going to find out how T1W are going to respond as they're going to be attacking first with T1W sitting ready on the defense. We'll have to ask permission to quote that next time before the PM Never. drops already. But uh, is the spaghetti going to drop for T1W this time? Silver3 says yes. He was the only one engaging in a small room. And look at High B disengaged, knowing his main tank is down. Team CC already setting up camp, setting up base uh, on this point. Two ticks, T1W give up. And they'll be hanging around the underpass, the, ca the entrance to the castle for hopefully a better defense. Well, I've got bad news and I've got middling news. The middling news is that Milan Run is halfway to Blades. So there may be some kind of retake available right here. But the bad news is Team CC have 5 minutes and 40 seconds to get the Reich involved B. That's quite a bit of time to play with. And Silver 3 has already been forced out of this bubble. It's going to make him a prime target for Dia to farm off of. Silver Tree tried to hang out. Uh, Silver Tree. Silver Three <laughs> hanging out in his no no square. Winston bubble on the high ground. See Gaga pressuring that right side. T1W, you know, the, once the cooldown of Winston is used, it's kind of time to go. It's it's almost a free kill. CC on the cart, though. It's looking at the blade of Spectra. He's got the Nana from 1987 at the ready. Silver Three using the jump. Top left high ground. He's getting pocketed from Protoss. He's eating a few shots to help his friend out. Milan Ron with the first blade. A bio hits him, though. Might slow things down. And Chaos in uh, use from Spectra. He's got a triple kill while we were watching Milan Ron have fun. And Team CC should be able to advance the cart. Spectra used Chaos. It was super effective. That's how you mess mm -hmm. with uh, T1W, apparently. Well, Ron just made 1987's life a little bit painful, but Protoss somehow didn't manage to get the Nano off. Uh, evidently aiming at those Genjus is hard. Maybe they had a confirmed target on and forgot to say yes. D is looking for a good stick, but isn't going to find it just yet. Still, distance gained by this car. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Sad face dot PNG. No jump, only pain. T1W can't even touch. There's someone around the corner. There's a Tracer Pineapple. He needs help. I don't think the rest of the team are there. High B maybe has the Graviton. He's got Bio. He's trying to cleanse it. Milan Ron reflecting everything he can. The Grav is actually humongous. As a response from Grav from Ligue is a no from me, but it's very close. It's four versus now one. Uh, team CC don't have enough left in the tank. That was a really cool uh, Winston shield as well from Silver 3, managed to, managing to cut off Gaga's Winston from any uh, long-range healing that 1987 may want to give. High be really a savior there, coming out with the Nano and the Grav. Sometimes we question the Nano's Zarya, but sometimes it's the best thing to carve through an annoying Genji. You can't deflect the laser beam, and of course, being made mostly of metal, sticking them in the microwave does lead to a very unhappy Weeaboo thereafter. For now, Spectra can just poke away, look for an opening, or look to go gain that blade. Or oh, 1987 is going to possibly get the Nano to give over to that Winston. I wonder if Spectra or Milan Ryan are going to wait for each other to blade. So while everyone is distracted, which said others Genji, then they can uh, use the chaos, as I've said before. But Team CC already down their break. 1987 eats the sharp end of the blade from Milan Ron. Does die shortly after that, but I think the damage is pretty done there from T1W, slowing down the pace of Team CC, who still can't get through to point B. Okay, Protoss didn't have to use the, uh... <laughs> okay, dear. That was an optimistic blink. There we go. That's what he was looking for. Protoss didn't have to use for Nano, which is important. It means that they can now give that over to Silver 3. This is going to give a huge amount of survivability over to the Winston. You can make the Nano Winston engage. And then when you get low afterwards, with that 50% damage reduction, you can pop Primal Rage, which essentially gives you over 2,000 effective HP to play with as a Winston in this forthcoming engagement. And if they go on the breach, you can knock them all off. Play. Oh, Blade from Spectre is being used during the with a nano. Uh, Silver 3 is hanging around the back line while the rest of his team dies. I'd like to see that Primal Rage maybe protect his Ana or, or Brigida and um, have a plan with it. Team CC, point B in their sights. A few more meters to go and not much else T1W can do. Pineapple not allowed to reset there by Dia. 
does have the Pulse Bomb available, but will they wait for High B to catch up on pace with the Graviton Surge right here? The Rally from Super Rich won't be enough to deal with a Pulse Bomb Graviton, but it may be enough to deal with just the Graviton by itself. So if Pineapple can be uh, forced to use this early, feel like we need to make a hero play, it could be very bad at C1W. Team CC with the rally. Goodbye to the tanks. This could be a moment to engage. And Tia gets reflected on. Well, long run with the first kill. T1W six versus five. And Silver three gets back into safety. T Team CC dodging the full spawn placed by Pineapple. As Dia down, Pineapple might have some more freedom here if he wants to pressure the back line, not getting enough healing. As a Graviton from High B, I think maybe just going after Lige, so he couldn't use his Graviton in case he built up any energy. T1W, it's better to use ults and get the one kill than not use it at all. We've learned that from Volskaya. Wait, they're going to use the Primal Rage as well. Team CC don't think this is over. At least Gaga certainly doesn't. He's going to feed over a huge amount of ultimate charge here to High B and also Silver Threes pop their own. Anger management class is all around right now, and looks like Silver 3 is going to win out on this one. Huge plays coming through from that Primal Rage, catching everyone on the bridge or in a very confined area. It means that maximum DPS can come out of that Winston. Now you've got a lot to worry about if you are T1W. Silver 3 can't survive the blade as easily and can't bat it away with angry fists, especially when going up against a Graviton Nano Blade combo. Uh... Yep, see you later. Quick stuns and quick deletion don't need to engage you, do, you don't give need a to on the defense just waste team cc's time that's all you have to do and they gave away two free kills now gaga jumps in he's got the bubble of the winston of course and the zarya the graviton thrown from league catches a lot 1987 could get the bio but it's fine the kills still follow through t1w now trying to hide away hype needs to live he's got high energy he had the graviton but might not be ready he might not be back in time before cc cap as the rally reinforces everyone gaga with a primal at the front door denies t1w's chance to fight again spectra didn't even need that blade was given banana as well there were so many resources left for team cc but there was absolutely zero hope for the defense and one minute and 17, that's a very important number. Lemon, those last 17 seconds mean that if T1W capture Eichenwald in overtime, they will not get a second attack. And it's also worth noting that Eichenwald was the pick of T1W. I imagine that it uh, didn't feel quite so good after that point A take. That was one of the most flimsy defenses I've seen in a while, but they really made up for it on point B. Stopping the car at this point, at the end of point B, where our camera currently is floating, is very very advantageous because once you take someone out from the attack they are not really coming back there's a long commute there but your defensive spawn is so close that you can win on attrition it's like the final point of a uh, point c for a defense with how long the spawn distance is for the attackers and you're just seeing more clean plays from team cc starting with lige's graviton uh, surge. It's always more coordinated. It seems to be that he calls the targets that are in it, and then everyone commits to it. You're not seeing Hybe do the same thing. I think his Graviton on point B was thrown in panic. I think it might have helped uh, Team 1W get the fight win, but you're seeing a difference of structure there, along with Spectre getting more value from his blades. Although, I think we were watching Milan on our Silver 3. You're seeing Spectre more on the kill feed, obviously converting these fights more often with his ultimates, but Team 1W a win is still on the board. It's not lost yet. You have to finish the map, though. Yeah, T1W still feeling okay in this map. That defense turned from tragedy into pretty good, fairly fast. Going to be exchanging these Winston dives right now. But look at this. It's not going to be much healing at all for Gaga, thanks to the shield that was placed by Silver 3. But Malamron going down first means that there's very little brawling power for T1W to play with. Just all the attention went to Gaga when he jumped in as the Winston. He got pocketed by Protoss, got all the armor pack from Zaihi, and actually wasn't the first to fall, surprisingly, even though he jumped in the middle of six people. And as T1W were all focusing on killing Gaga, the supports kind of fell in the middle of all that chaos. So T1W, first fight off the board. Seems to see a lot of unrestrained aggression here. T1W may be able to take advantage of that. Later into this series, for now, Dia looking for an early pickoff. Milan Ron has been consistently outdoored by this trace, but you could see that actually Pineapple was trying to get the 2v1 cover right there. Ooh, T1W is taking a lot of damage. Milan Ron has to just keep an eye on Dia. He is killing people so fast as the tracer, mechanically really insane this series. CMCC just back away towards the point. T1W, a little bit of space to work with. Looking for 
Nano Winston. There is the jump from Silver 3 into the bag. Dia thinks it's a moment to siege the supports. Goes after Zaihi as Protoss is maybe separated away from him. Now T1W don't have any healing left. It was a great response from Team CC. As the Gravitons thrown from high B, unless they get the kill super quick, they don't have any healers. This is very sketchy for T1W. Yeah, high B is going to give over that dash reset and now Spectrus more than happy to try and carve through what's left. The first tick may come through and still Team CC are waddling back to the point. They can try and recontest with a Graviton and Pulse one though, and that'll make quick work of T1W. Looks like the supports are back from T1W as well. Second tick, can Team CC make a comeback? There's the jump from Gaga. Wait for the Graviton thrown from Lige. The Pulse bomb right into it. An instant double kill, T1W. Oh, they could smell the final tick. 99.5%. Team CC engaged at the perfect time. Huge credit there to Gaga getting the perfectly timed leap engage. And I think Lige gave the shield over as well to make sure that Gaga wasn't going to be knocked back by the whip shot. That's one of the most important uh, plays you can make right now, giving the bubble to that Winston because Brigitte can make every single leap useless if they hit the whip shot they want. Still, T1W can bring overwhelming force to this next battle. I anticipate that they will win it. Open up with the rally, make sure everyone's quite well armored, and then you can use the pulse from oh. afterwards. Going for the blade without the nano being ready. If he would have waited just a little bit, would have had maybe more damage for it. At least he survives, but it's not going to be for long. T1W, you know, once that blade is clearer, the aggressive push just to surround T or Team CC is just needing that final take. It does go through. Now they're on the card. And Team CC and still have a good defense they can have coming up. Beautiful bubble from High AB. Like we said before, without the nano, you've got to get two slashes on to that bubble to break it. A slash and dash will not work. It won't hit the 200 HP breakpoint the projected barrier has. Gaga and 1987, they can combine with the primal Winston. Give them a nano boost, that's a lot of survivability, a lot of cleave that could be put into Protoss. Cause that Ana to panic, maybe. There's Gaga jumping in, but the pressure is really T1W committing Milan round to go after 1987. And with Pineapple aiding with it, it's pretty easy kills. Team CC really thought they were safe on the high ground while Gaga jumped in and just really didn't work out. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> Milan run flags himself. Sometimes it no. just be that way when it comes to the wall climb of Genji. Sometimes you press that space bar and uh, Genji has a little brain fart and he forgets how to wall climb. This is going to give Team CC an opening. That's kind of tragic, but still. Five ults on a point here for T1W. Maybe they can make something work. Look at how deep Gaga's going. There's a big split of this fight. The Tangs need to commit to that left side, who, at the, while Gaga was in, Primal Rage into effect. The Graviton trapping CC. Needs a kill Liga here. He is high energy. The Nano did a lot of favors, as it's absolute chaos. But all you need to know is Dia is a factor for Team CC. He needs to touch one last time to buy some time for reinforcements. Team CC will have closer response. T1W, they need to finish this fight quick. Malara. Maybe Milan Ron could clutch with his blade, but with that little health, you don't really want to play with it. Oh, that is so tragic. If Milan Ron hadn't fallen, they would have had the Nano Blade ready, I think. And then they could have struck first onto Team CC, but now they're in the same position where they held Team CC for about three minutes beforehand. You're only going to get two attacks out of this if you're T1W. Maybe you can save that blade until the Nano is ready, but I doubt you really want to keep that pace unless you're allowing Silver 3 to eat up a huge amount of damage. It's like a top left approach. Gaga knows what's coming, joins back his team. The defense also on this high ground. It's T1W. Don't have the nano ready, but Milan Ron likes to blade without those. Spectra might be more patient, waits for 1987 to have that. We also have the Graviton from Lige that can trap Milan Ron. If he feels Milan Ron, Milan Ron is a threat. Lige with the Graviton. Spectra combines it with the blade, slashing into three, going after the four, reflects the sleep into <laughs> Protoss. Oh my goodness, Team CC on a tear. That was a beautiful reflect, a beautiful grab, a beautiful blade as well. Team CC though, now have a little bit less for this final fight. T1W still are looking at a win here, and over the course of this, because Malaran has held onto this blade that it is now technically mature, they will be able to have a nano blade good to go. Protoss can enable Milan run here if they so desire, and he cannot be shut down with a solo grab. Gargoyle's not even going to have a shield right here. That could be a critic. Oh no. You don't get picked off by the supports, Milan run. This is final fight. 
Yeah, T1W, I think there's a tracer back there. It's pineapple on the cart. So is Silver 3. Team CC, they have the ults to win it. But can they withstand the Milan Ron Blade? Protoss waiting for the nano, gives it over to him. Dio with the huge stick as Team CC just stuffing T1W as one last fight. Will Team CC go on match point? Seems Team CC are missing both their healers now, so this is a big chance for T1W to finish it here. It's overtime into effect. They don't want to overextend too far as a blade from Milan Ron is heard off into the distance. Spectre tries to mirror it at like 30 HP. I'm not sure what you were thinking, but T1W are thinking about their plan going into point C. Both of our Genjis right now competing for the light speed feeds. <laughs> fr fr frankly, no, neither of them deserve <laughs> to call this win their own, no matter who comes out on top here. T1W are looking at an overtime cap now, just physically, with the time that they have and the length they have to cover with this payload. I'm not sure if it's entirely winnable. It'd be a miracle if they cap with a second in the time bank. That's exactly what they're going to be looking for here. Pineapple's already been forced out of a recall, and D is going to be exactly the same. Oh, he stuck Silver 3, who jumped into his team. I was a little concerned there. The Graviton's going to trap them exactly where they want them. T1W fight back with their own Graviton with most of the team dead. I hate it. 38 seconds. <laughs> T1W are going to hate this next fight if they don't win it. I'll tell you what, it's it's a bit messy right now, but messy is exactly where China thrives as far as I've been told. Spectra's desperately trying to plink away, get that Dragon Blade ready. Hopefully this one will be used with slightly more health than the previous one. Packed health back here by Milan Run gives a big advantage to Pineapple to go straight into a Shield Bash, but going to use their recall and remain alive for now for this final battle. You see Hybe committing to Gaga, but no one is really helping him. It's a good first pick, though. Team CC with a lot less healing. 19A7 gave a nano. Didn't even save it for Spectra's blade, or maybe Spectra didn't feel like blading, but he's very low HP, so he's actually thinking about it right now. 30 HP blades are all the rage for both teams. With T1W stabilized on the cart, Dia, well, he's hunting for rabbits. He's hunting for rabbits coming out of the spawn room doors, but might want to might, might want to just participate in this fight. He's thinking Wait, about is he it. trying to spawn camp? He's spawn camping Silver Three right now, but that's a Winston. That's not the easiest spawn camp to go for. Are they even <laughs> going to be able to touch the car? They've got to stay on there, surely. Spectra has a blade. He's killed the support, so no healing left for T1W in overtime when they needed it the most. The box of victory, the box for round two in their sights, but Team CC closed the door. It is now match point. That was quite an interesting map. I think that's uh, th those are words that are going to come out of my mouth regarding the Overwatch <laughs> we have just witnessed. I'm surprised we stuck with Dia for so long, attempting to <laughs> spawn camp a Winston of all things. A Winston with Primal, by the way. So there wasn't going to be much of a frag there, but evidently the rest of Team CC had that in hand. They were super happy to have that bonus 17 seconds in case somehow they didn't manage to contest the point in time. Milan Run is getting a little bit messy right now with the Genji. It's a far cry from a dominance on Trace that was exhibited on Busan by uh, Milanara. And some people like to skydive to feel that rush, and some Genjis like to blade antenated and 30 HP just to feel the rush of maybe surviving <laughs> and killing everybody. <laughs> um, we saw some glimpses of coordination. We had the Graviton Dragon Blade. Usually you don't need to invest more than just the Graviton to kill uh, an entire team if you catch them all in it, but at least you're seeing that team wipe of the Graviton Dragon Blade is working out. But what doesn't work out is when you Dragon Blade at 30 HP and Bios. So uh, cleaning things up a little bit, I think, is the motto of this match. It's, it, I, I, I'm going to be I'm going to be kind of I'm going to say that the uh, the ultimate style here is definitely very laissez faire. Everyone is uh, making their own way towards success. However, they're doing it at very variable rates right now. It seems like Team CC is closing in. They are on match point in our first to three scenario. I believe it's going to be Escort that's coming up next. That's going to be the choice of T1W as to where we go. And you can find out which location we'll be heading to after this break.
Welcome back, everybody, to the next summer tournament. Team CC T1W first match and match point for CC. So I'll be starting this attack on Gibraltar with a Doomfist Tracer and Innovations in. Innovations in. Spectra is out. This is to, uh, of course, give a little bit of double hit scan prowess to Team CC. Meanwhile, T1W, no, uh, no sign of Midia. I was hoping we might get to see some of their Doomfists. I've seen that before, and it's been very impressive. I thought it was be uh, maybe a rival to Sparkles. Innovations hacked and almost died. Should not be ever in range of a Somber. It should be easy to just dodge or shoot forehead. You should not be able to get hacked as easily. But T1W. So looks like they're giving up some high ground to Team CC, rounding out to server side. Silver 3 needs some help. He kind of likes to play on his own. He's kind of like a lone wolf type of player. High B gives him the bubble when he's really in trouble. And a bio hits High B, so slowing this defense down even more. Silverback Wolf right now is being accosted on multiple fronts and is going to go back to spawn for the trouble. Pineapple and Innovation just going to brawl out. Everyone else is stuck in server room here. High B is going to be one of her main targets and has been anteed. It's going to be a huge dive in. Are they going to get the stick? Maybe. <laughs> He's against the wall. Protest couldn't even Thanks get away thin. from it. The supports are getting bullied. T1W need help. And Silver 3 is like, I'll contest? Question mark smile. 50% primal. Let's go. T1W, one last chance to touch. And it's gone. Team CC a vanquished through to point A. And Innovation is trying to cut off their escape here. Even with a sleeping monkey, I think that this one could be very dangerous. High is a large hitbox and large damage is going to come towards it. They're popping the momentum primal right now. And Protoss always been absolutely zerged. Yeah, if I'm Protoss, I'm leaving voice channel at this point. Like, I'm not getting any fuel. I'm not getting any tank presence. And Team CC are just in full bully mode. Like, rack up the score, make it painful. Halfway to point B. At this point, they're so, uh, they're so bully mode that Rockstar are suing for royalties. Silver 3, gonna make that leap. Oh, that was a beautiful ah! dodge from Innovation, getting away from that EMP. Was that a Zero Man EMP? No, maybe maybe yes. solo EMP on Gaga. Maybe, but that ain't it. You don't need the ult to just hack one person, just, just right click it, and you don't need to EMP nothing. Team CC, luck is on their side. Point B. I don't three. know if There's it's luck. I, <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. I don't <laughs> I'm sorry to rain on your parade, but I'm not going to call that one luck. It could be that they have got the skills to ring this back now with the Nano Blade. That's a lot of targets in the path of Milan run. In fact, oh. three, four. Beautiful play from the resident Cyber Ninja. Milan run brings it on back. It was never luck. It was always skill. Milan Ron was Milan walking this whole series, and then we saw him ran just now with that blade. It was huge. Mainly, mainly he focused the supports first. That's what we want to see. Yeah, 1987 and Super Rich have been having it too easy for too long. Big slip for onto Milan Ron. Nice bubble from. Oh, oh no, my no, God. no, 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 no! Not like this. Kenobi, get the counter. Get yeah. the counter. He told. He told me they have a counter. You can add this one I've, if it I've counts. I've seen some beautiful memes from uh, from Pulsible, Lafon, Dor, and the like about the amount of C9s we see, and that's uh, that's a plus one from me, bruv. We got to watch it. This is our first like you know contenders trying to cast together, and we saw it live. Innovation. I was here. Brain. I was here for the innovation. <laughs> five head but t1w they have a grab they have silver through primal we need to see them take charge you need to slow things down team cc have four minutes for point c t1w are hanging around they're waiting for team cc to engage first and i don't know if that's gonna work out well you gotta you gotta be proactive with this graviton search right now for high b i want to see both those supports in there just yeet it down main league game may have a chance to weed it but gargas must step to the back after popping primal oh he's awake Tossing up the back line, T1W, back into safety, back to the front. Kind of all over the place, fighting a target. He gets hit from a pulse bomb. Smart enough to stop moving. CC, though, they have a self-destruct. No shield standing in their way, but maybe just keeping it for a second life. Because the hardest push for Team CC is coming up. Respawn advantage will be for T1W. High B is waiting till Overwatch 2 to maybe grab. And the rally has started for CC. And there's the blade from the top rope. Milan Ron going after those supports. 1987 tried to sleep. I think it got deflected. And the damage has been done. T1W might have just won that fight. Okay, but everyone watch that car. Not again. <laughs> Krong has been pulling the lever. And the lever needs a rest right now. 
Team 1W, they are going to be staying on top of that cut. However, it's very difficult to C9 on this point, thankfully. League is looking to clear that one out, though, with this self-destruct. We're not seeing a huge amount of D.Va play, and you've got to... You've got to attack explosively with the D.Va, because in a long fight, that Zyra is going to just carve their initials into your mech. I think you just... Hybe's trying to figure out who to grab, and he's going to wait till Overwatch 3 to do so. Team CC, 6 versus 4 now. Big pulse bomb from Innovation, and Dia is a nuisance behind there, and Pineapple will finally come in to take care of him. Needs to recall. He's not full HP. The Brikita of Super Ridge by DS side. There's the finish. And the primal from Gaga is just restructuring the backline of Team <laughs> <laughs> There is the IB crap. And it's, and it's eaten from League A. Double self-destruct. Team CC just making an embarrassment of this defense. Oh, this is so sad. Echo, play Havana <laughs> point one theme. <laughs> Hybe has been holding onto that grab for years. That 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 was a mature grab. That was aged like a fine wine. Oh no, it's okay. Alexa, add, add innovation to my cart. <laughs> like please, <laughs> that could have been done even sooner. Well, that's what you play the diva for to be able to mitigate those win conditions. And it feels like League A definitely was in the brain of Hybe at that point. I'm at least happy that T1W have made some progress on uh, ascertaining the recipe for Nanoblade. Can be a, it can occasionally be difficult, but uh, I'll give you a clue. For all of you at home who are looking to play along or cook along with a stream, uh, you're going to need two ingredients, a, nano, uh, a Dragon Blade and a Nano Boost. And if you combine those together, those make the sumptuous dessert we call Hee Hee Hoo Hoo Nano Blade Easy Wipe. And T1W has managed to do that twice now. So... Uh, Huge, huge progress all around. Big round of applause from our studio audience. That's it. <laughs> that, it's me, your audience. But you know I mean, they had a really good nano blade. You point down point B, but winning a point B defense, you should be able to really just kill the time bank. And then they got C9 dot. So mental boom is very clear for T1W. Now jumping to the high ground with the bubble. You can see that there's going to be Dia as a widow on this defense. So I want to see Pineapple commit to it and be careful if Super Rich is going to be pocketing Dia as well. And if Pineapple's having an issue, you need to see Silver 3 help out with that. Silver 3 not actually knocked back during the uh, during the leap, which was quite interesting that Liga didn't decide to do that. Gargar's cleaving through so much right now. He's going to need a little bit of babysitting from Rihanna, though. That's going to be disengaged. At least getting through to car wash. Team CC have the high ground though, so T1W are kind of watching their front and their back and see where are these people going to drop, but they also have the front control, so they got a lot of space to work with. Team CC have Gaga dropping. Of course, without a Zarya, he's not able to get peeled for as easily. You need to see League A just be attached to his side. Nano available for 1987, waiting to see if that's given over to Gaga, of course, without a Genji Blade to worry about. And Gaga's not going to get any help at all. Not even a rival. Pineapple right now could make the commute to try and deal with Dia. Really good sightline for them right here. And that's why you see T1W hiding behind this building, because Dia's still on that first high ground. We haven't been forced to move yet. Big stick, but that's a nice bubble from Hybe. Mainly, you just got to give room for team for Team CC's Dia to work with. He's probably on the high ground. T1W pressuring the cart. Innovation. He's looking for supports. He finds Pineapple. And of course, Protoss is there too, but with the rally, Innovation has to be careful. And Gaga, Primal, going after the Ana, getting him in the corner. Protoss gets to sleep, but the train <laughs> is too late. DC, they'll have all the kills they need to hold another fight. For anyone who's fallen asleep next to their partner, the sleeping backhand is the one that hurts the most because it stings of betrayal as well. <laughs> <laughs> Innovation's going to try and take out Silver 3 as they disengage. But I think that that's going to be T1W running out of steam on this particular attack. Team CC now, they can pop the emphasize in advance to get a really good idea of where T1W wants to position themselves. And that could mean that they could intercept high beyond their way to get a good grab. And 1987 is at the end of point A. You have Super Rich, who's playing by Gaga's side now. Stick into the Winston. Silver 3 has to be careful where he's jumping to. You don't want to pull no XQC there. But Team CC, 6 versus 5. Continuously applying the pressure, seeing to get more kills. A great bubble from Gaga in the middle of the team really cuts off some of that healing. T1W, they completely give up that high ground, so this is more time taken away. 
What I want you to watch for here is for Zaya Bubbles and for Winston Bubble, because once those are gone, Ligue can get so much done with a self-destruct. Those very uh, slow supports like 1987 or rather Protoss are going to be very vulnerable to that. Now T1W have a grab, a pulse bomb, Pineapple gets stunned, but Gaga tossing them up. <laughs> it's Genji Blade against Helping the Hive get over. Uh, Milanron is trying to do a lot here, and a self-destruct probably denied him a lot of space he was trying to work towards. And also the bio from 1987 just killed the whole momentum that Milanron probably thought he had. 46 seconds and T1W, it doesn't look like there's an end in sight. Interesting that CC decided to uh, nano the Widowmaker. Innovation here could have bit off a little bit more than they could chew, but still have a recall. So no harm, no foul, and a pulse almost ready to go. Protoss has been in this situation before on the defense. Will it be just as painful this time? They're going to get away with it and Innovation. Oh, wow, they are really pushing their luck at this point. No fear. Yeah, the, the peel of the match goes to that ladder protecting Protoss from innovation for the seconds he needed to get away. More peel than we've seen from the rest, but it's okay. D1W, 10 seconds, and your grav giver of high B is dead. Dia has been a thorn in their side. He's been on the high ground uncontested. T1W thought they could win the ground war, and Silver 3 tossing up the ground. He's got the primal. You need a presence on this card. You need to see Team CC die, and it just doesn't seem to be the case. Match point for Team CC. No end in sight for T1W. Hybe should be back soon. The Graviton coming in too late. Silver 3 has to touch the cart. Gaga closing the doors on that push. T1W, Hybe is there. He's looking at the ground. Kind of like you did the rest of the match and Team CC 3-1 victory will be moving on in our bracket. Despite a fearsome start from T1W on control, it felt like they ran out of batteries after expending all of their power on that first map and they will be going down to our lower bracket. But fear not, they will have a chance for all you T1W fans to roll on and back through and get to the grand finals to play for that huge cash prize. But there are going to be a lot of difficult teams in the way. We still have two teams from Korean contenders, including Season 1 champions O2 Blast and Runaway in this bracket. Still, you'll be able to see them all play today. This, though, this was Team CC showing that the best team in China are nothing to be trifled with. They're confident enough to go to the double hit scan as well. They're not showing that the Genji is a crutch they need to rely on. They're happy to play with both Dia and Innovation. And Dia has also shown off a mean tracer today as well, meaning that Innovation doesn't even need to be in all the time. Also thought 1987 held his own on the Ana for Team CC. And it's hard to give credit to supports because some credits had an easier time than others. When you have space to work, it turns out you can actually play the game. But Team CC with a very one-sided 3-1. And we had a lot of hope maybe for T1W when they were able to force the round three and take the map one on Busan. But like you said, loser's bracket run for them for now. This Team CC will be awaiting the winner of Runaway versus Ignite 1. That will be coming up on stream next, so don't go anywhere.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're back here with the NetEase Esports X Tournament. We've got a little bit of Korean style coming your way. We're starting things off with Runway and Ignite One. You may notice your casters have been subbed out. Now it is Door and Moxie on the mics. I hope you're doing well, Moxie. I know this is a big matchup for you. You've been looking forward to getting to yell about a little bit of Runway. Why don't you run us through today's matchup? I mean, yeah. When I looked at the bracket, I looked at one game. And there was one that I wanted to see, and it was Runaway versus Ignite 1, which is Dur, our honor to get to bring to all of you lovely folks, because these teams have not actually run up against each other yet. But it's going to be a very interesting one, because Runaway, in pure Runaway fashion, are going to be coming in with an absolutely stacked roster. And there's a little bit of an irony in that stacked roster door, because they picked up Uyo. And I think that was actually something that they managed to pick up on the 30th of July. So a very new conquest. But for those of you that know your runaway facts, you know that Wheel was on GC Busan. In fact, he was on the very GC Busan who completely torpedoed Runaway's hopes and dreams back when they were able to win three maps. And then GC Busan comes out with a four map in a row. So he's going to be on the roster, he's not going to be up against them, and he'll be joined by a lot of really good runaway pedigrees. We're going to have Mag in, and this is one to watch as well. He's been on runaway since 2018. He's here, he's been on the next tournament a very long time. He was with the team when they were able to come in that first place in 2018 summer, uh, spring. And he was with the team when they fell a little bit further from that first place, picking up only second in the next iteration. Well, Mock, we already have our game one up and ready. And all your fangirling about Runaway aside, we've got a night one on the other end of things, and their roster looks equally as stacked. Q and Q, Wuya and Crystal all on the same roster. This is the definition of a stacked team. Wuya has been making waves recently, especially Crystal is just adding onto that roster. You already see Assassin in the back line looking to take on the Widowmaker, living up to his namesake, takes down Jimmy, giving a runaway the one-man advantage heading into things here. The first point just about to unlock the merits, un unlocked the other DPS's head. Crystal goes down and with that runaway, we're going to be able to clean up the first tick. There's no contest at the moment on to merit because Crystal's just not a lie to live. Crystal's the one thing that Ignite One are relying on busying up that back line and trying to keep Merit occupied so that Jimmy can either find a support like that Batiste or be able to claim the Widowmaker and claim space. But at the moment, Merit is reigning supreme because Jimmy isn't allowed to get close. Yeah, Jimmy is fearing it, but no longer pops Merit's head off, gives them that one-man advantage they wish they had in the previous fight. Now we can see Ignite One start to close the space, move in with their Orisa, and really establish himself on point. Max gonna run away for dear life, popping the Fortify on the way. Immortality Field from Wrench has not been used yet. Most notably, though, in the back line, Jimmy going down, you're losing a lot of that damage. Crystal now has some serious work to be doing. The supports need to go down here soon for Runaway if Ignite One want to take it over. Otherwise, they're just going to continue to run it back off the back of Merit, continuing to take down player after player with the Widowmaker. At the moment, it's just the DPS running Supreme. Both Crystal and Assassin, if these guys are given the floor, they will be killing up huge in the kill feed because there's only one little bit of CC currently in play door. And it's both for that Brigitte, that shield bash, which means these fights tip the favor of the people who are in control of the space. And currently, that's Runaway. Yeah, they're trying to give their Widowmaker the better advantage here. It's been back and forth between Merit and Jimmy, but the visor being popped first, the sights being given over to Runaway. Ignite one half the respect that have to take the long way around, but that's into the welcoming arms of Assassin and his blade gets himself one. Looking for a nice little two-piece breakfast here on Ignite one side. And Runaway are gonna hold on to the point. 80% taken over, Mox. It's last fight territory. And unfortunately for Ignite one, they are gonna be coming in with a whole bunch of ultimates to the name, but Wheel has got the Sigma Flux. So you can just pop it, and that means you don't get to contest. You don't even get to touch point. Oh, they might not even get that touch. Like you mentioned, the Pulse Bomb completely whiffs straight into the Immortality Field. Oh, that's a nice cooldown to get out of the way. It opens the door for Ignite One to actually come in and start finishing off kills. That's if they can even touch the point, Moxie. They're not going to make it. First oh. point over to Runaway. Oh, Margie going onto the hammer, but he is just chewed out within seconds, and Runaway are able to pick up Sanctuary. They were the favorites to come into this. Ignite One, they're going to have to step up. It's the DPS that are going to have to step up heading into Mecha base. You have to have the same impact that we're seeing Merit and Assassin come up constantly 
in that kill feed. Crystal has got to be able to stand up to run away his DPS so that he can get to that backline, so that he can put revenge into the situation of using immortality field in early, similar to how we saw Ignite 1 being punished constantly every single time their supports got surrounded. Hey, well, things changed a little bit, and so do these compositions, Moxie. The tank lineups have been completely altered. Runaway going for a much more brawl-heavy composition, whereas Ignite 1, they want to play the Winston Zarya dive. Watch for the bubble timings here between Maji and QMQ. If they get those rotations right, they should be able to chip away at Runaway's defense and eventually win this fight. However, there's so much room for punishment. In fact, immediately be taking advantage of Crystal Falls without the help of the Zarya. So much focus going on to the Winston, but they forget their back lines completely open and run away, take advantage. Ignite 1, when you run the Sombra, when you run this Genji, you don't do a lot of damage, especially because that Genji nerf coming through. Sombra has to have the space to properly operate, and at the moment she's not getting free reign because Merit's there with that flashbang, keeping that backline safe. Chiro might not be on the brig, but you've still got CC to keep that Sombra away. Yeah, now things get really, really tough for Ignite when they've got no room to work with. Imagine a dive composition with nowhere to go. It just feels awful here. They finally managed to wrap the way all the way around, but 18% has already ticked over on the point that Winston goes in. He's got little to no help from his Sorry, He's got to run into the opposing spawn. The point's going to begin to take over, but they don't have a main tank for another 10, 15 seconds while he gets held up. Forget that. They don't have an off tank either. Merit's taking him down one at a time on this McCree. A headhunter with the six shooter is not somebody you want to be facing down while Runaway hold on to the point just over 40. And unfortunately for Ignite 1, they don't have their win condition yet. Jimmy has not been able to build up to this EMP and Crystal is lacking even further behind on this blade. You're going to have a Nana, but you've just got to plunk it onto Magi or even QMQ, the fully charged at Zarya and hope it's enough to force revenge into using this uh, immortality field early. Hope wasn't enough to get him that first point, Moxie. I don't think Hope's going to get him this one. They need some clean dives. They need a solid nano onto this Winston. They need to take down Merritt, who has been causing so many problems. Assassin comes in with the blade. Cannot finish up heals. Great heals by the side of Ignite 1. But unfortunately, it's not enough to counter all those ultimates. Amplification Matrix thrown out as well to just make it so much harder to take on that point. 70% taking over. We're getting the last fight territory, but Ignite 1 are not done with this. They're staggering themselves out. Things are getting even dicier. Merit gets one last kill before he goes and that should be enough for runaway to hold on to this one moxie and because of the stagger you've now forced yourself out of 10 percent of this point QMQ is able to get wheel and that should open the way for the team to come on through they're going to have emp as well but they've got to hold on to it it's the final fight and they've got to have something in the tank for when runaway come into this next competition and they're not gonna opt to stall it all the way to 99 percent ignite one though they have to make these ultimates count they had kept a hold of it. They kept a hold of the EMP. They've still got this blade. Now they have to just divide these up, divvy them so that they're able to buy out as much point percentage as they possibly can and catch what Runaway are doing. These guys are going right underneath. They're forcing this fight onto the point so that they can come in with the shatter. Oh, Magic didn't have a clue what was hitting on the dead eye from behind. Jimmy's going to trade it out onto the DPS player who's been popping off all night. But the Immortality Field keeps the rest of them alive. Crystal gets a blade and gets absolutely nothing with it. The only ultimate left in their arsenal is going to be the Primal Rage from Magi that it can only really contest the point right now. Runaway are going to reassess themselves, position themselves up on the high ground, try and take care of this Ana, and take care of all of the loose ends before moving on to the point to initially take it over. Amplification Matrix popped on the higher ground as well to make sure that Ignite 1 can't just stay on that point. margie has got to go in deep with that Primal. Well, points been ticked 99%. Crystal does manage to get the touch in. Ignite 1 have regrouped with all six members and Nano down to the Winston. It's going to make that damage really matter. Wuya, though, falls on the on. And with that, there's no main heals for Ignite 1. They're going to get chipped down unless this Brigida can do some serious work on the front lines. Magi and Jimmy opening things up nicely, but now without a main tank, it is all down to QMQ to dish out the deeps on the Zarya. Recall was that. Recoil is the hero of the hour, able to come in with that Brigida, able to stay alive and able to build up a rally. Runaway are forced off of the competition. They're going to go for dive themselves. We all sticking with this diva was trying to get that Eid onto QMQ's grabs on a couple of fights ago, but now building up towards this nuke. And remember, Maji is the only thing that can protect Ignite 1 right now. That Winston bubble is so very fragile. Well, that's when you get to your ultimates, Moxie. They've completely changed their team composition, so it's Ignite 1 back in charge of the ultimate economy. Gonna pop EMP immediately, catches five members of the Runaway back into spawn. They go, no kills found, though, for Ignite 1 quite yet until that Primal's popped on top of it. Revenge had swapped onto the Ana, which means you deprive yourself of Immortality Field. You've got nothing 
to deal with that EMP when it comes on through. Ignite one going to be holding on to the Graviton. Crystal's got the pulse bomb. We like to see it. Dara's called the big bang. And when Runaway aren't running that Batista, it all falls onto wheel. The Steva has to be able to eat both of these ultimates, otherwise the team has lost. Now we'll see if it comes up with more of a big bang or more of a conspiracy theory here. Merit pops the Deadeye, not going to be getting a free Winston this time. Instead, it's all about point pressure, 99 to 99%, nearly taking over for Runaway here. Ignite one need to make sure they contest this. They do not want that overtime ticker going. Merit opening things up beautifully with Crystal now off his back. He can start farming this point for free. The Nano goes down onto Magi this time, and it's Ignite one looking to do exactly what they did in the previous fight. No! Steps off the point! That is so huge! It's something that we've seen a lot of, duh, over the weekend in Chinese contenders. There's one thing that consistently happens, and it is the worst thing to see in all of Overwatch. Stepping off the point. You had the means. You had the tools. And unfortunately, we just don't get to see them. But my goodness, what a match! It looks I mean, like it's actually going to so be far. a lot closer than when you look at the statistics, when you look at these teams on paper, right? Runaway are the obvious favorites, but Ignite One are really forcing this team to actually give up that all. They forced them to go for the Winston. They even forced Revenge off the Batiste and onto the Anna. And that was when we saw Runaway start to struggle. When they were running into that EMP and they didn't have anything built up in the way of trying to stop themselves from going back to the spawn room, that was when Ignite 1 were really on fire. Yeah, and they had a really good understanding of their composition. They ran with the Winston Zarya, but they put the Sombra in the mix. This is a change that I really like to the composition personally. I think when you take the advantage with this composition, putting the Sombra in there is effectively a win more tool. You saw how they were able to cycle their ultimates extremely effectively to win fight after fight after fight and things only got worse for runaway the longer it went on it's that initial taking of the point that they really struggled with you saw runaway got it all the way up to 99 percent. it did not look good for a night one they had to find a clutch play in order to actually do that so it's a big gamble actually running this win more composition but i really like it stylistically for ignite one and they're playing it fantastically however there's a bigger question of how many maps can you actually force us on mox we've got map two coming up in just a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with that in a moment.
Ladies and gents, we're back for map two here. It is Ignite One's pick. They need to run it back and get that little bit further here than they did in the previous map up against Runaway and pull them over that finish line. They chose Temple of Anubis as their pick. Max, we don't have much time, but what do you think of this one? I mean, I like this. We both said that Temple of Anubis would be their strongest when it comes to the assault maps, especially if they want to keep running this Sombra, keep running this Tracer, but now they're going to be running the hit scan into Farah and Ash. So Runaway's DPS need to have some form of contest, otherwise Ignite One aren't going to be able to move past this first joke. They're, they're not even trying to contest it. The best they've done is a whip shot. Meanwhile, their backline's getting assaulted by Assassin. Runaway start things this off beautifully with a counter pick. You've got to put some form of hit scan in. You cannot ignore this problem. Assassin is already 70% to that barrage. Ooh. This is an uncontested Farah in the sky, just getting to rain shot after shot after shot, and still Ignite One are sticking stubbornly to the composition. Uh, well, they've at least made it through the door this time. It's about as much as I can say about that. They're not all the way through. They haven't passed the entire gauntlet. That Ana is not up and on her way. Beautiful concussion blast. Throws Huya into the corner and can do nothing about it anymore. The summer can get a hack off, but that is just a consolation prize on the way out. The rest of your team's gonna go down without the help of Diana. No main heals alive. You just have to get out with what you can. Ignite one are just building at the moment. Each of these pushes are going to be budgets because they're only going to come alive when this EMP comes through. EMP coming through is what's going to allow this team to move safely on to point, hopefully. Unfortunately, EMP is the only thing they've really been able to build towards. You're going to have a nano, you're going to have a pulse bomb, but there's nothing that really converts that into a team kill. Q and Q is too far away with that graviton, and Runaway's composition, it's so mobile. Who's EMP going to catch? And now without recall, things are going to be trickier. The barrage pops, and God, Assassin built that one up way too quick to be human. Now the Ana being barraged on yet again, even without the ultimate being online, being stuck in this back room is just a living hell for Huya, who can do nothing about what's happening to him. Io are gonna have to wait yet again for this push, Moxie. Well, they will be coming in with EMP, but there's still nothing that can really have that immediate follow-up. QMQ just has not been able to do anything on the Zari. You're running the Zari to give Magi a little bit more sustainability with that bubble, but the fight is too far away from you. You're not able to actually hit anything with your primary beam. Yeah, Ignite One are stubbornly bashing their head against this wall, but it feels like their skull might have thickened just enough now that they've got EMP, Pulse Bomb, and Primal Rage on the line. It's making those connect that isn't exactly the hard part. EMP comes in, though, and immediately Assassin falls. They've taken care of at least that problem. The fly buzzing around their ear is now gone. They just need to take care of Merit, and they can eliminate the rest of those DPS. The pseudo six member here, Bob, gonna be dropped on a point. It's gonna contest. It's gonna deal a lot of damage and make it incredibly hard for Ignite One to actually move around. However, the primal makes it hard for Runaway to move around. Merit is stuck in a corner between a monkey and a hard place, and honestly, I don't envy that position. Now, Ignite One gonna try and snowball this one into the second point. But they have to be extremely careful. They're not running a D.Va, they're not running a Batiste, they have nothing to keep themselves alive through phases. Graviton and Assassin, 25% away from that barrage, can finish that distance in seconds when you're not being dogged by Hitscan. Oh, and look at this, Merit's over to the McCree again. It was the bane of their existence up on NECA base, and it's back. And that means that Crystal and Jimmy, they're both going to be kept in check. They are going to have to be so careful about how they get in, whereas Assassin just gets to mash away at the keyboard without a care. I don't know about without a care, but uh, definitely without too many things being thrown their way. Graviton Surge makes it even easier. You don't have to worry about sightlines. You're just kind of shooting in the middle of it. You're going to be dealing plenty of damage. The Resurrect even comes in. The whole pocket on a one man, but he's making it worth it. Merit as well, showing his own namesake as they clean up the rest of Ignite One. And that's something that Ignite One are going to be feeling in this next attack. QMQ has finally been able to build this Graviton, but Crystal invested the Pulse Bomb. No big bang today. Instead, going to be swapping over to the hit scan. We wanted to see it, but now you're going to have to contest both Assassin and Merit. Which means when Jimmy comes in with this EMP, you've got to be safe. You know, you have to be able to come in knowing that Merit's already used that flashbang and is going to be extremely close. If they're able to, though, EMP coupled up with Graviton should be an easy point B push. Yeah, but Assassin, he's got a tab button. He knows there's a Widowmaker on the other side. There's not a snowball chance in hell he's going to peek any of these angles. Might throw a barrage in over top, but gonna yeah continually just avoid the sidelines of crystal who's now 
over to the McCree, waiting to look for the back line. Uh oh, They've here it comes here. Moxie. They're this could be big. Door, they're feeding themselves into the slaughter right now. Oh no. You go side room when you don't have a shield, when you don't have a diva, when you don't have a sigma to try and kinetic grasp, or even a Batiste to just use that cheat and drop immortality field for a 25 second cooldown and a guarantee that you survive to the next day. Ignite one, they've got to close the distance, but that's the real hard thing for this team right now. You can see Merit, he's camping that main road. He knows if they try to come any other way, the team can just collapse. But if they come that main aisle, you can just die. Hey, but this is the best opportunity they're ever gonna get, Mox. So many ultimates on board for Ignite One, so many key ones at that. Assassin's gonna fall, but with your EMP, you don't get anything more. Throwing the Graviton in after, staggering ultimate after ultimate. Primal Rage on top of things, starting to clear out the rest of this team, but you need that clean six man in order to take this point. It begins taking over for Ignite One. Doesn't feel like there's gonna be much of a contest in here. Assassin pops the barrage. It's desperation at this point for Runaway as they try and get some form of contest in and on this point. They're on a full stagger. Heroes phases onto the Hammond and it's starting Starting to work out for them. They're buying themselves so much time. Ignite one trying to drag their way back into it. Dropping the nano. They've got a rally online. They have everything they could need to sustain through the players that run away are throwing onto this point. It's gonna be enough, Moxie. Everything you need and more than that, you've got a nano rally going on right now. There is no way run away without an ultimate are kicking Ignite One off this point. Well, they've got players. They may not have an ultimate quite yet. Mera goes for the stick. Doesn't connect. Absolutely not. Says Ignite one immediately dodging that one. Good anti nade onto both the DPS of IO, getting one finished off at the hands of Jimmy. But Runaway just cannot contest it long enough, bring it all the way down to 30 seconds. And with that, they're gonna have to try and beat that time. Ignite one doing a really good job there of being able to take point B, being able to deal with Assassin on that Farah. It's extremely difficult, much much harder for a Farah to successfully see herself through that phase of point B in comparison to point A because there's just not enough places for the Farah to hide as soon as the fight actually gets on to point. On point A you've got the high ground, you've got all these little nooks and curls that you can hide around and obscure yourself from line of sight, but on point B there's a trade-off. Yes you do get to spam damage down main and into those side rooms, but you are also extremely vulnerable when that distance actually closes. And that was something that Ignite One were trying every single of those pushes. Sometimes it ended in death, a lot of times it ended in death, but when they were able to get onto that point when that fight was as close as they've been trying to fight it, that was when that composition flourished and now they've got to do the same. I mean, Mox, it's ye old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, Ignite One going for exactly that thought process. Jimmy back on the Sombra and again, remember, this is a win more composition and both teams are running it. However, Assassin being on the Genji is going to be a little bit more flexible. Or pardon me, Merit on the Widowmaker is a little bit more flexible than Jimmy on the Sombra. They can get value at any point in time. It's just going to be trickier to hit and entirely reliant on Merit actually getting those sidelines. But this is a great composition actually helping him get in place. I mean, keep an eye on Crystal though. That Genji is going to be the thing that Ignite want to rely on a lot because you have to come in to close those kills when you're running that Winston, it's chip damage. It's not a lot, especially if Jimmy's forced to translocate out early. Well, already translocator gone. Jimmy gets in, but the doors are open and Runaway are more than welcome. Not finding much of anything though, other than a Winston zapping him down. Mag drops so low, it cannot be kept up due to the anti-nade from Wuya, making sure they get taken down. Jimmy trying to build up that EMP as quickly as possible. Merit to being uncontested is not finding the same amount of value you would hope, and right now Ignite One are just able to collapse in on Runaway as they try and enter through the stroke. And this is exactly what they're looking to do. Build up that Primal Rage really quickly onto Maji. 55% already to their name. Jimmy's up to 60% to this EMP, building it even faster than Assassin's able to build this blade, which is getting relatively close and might just be the tool that run away you need. They're encroaching their way onto the point, but they're about to run into the welcoming arms of Jimmy. If he can just get that EMP up, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be in time though. It's a beautiful deflect from Assassin stop. Absolutely everything from the support line eliminates him, takes out the relocator, and now the Sombra stuck in no man's land, taken down. Runaway are gonna be attacking point B with plenty of ults to their name. Nano blade. And if you wait just a little bit longer, phase is going to hit that Graviton. She is going to be coming in with the rally to have that sustain to bolster your health buzz. Ignite one. Jimmy has got to hit the EMP. Has got to hit the entire team. You cannot wait for Runaway to actually ignite this fight. Ignite one have to initiate with this EMP to allow Crystal the space, the time to build up to that blade so that you can stop Assassin when he comes in for that next push. 
Well, they do have everything they need to stop. This fight is going to get real bloody real quick. And I promise you, there's likely to be a team kill coming out from either side. There's so many potent ultimates on board. But the big question of where do you come from? In fact, you might not even need those ultimates if Assassin goes down early like that. And Knight 1 going to be able to hold on to a lot of these ultimates. And that's huge for this team. That means that QMQ is going to be able to come in with a Graviton. So Jimmy doesn't even need to set up to kitch the team if he just lets Q and Q set the stage for him. And now Assassin is going to be forced into that position no Genji wants to be, holding onto that blade until he sees the Graviton come through. Well, we're playing a game of Ultimate Chicken, and in that, it is always going to be the EMP winning. Crystal comes in, picks him up a nice little three-piece dinner. Extra sauce on the way out. 4.27 on the clock. Runaway aren't feeling too bad, but the clock is certainly ticking. I mean, Runaway are just waiting. They're about to hit a full house, duh. They're about to hit six Ultimates. Jimmy just used EMP, so Crystal's Blade is going to be with a Nano, but you don't have anything that guarantees no CC comes upon your face. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of ways to actually play this, though, for Ignite 1 to actually end in a win. There's so many potent ultimates on the board for both teams that anyone could end. It's slightly more likely for Runaway with 6 being on board, but again, if that Graviton connects onto enough people, there is no way that Runaway can counter it. Immediately, Graviton catches to Crystal with the Nano Blade gets taken out, and with that, the legs fall from under Ignite 1's defense. Trying to move into the back line, Merrick cleans up too. They just have to get to that point on time and stop these staggers. I mean, Ignite 1 will have that spawn advantage. Crystal's already going to come back onto the Doom first. Run away, they have to be able to stop these stagger picks too. And <laughs> Crystal oh comes in and goes out just as fast. Merritt's a damn mind reader. He knew exactly where Crystal was about to come from. Shut them down. Jimmy on the Widowmaker for good marks, but good marks don't fix your time bank. 3.55 on the clock here for one away. That is obscene, Moxie. There is one rule that every Genji should know, like the back of their hand, or never pull out Blade, especially if it's going to have a Nano at the back of it, until you see the Zarya grab because every Xarya will do the maths. One Graviton to get whoever ultimates out of the way. That's a bargain every day of the week. And as soon as we see that Nanoblade coming out from Ignite 1, and as soon as it gets grabbed up, that is when this composition crumbles. They have nothing to fall back onto. Everything was hinging on that Nanoblade and unfortunately got just a little bit too over eager and invested it a couple of seconds early and run away, get to reap the rewards with a few more than a couple of seconds above them in the time bank. Well, I think it's not Runaway's time bank I'm concerned about. It's more so Ignite Ones. They struggled, and I mean struggled, to deal with this Farah before. Now you can't rely on ultimates to beat it. Well, now you can see that they know they're going to be dealing with a Farah. So Q and Q already onto that Diva, so you can use Defense Matrix, you can use your boosters, get up in the face, and Jimmy already sticking on that Widowmaker. You want to go for that initial shot and then go for a little bit more of a ranged value McCree, so you've still got that flashbang when the dive comes through and you will have that beautiful Weir. But you're actually going to be sticking with it. The one tap potential, if you're able to set the stage for Jimmy on that high ground, is going to be massive and forces Assassin to play around it. You can already see this far being a lot more conservative in movement. Holding their cards close to their chest are Runaway, but you still have to be moving into the far. Great Antinate hits on to pretty much everybody, opens up the doors for Merit to connect a dynamite on top of it. Ignite won't have to go and lick their wounds and spawn. It's going to be so hard as well with only 22 seconds left. If they lose a single person and Crystal already falling dangerously low, or their chances of picking up any of this point fall by 70%. Oh, now Jimmy's gone, and when Jimmy's gone, Assassin's gonna play. The Rockets immediately raining in. The sightline's now open. They know exactly what they're gonna be doing to these tanks. Nearing the barrage, 50% too, but it's the Nano that you gotta worry about from Wuya with the range now out of the way. There's no main heals for the side. Runaway, the Mercy has to leave the far, has to go over to the tanks. Assassin will be dropping low. In fact, no, the Mercy stays on them. Tanks are gonna drop dangerously low on the point here. Those health bars getting ever lower. Now you lack Chio, you lack legs to stand on, and it feels like we're gonna be seeing a little bit of point B, Moxie. Ignite 1 able to set up that crossfire as soon as Jimmy is able to get seated and you've still got the presence on that point. Runaway have nowhere that they can look and finally Ignite 1 are going to be able to start that ticker going upwards. But you can see Runaway, they're not out of this yet, Dorf. Assassin's onto the Tracer gonna just be stalling for a little bit more time. 
trying to build up to a pulse bomb so you've got something to couple up with Baze's Graviton because Ignite won. They've got one push and it's got to count. They don't really have all that much to make it count. You have 20 seconds and you're 20% away from Nano. You need that Nano Blade to take this point. And I mean, right now, you need to be beating FaZe to the Graviton. Runaway have so many options to just shut this push down in the blink of an eye, Moxie. They pop in visors on. Jimmy looking for that first pick. Someone's got to go in. Four seconds on the clock. The dash to the point. Two seconds. He does manage to get a touch in just in time. Picks up two on the way. Assassin clean up those. His backline, the recall falls. And slowly but surely, Ignite 1 are running out of players. Mag dragging their way back into this one. Tooth and Nail Runaway are not going down without a fight. This main tank holding on for dear life as overtime begins to tick down. Ignite 1 are running out of options. A desperation play from the tanks. The defense matrix not going to be keeping you alive from the pulse bomb of Assassin who's finally got it charged up and it should be Runaway holding on at B. Ignite 1, they got separated. The Nano Blade was huge. It was able to pick up the kills. But what's even larger for Runaway is the fact that they're able to herd Weir away from the team and below the bowels of the point to that health pack. And when the Ana is there, completely separated from both her frontline and the rest of her backline, she's not healing. She's not keeping anyone up and alive. So even though Crystal's coming in on that kill feed, there's nothing to keep him up. There's no sustain. You look at Runaway, they've got both supports. They've got the respawn room right there, immediately to their left and they're just going to be kicking you off that point. Yeah, immediately taking them down when they got to B, but getting to B in itself, I mean, I'd say that's an achievement for Ignite 1. The time that it took them to actually get there when they were playing against Safara was way too much. They dealt with it in a relatively timely manner this time. They got on a point, they took out the supports, they got into the back line and finally started dealing some real damage, identifying their win condition much quicker than they were able to prior I think it's a significant improvement now, Runaway. It's it's a non-trivial task getting to be. Even though your time bank is so significant, you do have to break that first point, which can be notably hard. In fact, we could go for something like a more heavy-handed approach to the first point from Ignite 1, play something a little bit more along the lines of a double shield and really try and stuff them up at the first point. And that's another stylistic option that they have open to them now that they've cracked that point B. I mean, my foot's exactly. You look at the difference between time banks and you know one composition that drains seconds out of a time bank better than double shield? Because I'm listening, <laughs> I'm hoping that we get to see some form of variation between Arista or Sigma or Rhine Arista or Rhine Sigma because it just does so much by way of draining the seconds. And especially on Temple of Anubis when you have access to that high ground, I can count on all of my fingers, the amount of times that I have seen teams in these last couple of weeks don't struggle to get through that first choke because Narissa has just halted them. And then you've had the barrage, the absolute armory that gets chucked at whatever poor soul gets picked up in that little bowl. You've got accretions, you've got shurikens, you've got ash dynamite, everything in a couple of seconds, the entire heavens just opens up and a torrential rain cloud of damage is poured upon a person to immediately get them out of a fight and end it before it can even start. And if that's something that Ignite One leans into, they can cut that time bank from three minutes to two minutes to one minute to an actual draw. Well, not draw even, but a full hold. Well, the door is also open for them to run the double shield again. And I think this kind of raises a big question. We have only seen Ignite run Ignite 1 run this dive composition. They haven't really wanted to be running anything else. It seems like what they're by far the most comfortable on. And a lot of that comes down to their DPS line being so much more comfortable with the dive. The tanks seem relatively flexible so far and they're doing a great job making space for them to come in. But what do you think happens if they run the double shield again? Runaway had no problem breaking open this point A in previous rounds. What do you think they could do to make that kind of hold different? I mean, I think one thing that we're seeing from both of these teams, especially from Ignite One as well, is aggression. We were talking about it like a little bit before this cast door, where we were we were debating why exactly it is that this this region tends not to lean into that double shield as much that they go for that Winston, that Zarya, Genji, Tracer, and it's because they like aggression. They like fights happening extremely quickly, and double shield slows that down. And these teams don't like things slowed down. Unfortunately for Ignite 1, you really do have to just draw out these fights as long as possible. So I think we're going to see that reflected in the DPS lineup. 
sometimes you've just got to bite a bullet. Sometimes if you want to full hold on Anubis, you've got to swap off the fun things. You can't run Sombra. We've seen that there's been moments, there's been flashes of brilliance where the Sombra has been able to barrel towards that EMP. But there's also been moments where it's been a really slow, sluggish snail's pace of an ultimate build. And if Ignite 1 have any of those coming out from that players, then that has a domino effect though. It means you're lacking damage, it means you're lacking fight impact. And Runaway are not going to let that slide without a fight. Well, there's one thing, you talk about the Sombra from Ignite 1, but I kind of want to raise the question of this. With such a large time bank, it also opens up the option of a Sombra for Runaway, which would be a really, really interesting pick because now with this larger time bank, charge up one EMP, break point A, charge up a second EMP, break point B. It's kind of a two-step equation to beating out Ignite 1 right now. You only have to get one tick on the second. That'll almost guarantee that. Runaway has so many different ways to pull in this victory. They've got such a large time bank to do it. Ladies and gents, we're hopping back into the game to see if Runaway can take away a second map and match point. I mean, there's one thing that I want to see coming out from Ignite 1, and it doesn't matter what you're running composition-wise, you have to have a Batiste. You cannot allow Runaway to get in and get a pick and then just snowball that. Because they're going to have the respawn advantage if they're coming out with this dive composition, then they're going to be able to bounce straight back into the fight in a matter of seconds, whereas if Ignite 1 actually running out with this. No, there we go. Recall going to be onto the Mercy, but honestly, I'm still worried about the lack of sustainability available for this defending side. If the dive is able to get on top of you, then you're dead. Mercy heal is so slow, especially if you're only going to couple it up with a Zenyatta Orb of Harmony. It all comes down to ending these fights before they can begin. Crystal has to be able to pick someone off along with Jimmy. I mean, what in tarnation is this? I'm going all the way to the Southern Roots for this one. This is a composition that I have never seen before. Seems like something I've seen in my quick play games, but if they can pop off on it, so be it. It's a fantastic Junkrat map. It's a fantastic map for Arisa. The Diva's a pick that I'm really interested why they're bringing it. They don't have that much in the way of healing. They need explosive and fast damage. They need people dying on Runaway quick because if these fights go any longer, then they start out on, then Runaway are just going to be out sustaining them. In fact, they've already given up a majority of this space here. Mag dropping low though, one shot to the head could end them. Um, dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Remember your 5D is a dodgeball, my friend, because Jimmy's looking to take your head off the Junkrat, throwing in all the damage into this mini room. This is not where you want to be, guys. Just walk out of it. Okay, they're going to choose to do so finally, getting those HP bars low, but a minute off the clock just for that. Yeah, but Revenge is building towards the Santa Boost. This is a tactic we see teams run when they have dives. The Winston just takes base tank damage, allows the Ana to hit that Nano super quickly, and that's when the True Dive comes through, when that's online, because a Nano boosted Winston creates more space than a Winston lacking it. And now Mare's searching for the Widowmaker. Here's him beneath, looking for the shots. Jimmy dropped down half HP and immediately giving the Orb of Harmony, but that lack of feeling starting to kick Ignite 1 in the butt. Immediately, people start falling. The health bars drop low, and there is nothing that Recall and Wuya can do about it. They simply don't have the tools with these heroes. And Recall will have that Valk in this next fight, but again, I worry if Runaway are able to close the distance, it's going to end in a kill. I would love to see right now Ignite 1 just decide, okay, Wuya's not going to be able to hit Transcendence in time. You've got to swap onto a Batiste, you've got to have Immortality Field because Runaway are going to be coming in with heavy hitting ultimates. If Merida's is able to slide between the lines and stick that onto the Zenyatta, he is gone from this next fight. Yeah, you can already tell Merit smells blood looking between the lines like you mentioned, but he's gonna pop Visor and that prompts Runaway to take their sweet time. That which they have plenty of, 216 on the clock, and they are feeling good about themselves. Oh, but Crystal's feeling very good about this tire. Runaway likewise aren't running that Batiste, won't have immortality be able to save themselves. So if Crystal's able to land it, it will guarantee a kill. Oh, but the tire goes down immediately! Crystal gets the opportunity to get in, get mag, but that is it. One tank out of the way, 155 on the clock, and Runaway look like they want to take their sweet time and run it back to spawn. This is a gamble. In fact, Ignite 1 do a very artful job of guaranteeing we are the time to actually hit that transcendence. And now you are locked into the stalemate every Kenji runs against. You've got a blade, but the Zen is going to have the ultimate that completely nullifies it. The only way this is finding value is if Revenge is able to hit the marvelable anti-nades and nullify Ignite 1's ult. 
But Mag's already looking for the back line, trying to pop this transcendence, force pressure on the point, forces the Zenyatta to come in. Because remember, there is not much of anything in the way of healing for this team. The second that Zenyatta takes damage, he has to press Q. He doesn't have an option. Now Assassin's got the blade loaded up. Revenge nearly on the nano. Might not even need a combo with a grab and let this man go off. Oh, slice and dice your way on through. He doesn't even have to make Sashimi out of Ignite 1. They get the point anyway and run away. They're going to be putting themselves up at match point. It's the familiar problem that we're seeing from Ignite 1. Sometimes they have a grasp of their win conditions and they work towards it, and other times we get that. You've got the Junkrat, you have to take the bull by the horn, you've got to spam those mines into that first part of point A, right? Every single time we see a defending Junkrat, he's parked upon the high ground. He's making sure that the teams have to play the explosive hopscotch and pick their way through that they're forced to either go main and take a massive amount of damage because there's just nowhere to hide, or they go side room and they get so much spam damage just pumped into them that that tire is ready within 20 seconds. But that doesn't happen. And again on that second part, where I would have loved to see that lineup change, where I would have loved to see a Batiste coming in because they lost point A because they didn't have the sustainability. The Mercy Zen was not enough to keep the team alive though. Ignite one stick really stubbornly by it. And we are with that transcendence, you said it yourself. The second he takes even the slightest chip of damage, when you're running that mercy, when you're running that zen, the slightest breeze is going to knock you off your feet and forces you to use that ult that you're trying to keep to counter that Genji, to trying to save the rest of your team before it even comes out. Yeah, we, we can fault how they played the composition all we want. I think the composition itself was kind of the problem there. I, I think it's a little too far a likening it to a quick play, but... I mean, it would certainly put them at a massive disadvantage. There was nothing, and I mean nothing, they could do about first point. The second that the damage went from one person onto multiple, you've only got one beam, you've only got one orb of harmony, and you've got four people dying at once. I may not be great at math, but I can do at least four minus two, and I can tell you there's two more players not getting healed up immediately are going to be going down and you've shut yourself down and out of point A and effectively gifted a runaway a map just based on that. I respect them going for a different composition. I think it's exactly what they needed to do to get the victory. That just wasn't quite the right one. It was flawed and they tried to make up for it. That was why we had a D.Va coming in. They knew that they would be lacking that healing so they wanted defense matrix there. With that one second cooldown, that does put a little bit of stress off your back line when you're running something like an Ana that can work, but when you're running that Mercy and Zen, it's just not going to be enough, especially because you think, okay, if someone goes down, we can get the rest to come through and that little health bar that's completely been obliterated is going to be full again, that's value. Not if every single time you go for the res, they're being camped, because that was another thing that we saw coming out from one away, the composition that they came in with was mobile. So yes, it took them a very long time to get into those side rooms, but when the Mercy wanted to go for a res, there was a Winston in her face. There was an Ana who'd already built up Nano and a DPS lineup that were extremely mobile would be able to close the distance necessary to get that Mercy out of the way. And we could see that Ignite 1 were playing very passively because they didn't want to lose anyone. Because they knew that if someone went down early on, then they wouldn't be able to get that risk going through. And when you're running a Junkrat, passive is just not something that you can be going for. And now with that Junkrat being out the window, it's gone. We're moving on to another map. Ignite one pick King's Row, which I think is especially interesting considering how much Runaway enjoyed running the Brawl on map one. Do you think this continues to play out in Runaway's favor? Do you think Ignite one might have something up their sleeve? We do see a lot of Brawl on King's Row, but another thing that we see a lot of is Double Shield. And I think Ignite one, your three maps into the series now, this is Runaway's match point. If they lose this, you have lost the series and you'll be dropping down to the lower bracket. You've got to try something different. We saw that they're not afraid to experiment with that last defensive composition on Anubis. Maybe duh, they come out on this double shield. Maybe they decide to slow things down. Maybe they even keep the Junkrat. Like we talk about what you can combine up with those Orissa halts. Junkrat's definitely up there when it comes to spam damage. He can absolutely tear through Summer's health bar if he has that clear communication line going through between him and his tank. Ash as well is one that I really like to see in King's Row, especially because we've seen a sort of defensive shift 
that you don't really hole up on the point itself, more you just try and split your team on the high ground so you have something like a Sigma and an Ash sitting on that ledge, just raining in spam damage, trying to catch someone out in those rotations, force them to either go into hotel where they're cramped up and very vulnerable for the rest of the team to try and collapse in on, or they've got to go for the messy, time-consuming road of taking the stairs. When you don't have a Symmetra teleport, that becomes a very tough task in Overwatch indeed. I think there's one issue with that though, is, is messy and time consuming is not what either of these teams do. We have seen just pure unadulterated pedal to the metal aggression out of both of them so far. And I don't think either of them have any plans on putting the brakes on. I mean, my guess is probably a little bit more Widowmaker mixed in here and there. Some Genji yet again from Assassin might be the ticket to getting a little bit more of a foothold into this game. There's so many different picks that you can break out on King's Row, given that it's such a viable map for so many different compositions. I think it opens the door for Ignite one more so than Runaway because we haven't really seen the same level of compositional variety from Ignite one that we have Runaway. They need to pull out something different. They need to try something off because this dive composition just isn't working for them. However, Runaway, they've shown us brawl. They've shown us dive. Do they have a double shield in their back pocket? Maybe, maybe not. Neither of these teams seem to even want to run anything close to it. Oh, even when Ignite 1 went for a more shielded composition, they still didn't fully commit to it. They ran less heals, they ran less shielding, and all of a sudden, they're hurting even more. It feels like this meta shift that's been going on has just been towards even more aggressive stuff. Even when you're running Bunker, its whole objective is to move forward and try to hold on to these choke points, but doing so even looser than previous bunker compositions. It feels like Ignite 1 don't have the right cards up their sleeve to actually counter anything Runaway does. I think they can force them onto a mirror matchup, maybe try and win that one, because that felt the most close to me. I mean, Ignite 1, they know what they want to do, but unfortunately Runaway's composition is bred to deal with it. We've seen Ignite 1, they want to run that Sombra. Runaway are very good at putting obstacles in Sombra's paths in the form of CC. Every single second that Sombra comes out, McCree comes through, Brigida comes through, and you're just stunned, and you're shield bashed, and suddenly you're back in spawn. And I think Ignite 1, they put a lot of favor into that Sombra. They really do, because we've seen her come out so many times. The EMP is a very impactful ultimate. Even though Sombra's been out a very long time in Overwatch, there's still not a lot outside of either just a full-blown transcendence or an immortality build that teams have really found to actually be able to deal with that ultimate. If you get caught out by it, it is pretty much just accepted as a fight loss. And so Ignite 1, they're lacking that Sombra. They're looking just a little bit more lost than when they started off. And I think in King's Row, if they're not able to find their feet again, if they're not able to clearly identify one form of their composition and just put all of their resources completely pile entire team focus onto setting that person up, then they're going to struggle to be able to even get halfway through this map. Well, they gotta struggle to get through the first part of the map first, Mox. It's starting off on attack here for Ignite 1, and they've got a double shield lined up for us. This is a bit of a surprise. You know what? They're in attack spawn. We're not gonna get baited quite yet. A runaway. Ooh, I've go got a double it. shield composition. Oh, they go for it. <laughs> They're on the defense. They're going to be occupying that high ground. They're going to be leaning into that spam composition that we talked about, Joe. Team has been split. High ground and low ground occupied currently. Ignite on Merit, he's on the sidelines right on that right ledge. If Ignite 1 aren't able to see him, then that is going to be deadly for that back line. Well, it's getting to him. It's going to be the hard part. They can't make much room because Runaway aren't letting them have it. Even on double shield, they're playing dive. Both teams immediately straighten each other's faces. Immortality feels thrown out. Blood everywhere. But it's Runaway who hold theirs even longer. Revenge dutifully doing so, opening up the doors for them to come in and clean up this first push from Ignite 1. Immortality feel difference. Revenge just gets to stay out far longer than Weir's. And as soon as Ignite 1, as soon as they chuck that one down, you've got to have some form of damage keeping runaway off your backs otherwise they're just going to be collapsing in they're going to be sensing that vulnerability and an assassin already building up blade is going to be sensing vulnerability in this next fight crystal's got to be able to close the distance otherwise ignite one you've got to come in with so much cc to keep this genji away from you 
Yeah, they can start off with the Amplification Matrix. This effectively just buys them a little bit of space, but remember, they're not even as far as they were in the last time. Now you gotta worry about the Hulk, you gotta worry about the Blade. You've thrown a lot of utility into this, but so have Runaway. They commit Amp Matrix, they commit Immortality Field, and the Blade. This is a good opportunity for Ignite 1 to move in. Especially because Jimmy's going to hit that Bob so close to it and Crystal's going to have the blade and there's nothing that Runaway can really do with it. Phase is too far away from the Sigma Flex. If Crystal pops it now, that's exactly what he does! Well, he sends it anyways. Mare's popping off in the back line. If he can find one more kill, he could claw Runaway back into this fight. Assassin actually is going to be the man showing up in the kill feed. Gets him one more, but there is nothing to contest. No tanks to try and step onto this point. Runaway look like they just want to give it away. Try and get a little bit of extra ultimate percentage on the way. No, they're going to be able to contest on the third. Mad gets back just in time here. Dynamite's over top. The damn face still has this Gravitic Flux online for Runaway to try and get it in. Jimmy's going to connect with the Bob. Try and put in that pseudo seventh member. The health bar is dropping incredibly low for Ignite 1. Do they have the immortality field to keep themselves alive? The question, absolutely not. Say Runaway finding just so little in the kill feed, so little in fact that Ignite 1 are going to be able to tick it on over. And now Ignite 1 have set themselves up beautifully because Runaway investing that many resources into a fight that they lost have shot themselves in the foot. They have hardly a single chance to try and hold at choke and you can see Ignite 1 can push forward aggressively knowing that there is very little in way of punishment that Runaway wants to be putting in to stopping this progress. So many ultimates. So little time to use them though. They need to stagger them out correctly in order to actually push the entirety of this point. There's no nano for the Genji, so you need to make sure you're getting the maximum value out of the blade, pulling abilities out from Runaway bright and early. In fact, you're just going to continue to buy space with these. Yeah, at the moment, you can see Ignite 1 that is trying to force Runaway around this corner. Crystal's got that blade. Maggie has already dropped the supercharges, but Crystal's keeping a hold of this ultimate. Revenge going down should signal the green light for this Genji to go, though. That is huge! Runaway aren't out of this yet, though. They still have the Bongo Blade combo to come in with, and it could be even larger. Crystal opening things up with the blade of his own. Dueling Dragons up and on the point, but it's Assassin who's going to get the upper hand today. Merit with the Bob backing him right on up. Runaway stabilize on B. They played the Hokey Cokey. They played the Ring of Rosies. Ignite one. They managed to get revenge out of the way, and that should have been immediate go time for Crystal. But Ignite one actually wrap around, so the team swap position. Runaway gets the uh, played attackers for a couple of seconds, and because they've got those supercharges, they can set themselves up. So when the fight actually starts off, the supercharges stay alive, and Assassin gets to collect the blade. Ignite one are now going to be playing the budget game right now. Well, they've got plenty of ults to budget. Runaway, in fact, are in the lead so much so that they've got both their sport ultimates. They're coming up on the grid. Clock. So many tools to end this one right here, right now. It's the amplification matrix that's popped first. They can effectively just step out of these sightlines, though. Merit's been zoned off very effectively by Jimmy, who's now in a dangerous position. The rest of the team has to rotate to help him out. Immortality Field has been forced out here by Ignite One very, very early yet again. Runaway will happily punish them with the Gravitic Flux that picks up two, a third on his way out and FaZe comes up with a nice big 3k. Oh, Jimmy sent Bob as well. That's something that you're going to be feeling the ramifications of in this next engagement. Assassin's closing onto this blade, and now you're not going to have that 7th foe member to try and heal for it. Ignite 1, they want to be using this Sigma Flux aggressively as well. You've got to use something to bait Revenge into using that Immortality build early, which means yet again, Assassin does nothing to counter that blade. Things are getting tough here for Runaway. They committed a lot to that last fight. Ignite 1 looking to capitalize, looking to get themselves past point B. What are they open with is the big question. It's going to be Amplification Matrix. Pretty standard double shield stuff, but it's not very well placed. In fact, it's placed perfectly so, so that Runaway can just back around this corner where they wanted to go anyways. Throwing a bob in to start things off. Maybe a little bit of appeal here for Merit by Assassin Time to get that blade online. You've already lost Chio though. The bob's down and time is running out. Ignite 1 coming in with their full arsenal of ultimates to try and close things out. But Assassin, he thinks he's going to be a hero. Absolutely not. The 1v6 blade question mark pings in the chat. Ignite 1 come up with the kills and come up with a point B. Sometimes you're able to pull off the hero play, but there will be no EQO today. Oh Assassin going to be sent back to the spawn. <laughs> Confidence in check, tail between legs, and Ignite 1 can surge forward. They've got the blade, they've got the setup, they've got the space. 
This super blade could come out at literally any time. We've seen Ignite one do it. Pop ult extremely early, looking to go in. The halt to combo. The bomb goes in. So is the blade. Crystal's looking for your back line. Not managing himself. Welcome the mag. He's gonna take Magi off the map. What a way to go. Unfortunate there for Runaway, but not much found out of the ultimate that Ignite one did throw in. And my God, they threw in a good couple. Well, Ignite One still think that the fight's going on. Magi is off the Arista onto the hammer so he can get back in time to support his team. And if we are closing onto the amplification matrix, this is absolutely the time for Ignite One to press ignition. I mean, this is vintage Chinese contenders. The fight never stops here. And now running in, they've got the Hammond. They have a Gravitic Flux coming online, but they need to buy time right out of the pump. No, you were so young. You had such a short life. You had so much to live for. Down in the hole he goes, and with that, Runaway are gonna push their way on through. I think, I think it's canon, isn't it? That the, the space below King's Row Point C is just an Omnic graveyard. That's where the Omnics go, right? Yeah. He lives a happy life down there? To totally, he's still <laughs> sleeping, I promise. It's okay. <laughs> Ignite One gonna be coming in. 54 seconds left on the clock. This is that shot, door. They just have to get past Runaway's onslaught of ultimate. Assassin's Blade, Faze can just drop that Sigma Flux, it's gonna get them below 50% and that leaves them ripe and juicy for the plucking! Well, they've got plenty of time, they can wait the spawn out and then come in with a barrage of ultimates, Mox. Ignite 1, they want to cross this finish line given that they're at match point. They've got to be so careful, though Assassin's holding on to this Blade, making sure that Ignite 1 have got to walk into him! Oh, all the Q buttons are pressed here from Runaway and IO. But it's Runaway getting the better with a knock off Jimmy's Bob. Immediately falls down the pit. Assassin cleans up with the blade. 10 seconds on the clock here. And it doesn't look like they're even going to get a touch. Runaway are holding on at C. And now IO, they have to set up a defense for the ages here to stop Runaway from Runaway with the series. How long have you been waiting to use that one? Uh, not, not long enough, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just, just, you know what? I'm gonna go on to after this match. I'm gonna go on to wherever casters find their partners and just look for a new play-by-play because -play, I am disappointed. Oh, don't be that harsh, Mox. Give me a break. It's hard out here. It's it's like 6 a.m. and run away. You know what? They deserve it. They're having a great series so far. I O can, however, stop that. This is not outside of the realm of possibilities. That was a respectable push, especially for double shield. The fact that you were able to get past point B on a hybrid map when you're running double shield is something to be commended. We know just how long those fights really take to How often, how mm -hmm. little, rather, we get to see any of these maps anywhere near completed. So for Ignite One to be able to push that far, it's definitely an achievement and definitely means that they've set themselves up for their best chance at a defense. Because you're going to have access to that A high ground, you're going to have access to that choke of point B, and you even a little bit into C, so you can lean on to the fact that your respawns will be closer. And if you're able to win a single fight out on any of that ground, as soon as that payload is ticking towards that last little bit of a finish line, you're going to be able to just pick Runaway off as they come in on that main road one by one. Pretty expected stuff from both teams. And they're both looking for the same exact thing. Those picks that you talked about in the main choke, in the middle of the road, those are there for everybody. But this teleport is interesting. They just put the Brigitte on the high ground. What are they looking to do here with Mr. Chio? Doesn't seem like much of anything, as Ignite One are more than happy to give them some space and allow them through this choke point. It's when they wrap around the statue that things are going to get a little bit jiggy. Assassin, you can already see it's trying to duck and dive, pulled up to that blade, but it's Crystal at the moment who's having the bigger impact, so run away, they're stuffed up at the choke, they've just got to eat the damage. Yeah, they're eating damage, they're not making much of anywhere, they've gotten their Sigma wrapped all the way around the side lighting. Night one are not going to be punishing that though. In fact, giving away the space since the Sigma's on the high ground, back up all the way to hotel. Things are getting dicey. Jimmy's almost up to that Bob though. It's going to be the first ultimate online. That is if Revenge cannot pop this amplification matrix and open things up. It's the Arissa taking so much damage for an assassin in the back line doing exactly like he should. Mara pops Crystal, have her traded out for Chio. There is so much less sustain right now for Runaway. The health bars are going to be permanently lowered. And with that, Ignite One will continue forward, stopping Runaway right in their tracks. Jamie's going to have that Bob as well. So even though Assassin's going to be hitting Blade in this next fight, there's going to be the peel available for Ignite One that can just stop this Genji before he's even able to close the distance to get into this composition. 
so many ways to stop runaway is not looking great this ultimate economy can really spiral out of control if they're not careful ignite one of a great hold a great start on to this match point the nerves clearly not getting to him yet but what is going to be getting to him relatively soon is assassin's blade and phase is gravitic flux if they let this go too long the ultimate advantage will swap over to the side of Runaway. They need to start pressing those cues now or else Assassin is going to welcome himself into the back line. Down he goes. No immortality field quite yet. Flashing and dashing his way on through the Orisa, but not able to break through those health bars. In fact, it's the Bob of Jimmy putting in inordinate amounts of work for an AI, cleaning on up and letting them hold this choke point once again. Assassin got nothing good, sir. Good day, goodbye, I bid you farewell, because Jimmy's Bob is there to peel. And once again, the fact that Runaway have to try and close the distance to actually get into this fight to do any sort of impact is just shooting themselves right now. They're not able to do anything. For how aggressive they played on defense, it's surprising seeing Runaway this timid on the attack. However, it's netted them a respectable ultimate bank. It's cost them a lot of time to get here. They need to make this push right here, right now count. Ignite one looking to take the aggression, immediately popping Bongo, which will get taken down by Mag. Amplification Matrix takes away the sidelines. Recall falls to the Bob, mostly. Now it's the Blade from Crystal that needs to clean things up. You're coming in with a Gravitic Flux for a re-engage. Face finding the kill that they need and the kill feed. Mag falls, and with that, the main tank for Runaway is down. What a huge pick here for Ignite One. Now you can push on through Hotel, start picking off the rest of these Runaway members and start ticking away at that clock. But you need the rest of your team alive to do that, so. And that is unfortunately what Ignite One do not have access to right now. They've just got to try and regroup. They've got a Sigma Flex, they're going to have a Bob, they can use those to open up this next fight. Send Runaway packing so that you can set yourself up to hold at this choke. You just can't afford to lose anyone before those ultimates actually come out so you can see this team. They're making sure no one's going to get caught out, no one's going to go down to a headshot from Merid or being found out by Assassin. And Runaway are playing very... Where is this Sigma going? What is he doing? What are you guys doing back there? I see you over in the cafe. Halt! Accretion! Assassin killing everybody! Finds himself four with the Swift Strike! Runaway are straight through the start of B! That's some Skyrim level tactics right there, you know? You stealth your way through, you put a pot on the shopkeeper's head, and you set Assassin up to build a blade! Run away, coming in absolutely huge, and Ignite One not able to see that one out like now. What at the start of that fight? Yeah, now they're on the back foot, so now they don't have access to any of the streets, and Run away, I'm not going to allow them to get back onto the car. You've got to rely on Recall being there with the Shield Bash to try and shut Assassin down. Well, it's dire straits right now for Ignite One. They got to clutch out when it matters, but this application matrix making it so hard. The Bob thrown in for good measure. And now it's Assassin with the blade that he really wanted. Finds himself to Bob again, finding two kills consistently here for Merit somehow. And with a healthy time bank, Runaway make their way on to C. I love how Runaway couple up these blades and these bobs because it means Ignite One's entrances and exits are completely closed off. They're not allowed to run away. They're not allowed to put Immortality Field down because it's just shredded in seconds and run away. They do take two ultimates out of the bank to do it, but they're able to buy themselves a high ground and you can see that they're already building up quickly to these next ones. Mag is going to have to supercharge it. Crystal's going to have the blade and that's huge. They just don't want to get Sigma Flex soloed when Faze decides to kill this thing. They don't pop the blade with the bongo though, thus Crystal's blade is effectively dulled somewhat. Still managed to find one, takes out the immortality field. That is a great blade by all means. Ignite one can now move in since Runaway do not have the tools to stop them from doing so and stabilize this card. Well, Jimmy is apparently going to have no object permanence, or rather ash permanence, because Merit is able to just tap them in the head <laughs> completely unexpectedly. Another plus five to stealth there for the side of that ash. And we're going to be seeing Runaway just pausing a little bit. They don't really have any ultimate to work with. we will have amplification matrix, but Ignite One do still have a little bit of space to back out with. So Runaway have to be very careful that they don't walk straight out of their window and into Q and Q signal plugs. Well, it's out of the pot and into the flame form right about now, making their way forward. And there is that flux that you mentioned. Assassin already finding one, though. This guy has been on a rampage ever since B and has no signs of stopping. Runaway 
continuing with card 40. He's got another blade loaded up. In fact, the supercharger is there if he wants to use it to assist. But hell, he can use it just to clean up these last final frags. He's looking for the Sigma. Ethan accretion to the face. Doesn't matter. Not even sure what he went down to there. But Mare is there to clean up. Now onto the Wrecking Ball. The stall completely non-existent from Ignite 1. The card approaching the end. Run away. Take the match. 3-0 to zero and put IO down into the loser's bracket. Runaway's DPS were just a little bit stronger. Rather, they weren't stronger, the team supported them a little bit more. The fact that we saw all of those players, that Assassin was the one center stage coming up in the kill feed, is a very small part of why Runaway are actually successful in that map door. Because to the side of that Genji's name tag is the assist little window of an Orisa and a Sigma consistently. Every single blade. First, it's into a halt. We've got that dash coming through already doing so much damage already going through multiple members. Then it's followed up by either an accretion or a sigma flux with a bop thrown into the mix so you're guaranteed to pick up the kills. Run away, it took them a while to build into those ultimates because it meant that you had to come in with four ultimates to your name. But every single time that they hit that combination, Ignite One had nothing to answer it with. I mean, it wasn't even just ultimate combos. I'm not the only one that saw what happened on point B, the massacre <laughs> that happened to Ignite One and their poor, poor roster. I had no clue what was going on. You had no clue what was going on, but when it happened, it was gorgeous. I could do nothing, but just sit there with my mouth agape. And honestly, that's the creativity we expect from Runaway. That's why this team is so successful. It's not the plays with ultimates alone, it's the plays they're making without them. And especially right now, when you're playing up against these Chinese teams that very much favor a heavy ultimate game flying by the seat of their pants constantly, it's those six-man clears that you're able to pull out without ultimates by catching them off guard that are going to be that little bit of edge that you need to pull away the matchup. I mean, I'm just going to say now, I hope, I hope so badly that Runaways comms were just all six members humming Mission Impossible when that signal <laughs> was going on that plank. That's the only way that play could have been any more perfectly. That is a Sigma deciding that you're not a Reinhardt, you don't have a Shatter, but you're still gonna go for the back play. I mean, it's flashy, it looks great, it gets you on to the next round. Ladies and gentlemen, it's gonna be IO in the loser's bracket, Runaway moving on. We've got another great matchup though, you won't wanna leave quite just yet because it's Flag Gaming taking on LTP in just a bit. Keep your eyes glued to your screens and your butts in those seats. We'll be right back shortly.
And we're back, ladies and gents. Flag Gaming versus Like This Player, our next matchup of the night, morning, day, you know, whatever time it is for you guys about this time. I know it's early, but I'm feeling like I'm ready for some more great Overwatch. The last matchup was a real treat, so hopefully this one will be treating us just as well as Flag Gaming versus Like This Player. Like I said, it's going to be some dive coming out. Moxie, what are we looking for? We're going to be seeing it right away, though. Keep your eye on Monk, this Ana player is definitely one of those to watch and you need a strong support, especially if you're not running that Batista, it's just going to be out and out aggression as both of these teams just try and find any weakness in the composition. Well, you need the support, sometimes it's not even there to watch. FG take him down immediately, Shou Chang doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing in the back line on the Genji and gives them the first tick. Yeah, that should be Flag Gaming picking that up. There we go, point unlocked and percentage starting to tick up in Flag Gaming's favors. You can see right now it is a race between these two Genjis. Who's going to be able to build up that blade faster? And who's going to be able to shut it down better? Well, currently it's Shochang in the lead, but look at Belrosa, who was building up a lot of ultimate charge until I've got, or pardon me, 800, takes him down. Rem now cleaning up the rest of them. They've got the tank advantage. They have no longer the support advantage like this player fall yet again because the Ana goes. And Flag Gaming can open up this next fight with a stunk of an ultimate combo door. They're coming in with the Nano Blade, and Belarusia is going to be the only thing that LTP can rely on if you manage to hit that primal. It's just juggle the Genji around so that he can't connect with anyone, but unfortunately you're just a little bit too far away right now. You've got to buy time for that one to split it up. Well, they can start by putting pressure on the point, but yeah, that's just not going to save you from Shou Chang. Lots of CC being thrown his way. Gets himself one, gets himself two, a third to his name here, a fourth, just to make an impression, and that's a way to start off the match. LTP just fed themselves right into the slaughterhouse when they go into these small enclosed spaces, and you can still see the corpses piled around Shou Chang's oh. And another one to the pile door. It's a mass burial. Right now, as LTP will be coming in with a Nanoblade of their own, but Ram has got the Graviton packaged and parceled and ready to keep the Genji occupied. Staggering their ultimates beautifully right now. Flag Gaming have a reason to BM. They are feeling large and in charge. However, the Nanoblade is on the horizon. There is the counter and the Graviton, but whether or not Flag Gaming get aggressive is going to decide their fate. Great anti nade! from Monk straight into the back line. The Graviton onto the ulting Genji. Absolutely no surprise here. Kami still manages to get one on a Shou Chang. Now it's up to Bellas Rea to try and clean up with the Primal Rage. Doesn't get all that much with it, but does take down Monk. No main support left alive with Black Game here. All of the damage is going to be relatively permanent. Promise does pop the rally, keeping them alive for the time being. Allows them to get themselves back into the fight. Allows Rem to continue to put in tons of damage on this Zarya. And Ryan's going to be coming in again on this Tracer, just being the bane of Flag Gaming's existence right now, because when you're lacking that Brigida, you're lacking the CC that shuts that DPS down, and it means the Tracer just running in circles around the Zarya. It's getting tougher and tougher for Flag Gaming to actually hold on to this point, though their bubble cooldowns got a little all out of whack, and that allowed like this player to move on in. Now, though, it's Flag Gaming entering with the Winston, ending things rightfully with the Tesla Cannon, and a 99% to 29, they're gonna take over the first point of Busan. There's a difference at the moment between these two Anas, specifically their survival rates. Monk, I said it, this is a play that you've got to watch out for. Very strong in support, not just at building up those ultimates to keep pace with the Genji, but also at staying alive. And that's the problem, that it is there in prevalence for like this players. Sarari is just not having a fun time. Mizuki, she needs to come in on this Brigida. She needs to be able to keep this Ana a little bit safer. Especially heading into Mecha base, you know that you're still going to be hounded by Flag Gaming's DPS, that that Ana is constantly going to be the one vulnerability this team are trying to take advantage of. And until they can fix that problem, it's going to continue to be the advantage they have. FG look to put themselves on the point first with a little bit of a symmetry, but absolutely no swaps coming out of either of these guys. You know what? I don't think LTP were that 
far from figuring out what they needed to do to break this composition open. They had a couple close fights, but it took them too long to actually get that close. Now Flag Gaming asserting themselves on point first, but it's effectively just a big old game of chicken between these two wins. And the first one to commit though will be 800 straight in the back line, gets himself a bubble and gets himself a secondary bubble from Azaria to help out. Jumps out while Prit is in the back line and they've got themselves three kills all of a sudden. It's the same thing for like this player, Deja Voodoo. We've been in this place before. Ferrari goes down first, the Brigida falls shortly after, and you can see the consequences coming up from the kill feed right now. Like this player have no way of staying alive. They've got to try and back out. They don't want to lose a single member, otherwise they're just gonna get staggered out and have to conga line again and again into death. They can't even leave the choke point right now. 800 is so close to the primal rage. The nano boost is coming online. LTP have next to nothing in the way of ultimates to make their way out of this door. It's gonna take a Herculean effort to actually win this fight without doing something special. Into the back line goes Bellos Rea, but down he goes as well. He wasn't able to get the Zarya bubble. He wasn't able to get any healing. It was effectively a suicide dive. The only reason that Winston went in that deep was the trust that Zarya would be able to get that nano online. And it is online in time, but unfortunately it's lacking the line of sight necessary to apply it and LTP once again having to look wistfully in at that choke and now you can come in with a nano boost of Winston but again Ram's going to be holding this Graviton that can immediately snuff your attack. Flight Gaming have all the tools they could ever want to stop this guy from coming in and they'll absolutely do so stuff them back where they came from Shou Chang all the way to spawn isn't even gonna touch the door no gives them a little bit of reprieve but you still ain't getting anything after that. Nano came through onto L through LTP as well and Kami is just about to hit that blade door. So the one thing that you're really happy about if you're LTP is like you were able to get Ram to use that Graviton. But unfortunately it is not a silver lining, it's a copper lining and a lot of rust to it as well because you've still got 800 sitting on this primal waiting for that Genji to go for the juggle game. Yeah, and even more so rusty is the fact that around is going to be going down early on the tracer. Great anti-nade though from Monk. Gives him yet another way in the barrage of frags and damage just continues on to LTP. They haven't lost anybody yet in this fight after the Primal Rage and the Rally have been used. They can now go for a re-engage with ultimates of their own, but the stick lands, the bubble to save them. It's all up to Kami and this play to try and clean up, but he's immediately met with a ton of damage, a ton of CC, and a whole lot of bubble to the face. Now LTP out of tools, neither team stuck with anything. Rem is coming up on this Gra Graviton Surge, which is gonna be the next tool that either team has to really end this fight. Until then, LTP's DPS cleaning up on point, getting them the percentage they need and taking it over at 99%. Flag Gaming can just play the patient game right now. They're coming into this next fight. They only need to win one of these engagements and they've got a Graviton and a Blade at their back and call. LTP, there's only one way they can keep that point percentage ticking up in that favor. And it's if they make sure Flag Gaming don't get to touch the point. They've got to lose a player early on in this rotation. Orion has to come in huge with the pulse. Well, you can start losing players all you want. Show Chang's coming from your back line. Yet another huge blade from this man. Does he ever stop, Moxie? Again, LTP. It's the Ana that goes time first. And I would love to see statistics right now. Well, because we're seeing that screen pop up. We're seeing the end of Busan. And you can trace it all. Each and every one of those fights that LTP just lose out and out to when that Ana falls. The Ana fell early in pretty much every fight. This is this, it's such a big problem to have in a composition that relies that much on the healing, right? Your Winston goes in, drops bubble, gets the bubble from the Zarya, gets out, and then gets healed up. But the last bit never happened. It never, ever, ever happened. And it, it's so critical that the counter dive is more successful from Flag Gaming, not to mention the fact that they were going in far more aggressively. They were constantly on the front foot. The only time they allowed LTP to engage the fight was when it was way worse for them. I mean, harken all the way back to when we saw Bellis Rea go straight into the back line with no help from the rest of his team. Those are the only engages that Flag Gaming is even opening up to them. They're just taking what opportunities are giving to them but they're not given any good ones. And I mean, even when Bellasrea goes for that extremely aggressive dive, it buys you a lot of space. And it wasn't really the tank lineup that was coming in big for Flag Gaming, it was the DPS. 
the tanks, they were setting up the stage. You know, they were propping up all of the lights that the DPS can come through, the attention is completely away from them, and that tracer gets to go absolutely nuts with all of the space that that Winston has bought by jumping into the backline. And that was something that LTP weren't able to deal with. They weren't able to go for the counter focus, so when the Winston jumps in, everyone tries to deal with him, and that leaves that Ana very open. Without that Brigida there, with that shield, with the bash necessary to keep you safe, you are going to go down. Anna is vulnerable. That is the trade-off. She is very powerful healing. Very, very vulnerable if anyone decides to target her and she hasn't got that anti-nade or the sleep dart that you can successfully hit. And so there's a trade-off there. You can keep the team alive, but to do so, your team must first keep you alive. And that's something that has not been happening. Well, ladies and gents, we know exactly what LTP need to fix heading into the second map. It's going to be a hybrid. We'll get back to you with that one in just a moment. And we're back, ladies and gents. I promise you a quick little break before the next map, and we absolutely got that. Heading on to Volskaya Industries. FG currently up 1-0 against, like, this player. They've got to start defending that Ana up a little bit better, Mox, and they've got a similar composition to do it with. Well, they've also got a different Ana. Sleep has been subbed in, and so this might be where we get to see that team really close ranks around that support. If they're not able to protect, if Sleep falls just as quickly as Zarari in those previous engagements on Busan, then LTP are not going to have a very strong defense at all. This defense is going to struggle. They need to be aggressive simultaneously while managing those bubble cooldowns. Bellas Rea dives into the back line, dives himself back on out here. The health bar is dropping dangerously low though, losing the main tank. Now how are you supposed to defend your Ana? Sleeps in the back line, but can't do much of anything with these kind of sight lines. The point beginning to tick over for Flag Gaming 800, opening things up, taking out the DPS, and it's all falling to pieces. They had a game plan, Mox, defend the Ana, but the Ana might be the only person left alive. A weird sort of disparity at the moment, running through like this player's composition. And sometimes it's the back line that suffers when the dive comes through. And other times, it's the front line. All the thing that has in common, though, Dor, is a disconnection. And LTP have to be able to work this one out. Otherwise, by gaming, are just going to run over them. Well, now they've got an ultimate advantage. They have the player advantage. Sleep almost up to a nano. It's about their only way into this fight. Cho Chang, though, is going to have a nano blade, which sounds like it hurts a lot more than uh, anything that LTP might have to offer. I'm just trying to get a charge up 90% to that blade. The pulse bomb, though, is going to connect from Fly Gaming, and that's exactly what they wanted to open this up. <laughs> Cho Chang is looking for something to kill, and his teammates are killing things too fast that he can't even do that. We'll get Azari as a consolation prize, but the point takes over. This blistering pace that Fly Gaming set is going to be incredibly hard for LTP to match. What's the record for Volskaya? Yeah, that's a good question. That was really <laughs> Definitely somewhere close, if not completely blitz through it. And I think, like this player, are having this disparity. We are seeing in each and every one of these engagements. Either Sleep does not have a line of sight onto the tanks, or the tanks just go a little bit too deep, too far when you're running that Winston. It can be extremely difficult to identify the line where you take too much damage and you need to get safely out. Especially because, remember, that Tesla cannon has got a very small range, or you really do have to chase a couple of kills if you want to build up to that primal. 
or sleep just is not protected. Or Mizuki is going too far to try and protect sleep. And so is going to be denying the rest of the team those armor packs that AoE healing and flag gaming have shown. They have identified this weakness and they have got both of their hands and they're ripping it apart at the seams. If you're like this player, you're going to be on the offense now and I think this is where the team is going to be a lot stronger. Especially because we've seen how Belarusia likes to go in on that Winston, likes to create the space as quickly as possible. If Sleep is able to actually line that side onto the Winston, that is when you're going to find a lot of value with that aggressive playstyle. If, however, this disconnect continues to run between these two teams, that is when, like, this player are really going to fumble. Yeah, to me, this is do or die. You've not defended the Ana enough, and now you've defended the Ana too much and committed too many resources to her. Now we've got to find that middle ground, that just right, that Goldilocks moment from LTP. And I think that's going to tell us how the rest of this series go if we continue to play this composition. 800 taking a lot of damage here. Bellisprea hopping out wisely, giving me on a bit of charge. Haven't lost anybody yet here from LTP. They've closed the gap on a point. Now we're looking for the solid dive. Monk is obviously going to be the target, but Kami needs to be able to get on top of him as well. They've asserted their Ana onto the high ground. It's a great position for Sleep to be. Should not be going down too easy. Now Bellis Ray can start working on that back line. Rem falls, and with that, the damage is severely lacking for Fly Gaming and the hold. All they've got is a way to make it happen. And Sho Chang is not coming up nearly as big as he was prior. Opens up the doors though for a to come in. Clean up Kami. The Ana still live on the high ground though. Still making this Winston a serious threat from Bellis Ray. Like this player not out of this fight just yet. They will have access to a couple more ultimates. The Nano being one of them. Blissaria, you have to give space to this Winston. And you can see Shoujang very reluctant is actually gonna try and get Kami out of the way before he can try and reconnect with his teammates. Yeah, it feels like the points can inevitably take over, but who even knows at this point? A Prita might come in in 1v6 with the kind of stuff we've been seeing today. Though inevitably, LTP will get through that first one and almost match the pace of Flag Gaming. They've seen the worst of the storm as well. Flight Gaming have already used Cho Chang's Blade, which means the Thano boost is not going to be helping the Genji ultimate. Rather, it's going to be either to enable Rem to build up that Graviton a little bit faster, or it's going to go on to 800 to create the space Flight Gaming needs right now to make sure like this player don't go for that snowball. Well, it went onto the monkey, but not exactly to create space, more so just to keep him alive. Drops so low by these and now you don't have such a key ultimate ltp are going to reassert their on a backup on the high ground give them a fantastic position to work with yet again and start looking for that back line they've decided it's time to pop this primal rage get some people off point separate away the supports so that all the damage being dealt to 800 is permeated to take down the main thing start taking over that point nearly identical time bank for this team if they can finish this one off and there's nothing to contest this blade when it comes through. It's like gaming, they've already used the primal runs too far away from the Graviton. Kills flooding in right now for like this player. LTP finally letting it rip, putting in a good push. The pulse bomb connects and that's gonna be enough. Two minutes on their time bank, 258 on flag gamings and they have put up a push to match that. Like this player coming alive, I said it. Th this is a play style that be fits aggression that they're going to be really strong in the attack and where they're going to fault it is on the defense now they just have to carry through the success of that attack to dealing with flag gaming because we saw flag gaming were not given the space they weren't able to go after that backline sleep and mizuki were both able to keep the rest of the team still breathing still have ultimates ready keeping pace with kami on that genji with the blade and that was where this team were at their strongest now you have to replicate it, both for this map and the maps moving forward. I mean, I think we can kind of defer both of these teams' mottos right now. It's something along the lines of, eh, defense is overrated anyway. And it's going to be the story for the rest of this match right now. It's who can keep their on alive better. And currently, I feel like LTP have done a better job just in that last round. Getting sleep up onto the high ground was so, so critical to their success. And I've loved to see Flag Gaming do exactly the same. It's that old dive sort of approach, isn't it? But instead of the Zenyatta, you replace them with an Ana. The Ana who lives longer is the team that is going to prosper more. So it's all going to come down to those main supports. To the DPS as well. If you're able to infiltrate that backline and get one of them out of the way, you open the door for the rest of your team. 
And it's the same exact approach from LTP, looking to set the on up on the high ground. 800 dropping low. Flag Gaming don't want to give up this ground so easily, but as the health bars drop and the abilities run out here, they have to feed this area like this player. are going to happily take this, set their on up, and get themselves up and ready to attack this point. We're ready 50% to that nano. Well, obviously, if you get that one, your primal rage is going to rocket up. It's like rolling a nat 20 when you're playing a barbarian door. It's guaranteed. Guaranteed value, but not found just yet. Sleeves at 85%, 90% to this nano. Just needs to farm the Winston for a little bit longer. But in the meantime, the rest of their team is falling lower and lower. In fact, Bellus Rea goes down before the nano can connect. They need to pray for a miracle now because their time bank is looking mighty thin. By gaming, it's now a matter of holding onto as many ultimates as you can. Like this player, they will have the standard come through, but also will be able to get it connected onto them if you manage to get the time to actually reconnect with your team. Door, 44 seconds on the clock. These guys will have one last attempt and they've got to do it into the nanoblade. There's one thing you need, it's peel. And that's gonna require that primal rage rocketing up from Belarusia. Primal Rage needs to come out, but you're also running straight into the welcoming arms of Shou Chang and his patent pending four man nano blade. Looking for another one. Into the back line he goes. And Brigida, nice stun there to keep him out, but it only keeps him out for so long. Limits him down to one kill from the Dragon Blade. But in the meantime, the rest of your team is dying. Flag Gaming looking to put on the full hold here in OT. Just take care of Bellos Rhea. Watch that OT tick down and welcome yourself into being one tick away from putting yourself at match point. One tick away, Belusia was two percent when that map ends away from that primal. Six percent when they go down, and that is the final nail in the coffin for like this player. If primal rage had been there, you would have been able to keep that over ten wick coming. You would have been able to get the second door necessary to get yourself back in because you could have seen the swaps coming on through. That would have been a hammer. He would have been barreling onto point. We all know how hard it is to unseat a dive composition when they decide stubbornly to stagger in, those fights could have gone on forever. Unfortunately, like this play, it does not happen. And now they've got to defend the side where they have looked a lot weaker on for two minutes of 58 seconds. Big old time bank, got them be made for a big old hole from like this player. Locking in the Sombra, I actually like this a lot. This is a win more composition for a time when they need to win more. But this is Feast of Famine. This is relying on Kami slowing flag gaming down. Right? You're going to rely on the fact that Monk is going to be separated from the team because 800 will be jumping into that backline. Rem is going to be there trying to keep the Winston alive with that extra bubble, not going to be acting as peel for the Ana. So if you're able to slip your way past this Brigida, you should have free passage to get this main support out of the way and shut flag gaming down each and every one of these pushes. But if a single thing goes wrong, if the Sombra gets caught out, if the Translocator is found early, then all of what like this player are trying to set up completely crumbles into nothing. Well, almost everything relies on this first push, Moxie. Whoever gets the ultimate advantage will and can take this one away. Kami, the second they get this online, it turns into dust here for Flag Gaming, but they find the first pick onto a print. It's already not looking great for FG being held off at the choke for the first push. And it all snowballs off the fact of Sleep managing to land that anti-nade already 50% of the way to this nano. Remember though, because they're running this on, but they don't have the blade to couple it up with. They're relying on EMP being there. But it's appeal for when Shoujin comes in with a nano blade of his own. That means you're lacking damage. Well, a conservative translocate gets Kami out. You're 75% to this ultimate. It cannot come up quick enough. But in the meantime, Viz is buying you plenty of time. But the pulse bomb connects onto one and shoves FG back into spawn. Now the ultimates are on rotation though, Moxie. And now Kami will have EMP at his back and Call of Flag Gaming have to adjust their playstyle. Monk gives the nano to Shoucheng in the hopes that you're going to be able to use it to build up to blade faster. But now Kami just has to wait with EMP knowing that the blade is not something to fear. But he's lacking players. You need this nano Zarya to clean players up and he absolutely will. Kane gets two in the back line, takes down two DPS and a support on their way out. LTP just in time. They were down players, but not down in spirits. They've still got more ultimates to back this one up, Moxie. 
They've got two things that can work as peel for when Shoucheng tries to come in with displayed Graviton and Primal. You can pick your poison. Either way, Shoucheng is not going to be allowed to see that team kill Gong Gong anytime soon. But Flag Gaming do have a Wombo combo of their own. They've got the grab, they've got the pulse bomb. Oh, the blade coming dangerously close. Shoucheng not shut down until afterwards. The sleep dart from sleep hitting his namesake when it matters most. Now the Graviton search thrown in from Flag Gaming. Oh, the Primal Rage, the Pulse Bomb, the Big Bang is there to clean up. They get the tick they need and they take the map, putting us in the match point. Like this player, when you run that Sombra, you are dancing with the devil. You have to rely on the fact that you have hampered the other side to the point where they can't recover in the fight that comes before it breaks out. And unfortunately, like this player, they were able to do that the first couple of fights though, but there came one engagement where they just weren't able to. And that's the one that counts. Because they weren't able to get a presence on that point in their own attack, all Flag Gaming needs is one successful push. To come in with a Graviton, to come in with a Pulse Bomb, when like this player don't have anything in their pocket to try to deal with it. I, I, you know, I got a hand in like this player though. They fixed a lot of their issues in that game. It took them a little bit too long to figure it out for the map, but it seems like they've caught their stride. That was nearly the full hold that they needed. Everything's looking a little bit further up, but you're still backs against the wall. You're still at match point. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna find out if Flag Gaming can take this one 3-0 or if LTP have a little bit more fight in them. In just a moment, we'll be back for map three.
Hello, ladies and gents, Door and Moxie. We are back here for map three of Flag Gaming versus Like This Player, Like This Player to recap backs against the walls, against the ropes. Use whatever metaphor you like. They're not in a great position right now, however. It seems that they have figured out the key to success. They've managed to keep their Ana alive, and with that, they're going to sub back in their initial Ana. Moxie, do you think they have what it takes here to take it on Numbani? This is a map that they chose, and looking at the composition that they've been running so far, and the way that they style it after Dawn, and Barney is definitely the more favoured map in the series for them. You can be very aggressive with your dive, even if you're defending, you can go for those early picks off to immediately win you the fight. And Zarari is going to be an extremely difficult target for Flag Gaming to actually get to if you put enough obstacles in their path. You can just sit back behind that point, and keep yourself safe while keeping your team alive. Well, keeping them safe isn't something that uh, they've been necessarily the greatest at so far, but what they do have going for them here is the fact that they've figured it out. They have gotten better at that over the course of the series, and I love to see adaptation. Now, the Zarya drops onto the low ground, nearly gets taken out, but Bellis Ray is doing a great job of zoning this team away, using the Lake Kova extremely effectively for LTP, but they still lose Zarari early in the fight! And with subbing in the Ana, Cubs subbing in the same exact issues you were having in map one. To be fair, Flag Gaming actually played like this player a little bit in that fight. They made it look as if all of the focus was on the front line, Whereas you could see Shou Chang actually going behind trying to get that Ana out of the way. And as soon as the Ana falls, so too does the front line that Flight Gaming are working so hard to occupy. And now they can just do the same rinse and repeat. Duh. Well, they're not out of the woods yet. Flight Gaming have a lot of ultimates. They have spawn advantage and they have plenty of time to use them. Shou Chang is coming in with the blade and is absolutely holding no punches when it comes to it. Going in, making a little bit of sashimi out of like this player, gets himself one. Not much more than that. A humble blade is the most effective, they say. Pulls them into the back line, catches one. Not much more than that to be found, though, is around. Has to 1v1 the Brigitte if he wants to stop this card. But it's the trade off. Neither of these teams are currently running in Ana. And so Flag Gaming aren't able to get anywhere near as much progress as they wanted when they were able to get Sorori out so early. Now Fly Gaming have got to deal with a Nanoblade combination of their own, so keep an eye on Rem. You do have that option to combo up your Graviton with the plus one for the Big Bam, as favored by a Prita, or you can use it to make sure that the Genji Blade finds absolutely nothing. So many choices, so little time. LTP though, the ones large and in charge when it comes to the ultimate economy. Flag Gaming, they have to be aggressive. They have to go for everything here. The Big Bang is attempted, but the guy dies before you can even put it in. Now you've got a spare Pulse Bomb, but Britta seemingly has no idea where to put it. Decides to try and stick the Brigitte, can't catch anything. In the meantime, Kami's cleaning up his back line, takes down Rem, takes down Liana, and gets one more for his troubles. I was just nothing stopping the Genji. As soon as that Graviton comes through, it is open. Season and Kami is coming to collect. And now Flag Gaming are going to be on the back foot. A parade has been found out. That trace is dire straits right now. You don't want to get staggered out. You're the most mobile hero in the game though. And that's exactly what you're going to use to your advantage. A parade taking up the high ground, trying to build the up Sorari once again. And now we're pretty much back to square one. LTP has significantly less ultimates going into this fight. Fly gaming, as much as they may not have succeeded in that push, they definitely even the scales a little bit. They can gain that high ground back, push towards the end of this point. And now it's LTP who have to go for the engagement. The Winston goes up, both bubbles are used, but very little value is found. Now the back line's free. There's no bubble, but there is a Graviton Surge. Kane throws it out, immediately shuts down Shou Chang. No more scary 4K blades from this man. He has to do it the old school way. Pulse Bomb onto the shield. Is it going to shut anything down? Instead, it's the Winston and the Genji in the back line that you got to be paying attention to, taking down Monk and stopping this push yet again from Flag Gaming. LPP are just the better at dealing with these Genji Blades. Kane holds on to the Graviton, uses it after Shou Cheng's already pulled out the ultimate, manages to net himself the Genji, and all of what Flight Gaming have been trying to set up for the next couple of seconds completely down the drain. Now they've got to come in with Graviton of their own, but Kami is going to be extremely patient. He knows that it's going to be online pretty soon for Rem. He's going to be waiting for his team to fade it out before he actually comes in with his ultimate, especially because Roy does not have the Nano. You're not going to have the extra survivability onto you. Well, that's the thing, it's been LTP being far more patient with their ultimates, but Kami comes in, isn't patient with it for once, and gets absolutely nothing for it. 
LCP breaking their silence, and that's not what they want. And now you get Graviton, you're gonna have two people go down in the middle of it, and Flag Gaming find the opening they need to push this one through B. And LTP might not be able to recover from this one though, because yes, you are coming up in that kill feed a couple of times. Flag Gaming have got the one thing that they can use to immediately win themselves this next fight when Cho Chen comes back. This blade is going to be harrowing for this defense to deal with, unless Kane is going to be able to pull a miracle and get that Graviton online before the blade comes through. And again, like we said, it is the only thing to really counter that, Aprita. You know you were searching for the both bomb there wisely. Hold on to that cooldown though. You can try and combo it with your own Zarya if they can get it up. And considering the fact that you have a nano blade from Sho Chang, there might even be time to build up that Graviton Surge. Try and combo with this. Smart Ultimate Rotations could carry Flag Gaming all the way to the end of this map. They gotta deal with the Winston first. Both bomb lands onto him. Low HP. Where are you going, Bells Rail? Tries to dive into the back line with just 100 to his name. Sho Chang slept yet again here. This time, it's Zorari finding the big one. It's not enough to stop Flag Gaming's Rampage, though. He's in the front line. They don't have the heal. The honor was distracted for too long. And that gives him time to lower those health bars. Now, around can come in, connect onto a Pulse Bomb, but Aretta doing more work. Sans Ultimate continuing this cart forge with Flag Gaming. But, like, this player will be coming in with the Primal. They just need to be able to pop it because Kami is so close to that blade, though, but so close might not be enough. Flag Gaming, they've got the Graviton, the British, so close to that Pulse Bomb. And that's the one thing Flag Gaming needs online to guarantee themselves the finish line. Big Bang Online, how many does it catch is the big question here. Winston's dropped in, but Winston dived into the back line. And Brita connects without the Graviton needing use. Remden then throw it off point. Take down that one player, a uh, Desperation Blade. At best, there to try and stop this guard. 150 on the clock is looking like the time bank here for Flag Gaming as they make it all the way through New Bonnie. Belarusia dies with Primal, doesn't get to come back in with it, and LTP don't get the contest that they desperately needed to allow themselves to come in with ultimates that would have won them out that engagement. Flag Gaming doing a very good job of keeping a hold of Graviton, of keeping a hold of Pulse Bomb and splitting the forces when they try to come onto that payload. So you don't have a clean contest, you're a pocket of a team versus the entire force just immediately looking your way as soon as you walk out of those doors. Flag Gaming able to get the entire push of Numbani with time to spare door. Well, now I kind of think it's the opposite issue that we had on Volskaya Mox. I think that the Ana and keeping them alive is going to be tougher on the attack than the defense, whereas it was the opposite on Volskaya, like I mentioned. Zerari has to move aggressively into a position, whether that's in main, whether that's on the opposing high ground, you kind of scale the risk with the escalating value that the positions are going to be getting. And LTP seemingly need that honor to be popping off in order for them to get value. So Belisria can try to jump onto the high ground all they want, but they haven't necessarily been light-handed with it. They're throwing everything at these pushes and flag gaming's counter dives and defensive dives have been excellent to deal with them. And that's the disconnect that we talked about a little earlier when we were looking at that Busan map, right? When Belushia goes in, it's a very aggressive position. And Zorari is constantly being jumped, constantly being harried, and so cannot be within line of sight to keep that Winston up and alive. Aggressive Winston play does pull Primal up extremely quickly, but heavy, big, chunky Winston help us allow Flag Gaming to hit their ultimates at a rocket pace. Yeah, things get tough as they move straight through main here, going the old-fashioned way. LTP have made their way on the point. They're going to take a lot of damage on their way. In fact, the round will be falling almost immediately. They can still build up charge, take down Sho Chang, but you trade out your main take for it, and that's absolutely not worth it. No, you want that Winston back so you can create the space, and you can already see Flight Gaming getting aggressive now that they know cleave damage is not going to be there. Not able to pick up a couple of kills, but it's a Prissa at the moment who is a pain for LTP to try to deal with. They have to go main, they can't go into these side rooms or underneath because that trace is just going to be waiting to one clip them. They are currently ahead though in the race to Nanoblade, so LTP will be the first people to get that online. If they get it online this fight, we could see this point end early. Kami trying to charge it up 90%, 95%, and you know exactly what LTP are going for. Charge up the ultimate combo, get your Genji in, get him popping off. 200 HP and a dream to his name. Here comes Kami into the back line, gets himself one, looking for a second. Great stun there by Promise, but it's not gonna save you forever, my friend. Only allows Kami to trade it out, and now you've got a regain point pressure for LTP. 
but LTP were able to get the two supports for Flight Gaming out of the way. Now you can have a Predator play Bouncer on this main road. Flight Gaming don't want to commit in until they've got all of their forces back to allow Ram to build up to the Graviton with the best chance. And they're going for this point. They're going for everything. Great anti-nade though. Pulse Bomb thrown in for good measure. And you've got to give it up if you're Fly Gaming. They're going to go for a recontest. Try and get a couple staggers in here. Try and take away the ultimate advantage. But that's all they're going to get. Well, Mizuki is actually going to be picked up by the Winston. Fly Gaming coming alive now that LTP are missing the crux of their composition goal. If you lose that Brigida, you lose the pressure, you lose the CC, you lose what's keeping the DPS for Fly Gaming in check, and they get to reign supreme. Yeah, but I mean, this is just a consolation prize. You hold them at spawn, they respawn 10 seconds later. It doesn't matter all that much. The big thing is that they charge up a lot of ultimates doing it. Now they have even more than like this player, a Prita. Oh, a Prita. He's just a child. <laughs> ah, 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 ah! <laughs> I think he's going to be so paranoid right now. <laughs> he knows what's tickling him. Now into the back line goes Bellas Rand, pops the final rage all the way in. Six ultimates online for either team and all of them getting popped right about. Now starting off with the monkeys though, the Primal Rage is about to wear off. And now we're looking for the Blaze, Nano Blaze up for just about either side. Kami though lagging a little bit behind here. Just the right engagement is what they're looking for. Like this player looking to extend this fight a little bit more with the rally. And now the Nano Winston in fact from Bellis Ray looking to do it. Graviton comboed with a Blade. No, not even needed. Bellis Ray falls. And now he feels comfortable going in. Show Chang looking for yet another Show Chang Blade. Gets himself one. Not much more than that though. It's just clean up here from Flag Gaming. It was a little bit of an overinvestment though. You'd already won the fight. You'd already taken the Winston out and invested the Graviton. You should have kept a hold of Blade because now LTP can come in and they can try and win this race. Both of these Genji's gonna be sitting once again towards the 20%. If these guys are able to hit any of these ultimates fast, that means that they have a huge advantage. It's pushing that advantage, that's gonna be the tricky part, is both these teams very much do like pressing the Q button, much more so all at one time. Who gets them up first usually is the indicator of who's gonna win the fight. Right now it's Fly Gaming though, getting way more chip damage in this fight and rocketing ahead in Ultimate Charge, starting off with a Prentice Pulse Bomb that could be big. In fact, around goes down early, and with that go a lot of the damage that like this player had to open this fight. Great 8 on 8 over the top, doesn't quite connect on the LTP, but it doesn't need to, as the DPS is all there. In fact, Monk throwing in a little bit of DPS, getting two kills to their name. LTP need to find some way of buying themselves time because Flag Gaming can come in with a Primal Rage and all of what LTP are trying to set up, even if they're able to go on towards this payload, their composition Ooh. is going to be completely thrown out of position though when this Primal Rage comes through. And it's probably just going to shove him right back into spawn if I'm being completely honest. The Prince picking on him from one side. You've got Xiao Chang and 800 from the other. The Blade's online. Nano Blade is online, more importantly here. And he's going straight for the Ana. Takes down the Roy. This guy can't even make it out of spawn. Cut him a break already. LTP going to be banking up ultimates, so. though. And now they've just got to be a little bit more patient, though. Kami has been so good with holding onto these Blades until he sees Ren put that Graviton in. He's got to hold his will. It's a battle of medals right now. And if that Zarya Graph comes out before the blade comes through, all of LTV's chances of getting out of the spawn door go down dramatically. But FG, they have big ping. No, they don't! A pretty uses the pulse bomb early. What are you doing? You had so many tools to peel and win a fight with just one combination. There's not the mortality field to stop you or anything. They use a key ability right before they need to. Now they're on the back foot. They've got nothing to stop this. They have a Graviton and a Primal Rage, two very awkward ultimates to be using together. LTP have so much more charge up. They have a Nano Blade and the Graviton and the Pulse Bomb. So many things that could end this fight. And it's a Nano Blade that they're looking to do it with. Into the back line goes Kami slicing and dicing his way on through. Takes down Promise. Look for a little bit more because traded out in his own right cart. Still stopped here. Show Chain cleaning up Sans Blade. And now we can see Flag Gaming move forward like this player run out of gas in the tank they've run out of ultimates to do it with and it's flag gaming pushing out to stabilize and with only 30 seconds left on the clock flag gaming can stabilize for the rest of the rank choking's going to have a blade door and ltp just put in the graviton just put in a blade of their own they've got nothing to keep flag gaming away from them if this defensive side decides to go aggressively the one thing i'm looking for is a round 
the Pulse Bomb has to connect onto the Brigitte. You have to take away the sustain of this team. You can deal with the Dry Blade. You can deal with that much with abilities, but you've got to stop this team from just outlasting you in OT. Cho Chang looking for the right opportunity to use this blade. Dash in, pops it immediately. The Pulse Bomb from Imprinta still in their back line. They still have the opportunity to use it. Around uses his, but it's way too late. The rest of his team's already dead. Flat Gaming, hold on and take the series out of LTP's hands. Three to zero. The Brigida stayed alive. The sustainability stayed present for Flag Gaming. The Pulse Bomb that could have been huge will never really get to see what could have been, duh. It's an unfortunate one, and it really is if you have to feel for like this player. They came in at a disadvantage. They were behind consistently throughout Busan, but they improved. They showed that they knew the Anna was the one that was causing their composition to suffer all around, and they put measures in place to try and keep her alive, and it worked for a majority of the map. But Fly Gaming was so very good at taking these maps and minimizing them. All of these engagements were decided, all of these series, rather, were decided with one engagement in one specific part of the map because that's what Fight Gaming did. <laughs> See, oh that, that, that's God, the Anna coming in. <laughs> they heard that there's an Anna and Fight Gaming are wanting to, uh, to, to just grab that Genji and make sure that the Anna stays dead. And you know what? It was close, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. And I don't think a pulse bomb qualifies as exactly that. As I'll buy time for Moxie to go ahead and answer her door and get her package. It was a close one between like this player and flag gaming. But like we said, that pulse bomb at the end wasn't able to connect onto the Bermuda. It was the only chance they had at really getting back in there. At the end of the day, though, it was improvement, just barely not enough. Flag gaming closed it out with some consistent dive play. Exactly what you love to see from these Chinese contenders teams. More of that on the road, though, because we've got O2 Blast taking on Billy Billy Gaming in what might just be the best match of the morning, evening, or night, whatever time it is, wherever you are. It's going to be a good one. Ladies and gents, we'll be coming back with that one as soon as we have the match online. So stay seated.
ladies and gents, one more match for the day. And I think we might have saved the best for last year. We got O2 Blast taking on Billy Billy Gaming. Might just be the best game of the day. And you know what? As your designated tour guide through everything Marvelous and Tier 2 right about now, I can't wait to help you guys out with it. I am Dor, and I am joined by Moxie for the fourth match of this tournament today. Mox, how are you feeling about this one? I mean, there's apparently going to be such a good game that my postman even wanted to come and witness it. So we've definitely got a treat for you guys lined up. I am a little bit sad, I'm not going to lie, that O2 Blast aren't going to be running Kaiser in their starting lineup. But Kelios is definitely nothing to sniff at. This guy has been there for Boston Uprising in Overwatch League Door, so he's got plenty of pedigree to his name. I mean, we got plenty of pedigree all over this team. I mean, just look down the Lorosky. You read this out, Kaiser, Proper, Pelican, Kalios, Yakpung, Neko, then Teru. Like, it just, it doesn't get any better. OG Blast has shown dominance in recent time and for good reason. Looking to assert themselves at the top of that chain. If I'm informed correctly, it's been Runaway taking this tournament the past three times. It's been hosted and O2 Blast are set and prepared to try and steal that title right on away from him. Billy Billy Gaming, though, have been making waves in the previous seasons of Chinese contenders. They were the only ones who were able to take down Team CC in their time of need. So this is a team with plenty of pedigree of their own. Yeah, and if they're able to get the upset today, you know, talk about making waves in contenders, they'll definitely be making waves in the Netty scene. And so it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not the underdog will be coming out on top or whether everyone predicting O2 Blast to getting a nice, easy, free O are going to be coming up trumps in chat. And looking down this roster, we're starting out with Winter, Zaijin, Over, Illusion, Don't Say Yahoo, Blossom, Century, Salvation, and Secret. Plenty of stuff. And you know, we got to see a little bit of Billy Billy in the previous weekend of Contenders, didn't we? We did, and it looks like they're leaning into a style that a lot of teams are actually leaning towards. A lot of still Genji being played, a lot of Zarya Winston, and just sometimes even a little bit of Sombra. We're getting to see that DPS a little bit slept upon in the other regions when you look at EU and NA playtime. Not really there. But the Chinese and Korean team tending to favor her a little bit more, and I like to see it. EMP is such a heavy hitting ultimate, and it really forces the team to act around it, and not just that, react. Your supports have to be there, you've got to have that positioning dead on, otherwise you've just lost a team fight off the back of one press of a Q button. I mean, we talked about it. It's a win more composition, one that Billy Billy are relatively familiar with, having ran it in this recent weekend of contenders where they took third place falling obviously into team cc who is still dominant as ever in the chinese region i mean it's no surprise there but it's kind of a race to see who can catch up to team cc first right now it's billy billy and the one winner who have been constantly in this race getting ever 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 closer to finally being able to take that title away but i think it's a really nice opportunity to go against the korean teams because it's a different team to test yourself up against in the chinese region it's everybody against team cc now you have some bigger goals to reach towards you have teams like runaway teams like o2 blast who are just as if not harder to defeat than team cc but also offer up a different play style a different look in and you can kind of form yourself around those and try and give yourself different ways of trying to approach your own region I mean, you say different playstyle, but we know both of these guys and everyone that we've seen here today falls under the same playstyle, though. Let's kill everyone better than they're trying to kill <laughs> us. These guys pull no punches. They don't wait. They just go for that really aggressive, straight for your front st uh, throat style of play. And whoever manages to come up first in the kill feed tends to come up trumps in the team fight victory. I mean, we said it's kind of been our motto all day, you know, defense is overrated anyways. <laughs> Going in seems to be the new black. That which so, I feel like we've seen some teams do a lot better than others. Some of the main differences we've really seen today have been protecting the support lineup. It came in in Fly Gaming's matchup. It came up in the matchup before then. It was constantly the Ana going down first was the team to end up losing the point. We've seen very little of double shield. It has been very little based on immortality field timing or any of the stuff that we were watching in weeks prior. So much of it comes down to how you're rotating your Winston in and out using those bubble timings to effectively draw out cooldowns and then move in on that back line. 
And we know that we're going to be headed over to Busan, I believe that for us, ma'am. So, well, we don't necessarily know the order of Busan, it will be though we can speculate on what compositions we see. Because we haven't had a lot of Reinhardt's day, in fact we've had pretty much zero of it. Because both of these guys have adapted into this new playstyle, that bubble management, where they want to extra little bit of survivability with the Zarya behind him. And if you're able to hit the sweet spot though, you will have bubbles every single second that you're up and you'll allow your supports to hit those ultimates far quicker than if you're trying to keep a Reinhardt alive with only that shield. Now if memory serves me right, this is the first time we've seen the dive into the double shield today and that makes things really interesting for O2 Blast. We're now in a position that nobody else has had to be in. You've got to break the bunker, which is already beginning to take over the point you dive out. That's almost definitely going to give that first tick over as well. Now you're bleeding away percentage along with cooldowns here as Billy Billy Gaming continue to apply pressure. Looking for the right opportunity and the one's dropping dangerously low. And now with the on appeal away, there's nothing to heal him up. This is getting very, very dangerous for Yachtbung who dives over, takes out Winter and opens up the door for O2 Blast to start moving in. Immortality Field has been forced out and that's the key ability. Now they can move into the back line, start opening things up. O2 Blast though, trading out kills beautiful beautifully on the Winston and Tracer here. Yachtpung on one side and the Tracer on the other. That is not a spot I want to be in. Well, if you're looking at the ultimates available for O2 Blast, Billy Billy are still in that spot you don't want to be in. Oh, we're staring down the barrel of this Nanoblade. And Kelly is coming super close to that Graviton as well. It's all going to fall onto the shoulders. Both of this Batiste available for Billy Billy with the Immortality Field, but also onto Don't Say. If the McCree is able to get that flashbang to connect with Pelican, then you're going to be able to keep that little bit of utility for when the Graviton comes through. I mean, you're asking a lot to stop this many ultimates. You can flashbang, you can accretion them all you want. He's still got health, he's still got a sword in his hand, but Winter connects with the Pulse Bomb onto Yakbung. There's no main tank, no space being made right now for O2 Blast. In fact, they started this out right, but it's turned into a disaster. You've lost all of your key ultimates. Primal Rage gone, Gravi Graviton Surge is now gone. Billy Billy Gaming just strolled casually onto the point and taking it over for themselves. It's all because the blade does not do what O2 wanted it to. It doesn't manage to draw out those precious utilities and set Kelios up to come in to actually get kills from that Graviton. BLG able to deal with it a lot better and now set themselves up in a much better position. You're going to have this dead eye. You can use it for zoning. You know the Graviton's going to be there for O2. Now you just have to make sure the Zarya isn't alive to actually use it. Well, let's get that Zarya down. It's going to be the tricky part. O2 now have to close space with the dive composition that doesn't really have much of a way in. Well, if I'm looking for something to connect to, but it's a dead eye they really got to worry about. Everybody on pause. Pelican with the deflect straight back into Don't Say's mouth. Not what he was expecting. Now Gravitic Flux thrown in. Stops the dive. Pelican for the cleanup here. O2 Blast with yet another successful dive on the Winston Zarya while managing to hold on to a couple of ultimates. Yeah, Billy Billy going to be once again trying to close distance between themselves and O2, but again getting closer and closer door to dealing with this Nanoblade. And Prop is going to be coming in with a Pulse Bomb this time around so you can infiltrate that backline, force Immortality Field out from Secret's unwilling fingers to allow your DPS this Nanoblade to find so much more value. Yeah, it's got to be better than the laps, though. <laughs> we did not see all that much happen when Pelican went in. The Pulse Bomb looks to do a little bit more. Doesn't connect on anybody. Now you throw in the blade. Now that that's missed, bubble in over top. Immortality Field's been used. It's now out of Pelican's way. He can slice and dice his way freely through that line. Find himself three kills to his name. 80% on the point. It's last fight territory for BLG. And unfortunately, they're trying to move a very slow composition into position with that Orisa, with that Sigma. You don't get to come back into these fights quickly. It's all going to be up to Winter on this Tracer to be able to tag onto that point and use that Pulse Bomb for the benefit of the team. Finn on that Anna is looking like a very juicy target, but so too is Winter's face. Oh, you ate the rocket whip to the face. That doesn't feel good. Overtime's taking over. And you know what? Over is just done with this one. Backs away from the point, doesn't even want to touch it. Let's O2 Blast take the first map of Busan and set themselves up just a little bit further in the series. Tracer players have long detested Brigida players' door, and that is going to continue that hatred for a good couple of months or so as we get to head over to our next part of Busan, which will be Necker Base. And so keep an eye on those DPS. They're still going to be up to the shenanigans that we saw on that first map on Sanctuary, where if you're able to flank, if you're able to pull out these immortality fields from this Batiste early, you don't even necessarily have to go for the Batiste, 
you just got to go for either a squishy DPS or that Brigitte. A little bit harder, a little bit more prickly, but if you're able to chip them down low enough, you come up so huge in that reward department. It's a big risk here swapping up the compositions, but not running the Genji, I would say, is by far the more interesting pick. When you swap to the McCree, you lose the dynamite, so you lose a lot of that poke damage, so the Genji isn't there to finish off, and you don't really need the Genji anymore, but it puts a lot of weight on Winter to actually find frags on their own. Well, Winter is going to be onto the Genji Pelican as well. So you will still have that backline infiltration. You will still be trying to pry those immortality fields out from those petite hands. And O2 have actually been able to get the better stick of these rotations, though. They're behind the point. They can go, claps onto it, pick it up. And unfortunately, Billy Billy, because they're trying to sort this composition up a little bit too late, just got to deal with it. And double shield and the double shield. Mox, we know how long these can take. There is going to be a lot of percentage racked up before Billy Billy are able to really do anything. O2 Blaster are going to take their sweet time setting this up. Hawk combos are plenty, but Immortality Field was forced out of O2 Blast. That is a huge cooldown now gone that Billy Billy need to look to exploit. Move forward and move forward quick. Make those health bars drop to the floor. Proper's coming up on a bob, which is going to give them a massive advantage coming into the point application matrix used. They have a straight shot onto the O2 Blast players, but just gonna drop down onto the point. This is what they get for having that position forced. We're nearly at 40% Moxie, and now the re-engage should come in with the Amplification Matrix, make things extremely awkward for Billy Billy, who now have to wait yet again. But they've lost Pelican, a massive amount of damage, a lot of threat, keeping Billy Billy away from you from just moving forward. Now removed from O2, Billy Billy need to capitalize on this moment. They've got to start pressing W. It's 50% to the point. We haven't even finished up with the first fight, Moxie. What is going on here? Holt finally lands. Billy Billy have the position they want, but Pelican's respawned. He's got a blade, and he comes straight through the immortality field. Proper's clean it up on the other side. The O2 Blast maintain their point hold. One fight later, they've got 70%. And unfortunately for Billy Billy, they're going to be coming in for ultimate, sure, but they're ultimates that require space to find value. Sigma Flex Supercharges, you've got to be able to drop those knowing that your Sigma isn't going to immediately be dead when he goes up into the end, knowing that Supercharges are going to be able to stay up for the remainder of their life. They're deployable, they've got a health bar. And OT Blast are not going to be allowing you to get those down and let them survive, whereas Jack Fung, he's going to be set up. He's going to have the pick of the scenery where he wants to put the bongos. Oh, this is so smart, though from O2 Blast, they haven't used a single ultimate. They're letting Billy Billy come in and use everything at 99%. They're gonna come in with five of their own and look to clean up in the next fight. No, Kalios for a re- whips big time with the Gravitic Flux. It doesn't matter though, they're still in the kill feed. The Eucretion connects and the re-engage, while awkward, still worked according to plan. Overtime ticking down here and it seems like they might need not even have to see the point over to Billy Billy Gaming. Although Bob dropped on, goes down. This fight, Foxy, it's all kinds of awkward, but O2 Blast are definitely coming out ahead. Well, Slagin on the Hammond might be what's able to get Billy Billy back into this. Over's going to be coming in with those supercharges. You've just got to get the Arisa into position. She's one of the slower heroes, but Billy Billy managed to get the Batiste, managed to get the Brigitte sustained for O2 Blast gone. I am genuinely confused as to what is happening right now, but it's O2 Blast pulling the fight back yet again off the back of their massive ultimate advantage that they came into it with. Falcon's able to clean up the blade, Popper's Bob on point allows them that seventh member, and with that seventh member, they're going to secure themselves off the first map of the series. You've got to ask yourself what would have happened if Billy Billy hadn't allowed O2 to have the point behind them. Because all we see that first 60% of the point is all one fight. Because what do O2 do every single time they see Billy Billy trying to approach them? They move away. They draw out that fight for longer and longer and longer. And the one thing that Billy Billy needed to do was move forward. And O2 completely denied them that. Whether it was just by pressing S themselves or whether it was sending Pelican around the back to draw attention away to force them into a sort of very strange pincer movement where you are sandwiched between the majority of the team but a Genji that you know you can't actually ignore that you have to commit resources into dealing with that your backline if they do turn their backsides to that Genji will be gone in a matter of seconds and O2 are able to buy themselves first 20% then 30% then rock it up to 60% of that point all by avoiding a fight 
I mean, Ring Around the Rosie only favors the players that are actually holding on to the point. And with that, I think O2 Blast, I, I love what they were doing at the end of that point. Holding on to all their ultimates, Billy Billy Gaming used everything in it. The re-engage was weird and sloppy and awkward and with gravitic fluxes everywhere, but you managed to clutch it out just by the sheer fact that you've got more Q buttons to press. They pull it out, they pull out map one, ladies and gents. We'll be back finding out what Billy Billy Gaming have locked in for map two and what they have in store for us heading on to this series. We'll be back shortly. And ladies and gents, we're back for map number two here. O2 Gaming currently up one to zero against Billy Billy Gaming. Billy Billy Gaming, however, showed a little bit of promise towards the end of that map. And O2 Blast continues to run these double shield compositions here as we head into Temple of Anubis. Mox, what you thinking about what we got locked in? I mean, this is just O2 trying to continue winning a fight by avoiding it. Or at least drawing it out as long as they possibly can. They've got the spam damage, they've got Pelican on the Junkrat, Billy Billy's hardest challenge right now is just going to be getting close. Seemingly O2's only objective has been to play the game for as little time as possible today, and it's working out beautifully for them. This stall tactics are amazing at actually taking down all of the Billy Billy Gaming's plans. Remember, the Chinese region tends to be a lot more aggressive, a lot quicker, but uh, you know what? Forget all that. Nice halt onto Pelican. Takes him down, gives him the advantage, and now the Orisa is going to be taken away from the high ground relatively quickly because there's no longer that spam damage to stop them. And now don't say you can just stand and fire. And proper going down as well just opens the door even further for this Ash to feel a real impact in this fight. Still gotta remember though, Billy Billy have not actually touched this point as of now. So if O2 want to launch a recontest, they're definitely gonna have the time to do it. Well, I mean, this is the issue with the double shield. You lose one player and the whole composition crumbles. Whether it's a Junkrat, Nash, a Sigma, an Orisa, or either of the supports, it doesn't matter. The 5v6 is so difficult to win. Do you know what might not matter in this next engagement? Winter's Blade. You're running that Batiste, you don't have the Ana, and you're going to be coming into an awful lot that can counter it. If you wait too long, Kallus is going to be coming into the Sigma Flux, but if you don't go quickly enough, 
Ethan's gonna be that about amplification. Be extremely careful about how you play this. There's so many ways to win this fight early right now for O2 Blast. They can back away, use the Ant Matrix. I wasn't gonna say use the tire, but Pelican has died early in the fight yet again. Way too big for his bridges on this Junkrat. The Ant Matrix comes out and that opens the door for Winston to move in with the blade. Dynamite drops him low. Great healing from his teammates to keep him alive though. And now they can start working on these tank health bars now with the sports out of the way. All the damage is going to be permanent here, dropping straight onto the Arisa. They just need to finish off one more. Pelican's got the spawns. They've got the bomb. They've got the numbers. And it feels like O2 Blaster on their way to stabilizing here, Moxie. Uh, Billy Billy still coming up in this kill feed. Don't say still being a constant presence on those sidelines. Losing over, though, guarantees that this push is indeed bad. Billy Billy just trying to get out without losing this. I actually do not want to get staggered out, especially because O2 are going to be just using the supercharger to farm ultimate. The longer Billy Billy waits, the closer Neko gets to that rally. And that means more sustain alongside those respawns being closer. Billy Billy have to find some form of aggression to enable them quickly. Well, aggression aplenty here. They've got the ultimate advantage. They can engage with a the Flux. They can engage with the Ant Matrix that'll likely be online. Beautiful halt into Swift Strike. That is a lot of ultimate charge for Pelican, but it's not quite enough to get you all the way through. The Bongo from Yachtpunk can halt this push for a good while, but it's the Amplification Matrix that they're really scared of. Billy Billy Gaming immediately throwing it out. The Bongo is dropped in LOS of the choke point, so that'll be falling immediately. This is just time off the clock. Time for over to come in with a Bongo of his own. Gravitic Flux still online. Pelican just trying to deal with the critical ultimate. The most fight winningest ultimate in the game, might I add, is Billy Billy have finally made their way onto the point. The Gravitic Flux used, catches two people in the back line, but Kaliosis is gonna be even bigger. Everybody's still stuck in the choke here for Billy. They haven't made the proper space. They haven't bought their DPS to sightline. They need to actually find kills, and for that, O2 Blast are gonna hold them. And they took so long in that push as well. Immortality Field, when they were inside room, was invested far too early, and so Billy Billy could not push. They had to wait those 25 seconds out before they moved on to point. And that means that that took a massive amount of that time bank though. Big old chunk and they didn't find anything for it. Because we're going to see Pelican waiting on this high ground with this blade. It's going to have so much aggression available for O2 that Billy really have to be able to deal with. But they've got to deal with it quickly. They're going to be coming into ultimate but they can't be the ones that go side room. They cannot be the ones that wait patiently for O2 to initiate. Absolutely not, because O2 will always do so. Billy Billy getting aggressive with it though, drops the blade, drops the rally, going in on the Sigma. Take out one of those tanks, a major health bar now gone. Winter's looking for the back line, but his team's not through the choke yet. They need a little bit more help before going in because they gotta worry about Pelican's blade. He's only got 50 HP to his name and a dream. In fact, Salvation is gonna take exactly that away from him as they wrap their way around the point. This fight's taking forever though, Moxie. Remember, the spawns are coming in. Well, Amplification Matrix comes in for Billy. Billy, this should be the moment. The team's able to turn it around, but they've still got to deal with O2. Swimming back on to this point, not allowing a single tick to be given. Oh, improper, like a mosquito in the back line, just poking, prodding, and biting him right where it hurts. Oh, you lose your fatigue, you lose all amount of sustainability. Proper went a little bit too aggressively, though, and that is exactly what O2 will lose. The Ash gone, but Pelican and Kalios making up for the absence nonetheless. And again, Billy Billy, a very long push. Not a single tick picked up and not a single ultimate in the bank for them either. You don't want to be in this final fight stage coming in at 1 minute 30 where you've still got to budget push. O2 Blast have had the right idea when it comes to ultimate economy this entire time. Let's see if they can figure out that they need to be aggressive yet again. I'm looking for a forward Gravitic Flux right when they come through this choke point to shut this push down. Billy Billy don't really have too many other options other than trying to build up ultimates of their own. A very aggressive shield push though. I love this from over. It gets them in deep, but their DPS still aren't through the choke here, Moxie. And it's taking time to set this one up. So you've got one minute on the clock and Kalius is using this moment now to pop Sigma Flux. Immortality Field already drawn out and that's going to set the stage perfectly for Pelican and Prophet to come in in that kill feed. It would if Pelican was still alive though. Dynamite's over top and it seems like Don't Say from the sideline is putting in some serious work. The Bob though, everything that O2 Blast just rips time away from the clock with Zijin going down and Winter as well. They're sent back to spawn with 40 seconds on the clock and it took them nearly a minute and a half just to do this one push. It's taking them so long. Oh, they've got one last push and Pelican's shutting down. 
their hopes and dreams are naught as this Genji just piles shuriken after shuriken into face after face. Billy Billy, they've got the means, but they might not have the seconds to make them count. 30 seconds is just not enough for double shield to move anywhere. It takes so much time. You have to go aggressive with the blade. You don't have a Sigma Flux to stop the opposing team. You can maybe throw a Bob in a point. Here's a Constellation Prize. It's probably just going to get fortified out of the way. Five seconds in. The Genji can get a Swift Strike on the point, but things are definitely getting rough. They do manage to speed their way on with the help of Rally keeping themselves alive, but they run straight into the Gravitic Flux. And Pelicans open arms. The Blades popped in Mortality Field as well. Winter's cleaning up on the point, though. And Billy Billy Gaming, they stand a chance. Eat the accretion to the face. And now Pelican just needs to find the support, just needs to take away all the sustain that Billy Billy Gaming have. Otherwise, they're going to be taking this point over in OT. Two ticks to their name. Make it a third. And they have pulled this one out from the jaws of defeat, Moxie. It seems like they may have done it. They've still got to deal with the Doomfist, though. The Brigida is down. AoE healing gone, but the Amplification Matrix is there. In the hour that Billy Billy needed it, that Batista's is keeping everyone alive by himself. Oh, the Hellfires are dropping low. Yakpun's taking down the main take. Pelican's back on. This is not a trivial task here. One player is all that's contesting this for O2 Blast, but it's been just enough time. The spawns are in. They've got four players on point. Proper starting to clean up on the Doomfist. O2 have stabilized. They've done it. They've got the hold on to Billy Billy Gaming. Do a bomb's not on point. I was looking at that old charge coming out from Don't Say. That was why the Ash was making sure to constantly duck behind a crate. You were already so low, but you were so close to that ultimate. That was the one thing that could have guaranteed you. And my goodness, don't look at that oh, point percentage. It hurts. It hurts so much, Moxie. It was 99%. so close. 99%. 0.9! The closest you can be in Overwatch to capturing a point without actually capturing that point. And somewhere in a different universe right now, that Bob came out, touched that point, and Billy Billy were able to pick up point B of Anubis off the back of it. As it is, though, we're in this current universe, and they're only able to get out of Anubis with the one point to their name, so O2 have a very clear win condition. And a lot of it is going to be decided on the time bank that Billy Billy allowed this attacking side to get in to that next point with. And now O2 Blast as well have a very, very easy, or easy to understand win condition. Go to the end of the point and sit there just a fraction of a second longer than Billy Billy Gaming were able to with a composition that looks a little bit different. Proper has locked in a Widowmaker here. It might it's just be for a first shot. It's, 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 no, it's not oh, even gonna be Oh, don't play with us like that. When you all run right, enough to right. go to Genji, you don't want to be running a Widowmaker because there's going to yeah. come a time where that Genji's going to come into your backline and all of the presence that the Widowmaker has will just disappear into a puddle of PTSD-ridden TPS mentality. Ooh. You know what? I'm going to give Kalios a couple of stop points there. That was a really good eat onto the halt and onto the dynamite. It denies pretty much any value from BLG moving their way in. They get into the Mega Room safely. Nice halt into the dynamite combo here from Ochi Blast, but they're not out of the woods yet. They got to make it through the door, and Pelican's going to open it wide for him. Winter goes down. There's no damage to follow up on any of the dynamites that BLG are going to be throwing in. It's free farming for Pelican, who gets to throw shurikens around at his will. Space is taken, the high ground has been achieved. O2 Blaster in a position that is much low. And BLG is in a position they really don't want to be and they've lost choke, so they've lost that place where they can try and farm for ultimate. Amplification Matrix is bad, but you're going to have to invest it just to keep your team alive. Winter though, cleaning up, BLG not done yet. They've got themselves to a third. The Genji's looking to clutch things out. Everybody in this corner while the point is ticking over. Pelican is probably gonna need to commit this blade if they want to seal things out, but they're definitely not done yet. In fact, they don't want to commit the blade. They're done here. They just get one tick. You started losing members. You don't want to put blade in. You know this can be the one thing that wins you the fight, especially if Yakuin is able to get those supercharges up or even proper sending that Bob in. We've seen it. It was a runaway special earlier on in this series, though. When you send that blade, when you send that Bob, you couple it up. There's nowhere for Billy Billy to run. And something that Billy Billy is relying on right now is having that space. You can already see they're back on that high ground. They're trying to milk the choke for all it's worth. So keep my own Kallius. He's going to be able to eat those yet again. Halt finds nothing. 
intense scenes here as they both try to wrap their way around. Aggressive flux though from Zijin, and you love to see his Pelican in the back line though. Looking to be the great equalizer thrown in like, with, just like you said, Mox, with the bot making it impossible to dodge all that damage. O2 Blast clean up on the back end of it, and this should be them getting A. Well, actually, don't say sense a bob of his own, but it doesn't find anywhere near the amount of value. And now it is just going to be proper clearing house. As BLG, by putting that bob in a little bit too late, now denies a lot of importance to Winter's late. Because if you'd still had bob, you could send both of these DPS ultimates at the same time. And you would have found the same value that O2 just did with their combination. As it is, you've got to pop Rally and hope it's enough to keep Winter alive when he tries to ult into the team. The snowball here is actually a really, really scary bit of potential they have. So many ultimates that could make this go awry. A singular pick and the whole thing ends here for Billy Billy. They need this play to be big and in comes Winter. Packed up dynamite on top. The damage has been done. He's kind of just floating above trying to draw utility, but he didn't draw out all that much. Now the amplification matrix can be used by O2 Blast. They can look for a re-engage. They take down over. Main tank now out of the way. They can start to actually move in, move past the amplification matrix, and they still have a bongo online, Moxie. And Pelican is getting closer and closer to this blade, but oh, they might not even need it to finish out this map. Billy Billy, they're onto their ham and they're trying to stall this point for as long as they possibly can, but no one is anywhere near an ultimate that they can use as a Hail Mary to get this point into their favor! Ouch. O2 able to walk away with Anubis, and unfortunately for Billy Billy, we talked about it, we said that they had one clue win condition. Buy as much time as you possibly can on your defense on point A. You've got a choke, you've got a halt ability, use them. Callius was the thorn <laughs> in Billy Billy's plans. If ever I've seen a more Sigma shaped wrench, I, it boggles the mind that, that Kinetic Grasp not once, but twice, denied all importance that Billy Billy had placed in that choke. And you saw what happened when O2 were able to traverse choke to side room safely. Billy Billy panicked. They didn't know what to do. They tried to run back onto point. They tried to have a little bit more space to give, but that meant that you give up high ground. You give up that place that the Ashen wants to preside in to get that spam damage coming her way. And the Genji just got to be completely unleashed. Yeah, and for, for those of you watching that may think we're kind of overestimating how much those kinetic grabs did, they were massive. You deny all of the value from Dynamite. You deny all of the value from Halt. You deny all of the value that would come from the accretion following. And those ultimate charges ended up being what did it to Billy Billy. They did not have the same ultimates to match that of O2 Blast snowballing into the second point. They did not have the ultimate percentage to try and stagger out the same way that O2 Blast did on their defense. They didn't have the same tools going into their second point defense, all spiraling off of just one ability that we saw come out from Kalios that was so, so important in the scale of the match. And I mean, holds should not be downplayed. We've seen full holds on Anubis off of Orisa holds because every single time a team tries to go to that side room, a wily Orisa puts in that hold ability, it yanks someone who thought that they were safely into that side room door back into the jaws of death. They get chewed out and spat back into spawn room, push over then you are left sitting in that side room the rest of your team completely split off from a person you've got to backtrack you've got to lose people again at risk your health bars are going to dip the ultimates are going to be going up three times as quickly to the other side as they are yours because you're just eating damage and again and again that will happen but again and again we just don't see it today well, speaking of chewed up and spit out mocks, we may be looking at exactly that from Billy Billy. Their backs against the wall, staring down the sights at yet another 3-0, but they've got a chance and they've got Matt Pick. Ladies and gents, we'll be back as soon as we have that.
And we're back. It was a quick break, ladies and gents. It was a quick map pick as well by Billy Billy Gaming. They've decided that their grounds to stand on here when their back's against the wall. It's going to be King's Row to try and close things out for O2 Blast. And Billy Billy going to be on the defensive side first of all. So, Door, we saw it in point A. They weren't able to take advantage of the chokes. This is something that they've got to get to grips with on this side of King's Row. Otherwise, which we're gonna have so much time in street space, they'll be able to bypass that second choke easily. Great dynamite over top, but it doesn't get destroyed. So this is gonna give so much more value over to the defending side right now. Don't say it's at 50, 60% to an ultimate. Billy Billy Gaming have opened up this defense fantastically. That is the difference between a halt that gets eaten and a halt that goes through. Billy Billy using it as a springboard to build up to these really important ultimates because now you've got a bob into this next fight. Now you've got the precedence of the spam damage in O2. You're going to be forced into using this immortality build very early on and that means that Winter can come in with the blade once it's on the 25 second cooldown and actually come up into kill phase. Yeah, this choke is infinitely harder when you're at an ultimate disadvantage, but O2 Blast have made their way at least this far through it. Looking to use that amplification matrix to find an advantage, but Halt Swift Strike, Dynamite Strikes again. Immortality Field has been used, and just like you said, that is the ticket for Winter to move in, deal out the DPS, or at least draw out enough utility that his team can clean on up. It's a heavy investment sending Bob and Blade at the same time, but it pays off dividends when it works. So you just have to deal with damage. And now Billy Billy, because they've been able to keep hammering damage straight into the attackers, they've been set themselves up really nicely. They've got an amplification that they can drop the bite if they're in the time to the super fight. And then Ovi can come in with super charges. Either way, O2 is going to have to be in blood if they want to play past the space. It's gonna cost them a lot here. Starting out with the amplification matrix, though, Billy Billy looked to gain themselves space. It's a very, very treacherous space to actually move through now. 402 blast, and so much time has been taken off the clock. Mox, we're one fight into this, and there's still just two minutes left. Another Gravitic Flux into Dynamite into a ton of damage. Billy Billy have completely revamped how they're playing this composition. However, now they don't have an Orisa to do it with. Pelican can come in with the blade, clean things up, and look to take a point A for O2 Blast. There was nothing to stop Pelican's blade from coming in, unfortunately, because I didn't use that signal for just a little bit before the Genji ult. You were able to pick up the Batiste, but it's just not enough. O2 Blast make up the absence with the damage, and now Billy Billy are going to be stuck in street phase. They do, however, have a couple of things that they can use if they want to properly contest this. Bob is going to be touching the point, not booped away this time, but it's a little bit too late, Dur, and now you've just sacrificed one of your best bets and keeping a hold of this choke and keeping O2 away from you. And these fights are incredibly neutral. We sit here shooting at each other's shields for a very, very long time, which is uncharacteristic of most of the Chinese and Korean teams that we've seen today. O2 though, with the bongo, are gonna look to try and break the way through this choke point. That's about the only way they have to do so, with hiding behind the cart, taking low, Dynamite's gonna be finishing it off. Immortality Field's been forced out of Billy Billy Gaming though. While their bongo is up, the second it goes down, you know that O2 wanna move in, but they've lost too many players to do so. The supercharger for over is just put in such a better position because you're defending Arisa rather than Arisa trying to walk into someone else's territory. O2 goes down, but it's just as quickly taken out. Whereas BLG, they get the full impact of it, and now they get the full value of holding at choke. You can already see they're putting as much distance as they possibly can while still keeping a nice line of sight, setting up, don't say, to get one of these early picks off and build up that next ultimate. And the ultimate charges need to be built up soon here. Kalios most especially. We're looking at a flux that could save the entire team and amplification matrix that could buy time for more abilities. But Billy Billy aren't giving them the time of day. Critic flux into blade into immortality field being drawn out from O2 Blast. But do they have the damage to follow up? No, Winter not even to finish anybody here in the back line. A beautiful disengage from O2 Blast. And now it's going to be their turn to move in. They've got the M-Matrix. They've got the Halt. They have all the tools they could ever want to make this count. Halt into the damage. Swift Strike from Pelican looks for the back line. Sigma and Ash both separate away from the rest of their team here. And now Billy Billy should crumble. And Billy Billy investing the rally as well is such a misfortunate play because now you're going to be lacking that sustainability. So when Pelican comes into this next engagement, it's the domino effect! Oh! 
Wow, this team does just not have brake pedals. Ultimate into ultimate, fight into fight. They will string this all the way through the B point. Billy Billy might not even have the spawns. Yeah, they're gonna have a really hard time being able to try and get any sort of contest going at the moment. But you really just gotta let O2 take this next checkpoint so that you can set up on the high ground. Because if Proper gets control of this, with a Bob already built, O2 are not going to be unseated easily. They've got an ultimate advantage. They've been rolling this card across the map. They've got a Bob to follow up. BLG have not been in the ultimate advantage for a very, very long time here on King's Row. Starting things off. Amplification Matrix yet again finds no value for them. They're not able to halt or accretion with it competently, or not competently, but correctly enough to find themselves the kill. Now O2, they get to engage with a Bob and an Amp Matrix of their own, and this is going to find a kill. Over has nowhere to hide from all this damage. Winter needs to find a huge blade if they want any way of stopping this card. Well, first of all, he needs to build it. And that requires him being alive, and you can see he's so antsy. He wants to go in, but he doesn't want to put himself Ooh. at a deficit for his team. Blade already built, now he can go for the but he doesn't even need to pull out the ultimate door. Getting that pick is huge. BLG just need to win one of these fights, and then they can secure themselves up the high ground and pick on O2. It's so hard for an attacking team to get safely onto that payload and punch point C because you just take so much point damage before the fight properly starts. And with that damage, it's going to be charging up the ultimate of O2 Blaster, looking to make one last push to end this thing right here, right now. Gravitic Flux is likely to be used aggressively, although they may want to hold on to it to stop Winter's Blade, which should be coming in pretty soon. They've dropped the Bongo, they've dropped everything to try and combo. Gravitic Flux aggressively, though, from O2 Blast, catches Zaijin out. Now proper looking for the back line, looking for a dynamite onto the bongo, take away the key ability. Amplification Matrix is going to stall out even more time. We're getting into final fight territory, Moxie. But Pelican's got this blade coming into it and proper ready set up on the sidelines, keeping out of sight while still hammering in damage. That's all Billy Billy need right now is one big blade, one huge flux. Well, the blade is relatively medium sized i'll give it that uh, no we're gonna downgrade that to a small no value found and o2 blast have more ultimates to boot and to punish the backline being looked for here pelican still dishing out tons of damage the application matrix making things even worse bob chucked in at a point only the brigitte remains and with 40 seconds on the clock it looks like o2 blast are gonna secure themselves the end of king's row billy billy weren't able to utilize the high grind proper bonus that you get gifted by the map designers when that payload rolls into point C. You win a single of those fights in that distance though, and you get prime position to pick off people, to drop things like amplification matrix or supercharges to force teams away for a good 10, 20 seconds. And that was all Billy Billy had to do. Keep delaying until they were able to come in with counters until they would have something to deal with Pen Pelican's Blade, but they give up the space door. They give up the high ground, they pull back, they try and go for the sort of numbers regroup rather than spreading their forces and trying to hold that estate, and it comes back and it bites them. Because Proper sees that empty space and sets up shop. And now they got a set up shop on A. And Billy Billy have to break it yet again. They didn't have too many issues with the A point in their previous push. It was the B point that they ended up getting nearly full held on. I mean, 99.9% .9 definitely doesn't feel good to anybody, but O2 Blast especially are going to be kicking themselves for it because now you have another control point to break, and it might not be easy when O2 Blast are still running this signature double shield composition. Yeah, you can see Don't Say is actually on that Symmetra. This is something that teams have taken to just adapting around Choke. You use it to just teleport everyone up onto Feta, and you can see there they go one by one to try and negate having to bypass all of that spam damage. Since they're going to be popping onto the Ash, trying to feel a little bit more contest proper, because right now Billy Billy moving up the steps, open themselves up to both that Ash and that Sigma parked up on that high ground. And this is why you don't do that. When your team gets separated away in double shield, you lose out on so much sustain. Each of those little hit squads is their own little pool of health. But Double Shield has so much damage that you can rip through it. Now looking to follow up on that. They know they're a member up. They know they can push out Billy Billy. Trying to just get 
back to where they came from. O2 holding this beautifully right now. O2 knowing as well that they can't use that symmetric strategy to try and negate choke a second time. So all they have to do is wait for Billy Billy to walk into them because right now Prop has got advantage. Look at the difference in ultras between not just the Ash but the Genjis as well. O2 has set themselves up nicely to win yet another fight. They're playing extremely patiently because they know they're going to have the ultimate advantage should they get to that point in the game. It's getting there, that's the tricky part. They've already given up the space. They have nothing left to give up. They have to contest at some point here. Their amplification matrix is thrown in. The tanks are on the point, but the team is completely separated. The ultimate advantage be damn Billy Billy are going to be taking this one. Proper fragmented their forces a little bit. Amplification Matrix gets dropped, but it finds next to no value because Saijin actually throws the Sigma Shield right in front of it. And by the time Prop is actually broken through that, all of the team are already dead. There's no returning from it. O2 now, they're in that place. They've got that Sigma Flex. They've got this blade. They can do with them up. Get that Sigma Flex to drop Billy Billy below 50% health to cut. Bleed out Immortality Field, setting Pelican up for this blade because they just need that one fight and then they can push Billy Billy back into choke. Force out that time bank once again to be burned down so low as Billy Billy try and negate that space. It's far from guaranteed though. Billy Billy have ultimates of their own. If they can get him up, the Grunic Flux is super aggressive. Immortality Field forced out. The door opened wide here for Pelican. They throw in the blade, they throw in the Bob combo, the same exact thing that they did earlier on Temple of Anubis, but this time ain't working nearly as well because BLG Winter is in your back line. Anything you can do, we can do better if we initiate with it. That was the problem. O2 opened with the Sigma Flux, but there was too much time between Sigma Flux coming in and Pelican trying to follow up with the blade. You'd already been healed up by Salvation on the side of Billy Billy, and then you could open your way up for that blade, and now you can set up for this next fight. Superchargers, Bob, Rally, Aggression, Sustainability, available in spades for the team. Aggression is going to continue to come out from this team, as well as the Bob and the Bongo are throwing in so much damage, being chucked the way of O2, who don't have any ultimates to boot. But O2 will be coming in with a supercharger. And if there's one thing that OT needs right now, it's something that just stops Billy Billy's momentum. Because you can see, these attackers, they're confident. They're searching ahead. They're trying to build up to ultimate. Salvation wants to get the amplification matrix online, so you've got something to challenge the space. The Axon is going to be able to guarantee when superchargers hit that ground. They need to find another Hall combo, but their teammates are getting separated away. They need to be very careful. They don't get picked off here. Back in the hallway, they're open to taking a lot of damage, not to mention the fact that Amplification Matrix is going to be a living hell to actually get through. They've wrapped their way all the way around Billy Billy, and that has netted them a frag proper on the sideline, hits a headshot onto Zygen, and that should be enough to close out and finally stabilize here for O2. And now Billy Billy, they've got to be able to get safely back from that spawn room onto the payload while dodging all of these ultimates that O2 are going to be laying in their path as obstacles. First, you drop Amplification Matrix. That buys you time. That forces Billy Billy back. That puts the clock at around about 3 minutes 20. Then Pelican comes in with a blade. You send Proper in with that Bob. That guarantees you at least a minute off. If you're able to play your card right, Billy Billy has got to be patient. They can't lose their Orisa first. You forgot, patient is not a word in these guys' dictionary. Defense is for suckers, as the saying goes. Uh, Billy Billy sent right back to spawn. Patience is something that you have when you survive a <laughs> door. <laughs> and I worry, if Billy Billy aren't patient, then they are just going to lose member after member after member, one by one, until that time bank is reduced first to two minutes, then to one. Time bank ticking down. It's starting to feel like Temple of Anubis all over. And they came in with so much time, such a healthy bank, and now O2 Blaster staggering them out one ultimate at a time. Not even an ultimate needed in that one. Pelican able to keep a hold of Blade. Galius going to be holding on to the Sigma Flex. Billy Billy will have that combination available to themselves, but you've actually got to be able to get close enough to use it without the Genji or the Sigma going down first. And unfortunately, the way that C is set out, look how open that space is. If Saijin goes in when the team aren't controlling that space, he's gone in seconds. This is about to get real painful. Pelican has the blade. Kalios has a great flux for the ages lined up. If he so chooses to take, in fact, he absolutely will. Picks up both the tanks, lays down the bob, don't say follows, and Billy Billy, I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, sent back to spawn after just one ultimate. They're fighting their way back in. No, it's not over. They got a great 
of their own. Winter's got a blade for the follow-up. Can they find the frags is the question. Finn's followed up. So there is no sustain for this team left. O2 Blast will be set back if they can't find the kills right here, right now. But O2 are going to try and equalize with the supercharge. Pelican not going to be putting the blade in just yet. Means that that ultimate effectively wasted as O2 lose it and the space that they tried to buy with it. I love the patience here from Billy Billy. They now have ultimates to follow this up. They've got Blade, they've got Supercharger, Amplification Matrix. O2 are going to be taking one massive big step away in this next fight. And that is a step that they cannot afford with that payload being so close. Time is taking down. We're nearing the same exact time bank. O2 looking to put on the same exact hold and end this series at a clean 3 0. Boston ducked out early. Oh no! Another one down to his brother from earlier. So young, so much to live for, but Winter's got even more to do, so the Blade comes in, finds two, looking for a third, Billy Billy looking to put themselves onto the end of the map, half, half the team finish off, Neko finds one of his own though, the spawns are going to start to come in, but are they going to contest it's the big question, the cart spiraling out of control, running for just a two tenths of a meter to go, and it's Billy Billy equalizing with just 30 seconds more on the clock. Billy Billy looking strong and all of that spirals from the most unfortunate of instances. Don't we've all done it? We've all been Ash. We've all accidentally sent Bob off the point. In fact, cast your mind back to way back when Overwatch League actually ran all of the statistics. And we got to see many a Bob sent off a map in a highlight reel that I think is still up on their official Twitter. <laughs> Definitely a, a couple of, of moments that you can you can try and slot in towards here that the series has given us. We, we, we've had some ladder numbers, we've had some Bob do some things where Bob does do something, but it's perhaps not quite the right thing. As Billy Billy are able to give themselves a really good shot at picking up a map, this team has looked extremely strong in King's Row. I mean though, Mox, you and I know better than anybody else, a good time bank doesn't guarantee you anything, much less against a team as good, as pedigreed, as O2 Blast, who are looking to seal out this series off the back of some very well coordinated play. Billy Billy are not out of the woods yet. You've gotten yourself a time extension, but it's about making the most of it. We want to see a full A hold here from them. Absolutely nothing else will do. Well, they have to be extremely careful because Proper will be hovering on that high ledge as the Widowmaker if you're able to get a single shot early off then that will be securing O2 the point. The Proper not going to be able to find it already, going to be swapping on to the Ash, and Callius would have had a really nice patient, but it is blocked by Gagan. And a lot of damage being thrown the way of O2 currently. It's Billy Billy who has had the lead in the way of Halt, but that's a big one. Great eat! Denies a ton of the damage by Zaijin. Now looking for the counter engage. Great immortality field keeps him alive, but it is used relatively early. It's just enough time though for Over and Zaijin to go down. The first point hold is falling to bits here, Moxie. Billy Billy are being pushed past their limits. There's a silver lining in that situation though. Billy Billy takes so much damage. That amplification matrix is already available for salvation. But Finn is going to be closing in on one himself, and that means advantage dwindling back to nothing if Billy Billy aren't quick enough. They're going to be in that position where you've got to drop amplification matrix just to keep O2 from being just moving past this choke. This is what Billy Billy need to find an advantage. It's the overtime ticker. They've got to wait just a little bit longer. And you've already said it, though. Waiting isn't really in this team's strong suits. No, neither is the overtime, though. And with that, O2 Blast have to find a way to get through amplification matrix and buy a lot of space. Soak in a dynamite! Proper connects. O2 opens things up right. Now with a severely lacking DPS line, Billy Billy have to find a way with the help of this Gravitic Flux, with the help of the Amplification Makes to find their way in, and it absolutely well. Proper's Bob though finds two to trade it out! A huge blade from Pelican as well gets one. It may not be that big, but it is definitely big enough to keep O2 rolling. It's the salvation play. O2 are able to win that fight off the back of that Bob coming in and doing a big old bunch of something. And now that Overtime Wick will continue to burn down, and unfortunately for Billy Billy, they're going to be playing the waiting game a little bit longer. Though. Supercharges can be the one thing that ejects O2 oh, off prop this point, but Prop is on the Widowmaker now, which means you can't lose that Batiste, you can't lose any of these squishies early on, otherwise O2 are going to get that Caleb continuing to move on through. 
And Bongo Ant Matrix is a deceivingly powerful combo. So much damage is going to be thrown the way of Billy Billy Gaming. And they don't have really anything to stop it. The Rally's going to give them a little bit of health. Buy them time to get their own ball go online. But you can't stop the Gravitic Flux from coming in. It catches Zaijin. Drops him low. Winter's the one who pays for it in the end, though, as the Bongo is still up here for O2, who make it all the way through. Be uncontested! At the moment, Proffer is uncontested as well. Because Winter's the one trying to go for the Widowmaker. But that means that Vigendi is not doing the damage that he should be. He's not the presence, the threat that the front line needs to be kept in check. And you can already see, it's Don't Say is trying to go for that Widowmaker deal, but it's just not enough. Proffer is able to stay alive, Dor. But Don't Say has achieved very little up until now. Finally, he regroups with his team and takes out Kalios, but he's got a lot of work to do because O2 are coming up on a couple of ultimates here. Pelican has the blade, can't get it online. The rally's gonna give him a lot of sustain. The spawns are coming in though for Billy Billy. That advantage finally kicking in. Pelican's blade has to be massive if they ever wanna make it past here. Get themselves one, get themselves a second. Can he make the hero play? Gravitic Flux picks him up, slams him right back down where he came from. Billy Billy are gonna be holding on likely here at sea. No, Gravitic Flux's spawns are in for O2. How are they not out of this, Moxie? Well, Wind is trying to make sure that they stay dead in that ground. He's able to pick off the Dampest. The blade comes on through, cuts down that amplification matrix, and oh, two. They just they're refuse still to die. The fight's still going on. Yakfung is on the Hammond. Prop is trying to come back onto the Genji, but don't say he's uncontested right now. All O2 can do is try and hide behind that payload and send the Hammond after this Widowmaker's blood. Every single meter counts right now for O2. I don't, there's no way they actually make it all the way through this. With a one minute time bank, Moxie, they have put up some ridiculous numbers. Great deflect, don't say goes down. It's another one man advantage here for O2 Blast, even with the temporary swaps, even with the Hammond. They're coming at it with everything. Over drops down incredibly low. The Baptiste is doing everything in his power to keep him alive, holding on to the immortality field. Salvation doing a fantastic job building up another application matrix here. Kalios falls off the map. And with that, O2 Blast lose a significant amount of damage. Pelican coming in the back line, doing everything he can to try and seal this one out. Overtime constantly taking down, but it's proper in the kill scene too! With one swift strike, cleaning up a third of the court, still going, Moxie! Don't say on to the McCree, trying to shut the Skenji down, but he actually flashbangs into the deflect, and proper just cleans up house. And now he can clean up this next team fight. He's so close to this blade. BLG, they're not gonna have EMP to stop it. They don't have ultimate, they don't have anything. It's proper with a blade and a dream. Pelican looks to connect the pulse bomb the court. Nearing the end here. They've made it two times through with just a minute on the clock. Howling God's name, do you even do that? It was all down to the fact that O2 are able to stick on that payload for that checkpoint on B. The fact that Billy Billy weren't able to eject that team for a fight that went on for so long. I think we would have burned through the entirety of a point B time bank normally <laughs> on King's Row on how long that payload was stuck on that spot though. And a lot of it comes down to how OT actually acted around about those swaps. Yakupon going on to the Hammond meant that Don't Say did not have free reign. That Widowmaker, when you move on to the high ledge and there's nothing contesting you, you're picking up shots. You're forcing O2 to just hunker around the payload in the hopes that you don't go down to that one tap potential. But when you send Yakupon away, yes, you do deprive yourself of a lot of staying power, a lot of presence on that payload with that massive amount of health that open to him. But you also open up the space for the rest of your team members to actually live, to actually play the game. And Billy Billy, I worry for this team door. It took them a very long time to work out this first initial choke, and with only one minute, 31 seconds on the clock, if they get stuffed up at this choke, they're not going to be seeing any more of these world. Yeah, that 30 second time advantage is looking a lot less cash money right about now for Billy Billy, but they got to give it all they got. Again, it is everything on the line for this map, looking to be the great equalizer, bring them back into this series. They have to break this point A almost immediately if they want to put up a time, if they want to even reach the end of the map the same way that O2 blasted. Very aggressive shielding, very aggressive play here from Billy. They're going for absolutely everything. Mortality Field has still not been forced out until finally O2 blast has to use it. Their hand has been pushed through. Billy Billy using the later Immortality Field will have the advantage will have the damage and are starting to rip through these O2 health bars. Don't say able to pick up the Orissa. Now there is no shield 
Barring that Sigma for O2 to hide behind, and not even that is going to be able to save them if you're able to stagger out this fight. And Billy Billy are setting themselves up really cleanly. So this next engagement, don't say already going to be setting himself up on that higher ground, trying to hold a little bit closer towards that ultimate. Billy Billy, they need to take every single advantage they can get though, because pretty soon that 30 seconds is going to be running out. And if O2 were able to win a single fight in between then, Billy Billy gonna have a real hard time getting through this choke, even let any of these fights afterwards be on an even footing. Yeah, point A was only the first issue they have to solve. Now with just an application matrix, maybe a gravitic flux, O2 are gonna be able to try and stop them here. Things get tough for Billy Billy from here on out. Starting with the amplification, makes his dynamite on over, finding plenty of damage. Kinetic Grasp and the Immortality Field have already been forced out. Billy Billy have won this fight beautifully, forcing O2 Blast back around the corner. They've got ultimates to spare, and it is Winter cleaning up on the Genji. We've already seen one full push of King Throw in over time. Now Billy Billy are going to have to replicate that success which means they have to kick off each and every one of these engagements. Because if O2 feel at any moment or this fight is going their favor, they will invest every single circle that is going to be coming up to them. And Billy Billy, Immortality Field is not going to be enough to keep you up and alive at that point. No, and it seems like O2 are willing to literally just wait until they have six buttons to press and then press them all at once. In they come, starting with Neko's Rally, looking for more, overcomes Winter, Gravitic Flux is going to put a little bit of a stop to that for the time being, trying to follow up on the damage, Immortality Field has been forced out, the health bars are low, Winter finally finishes off one, but goes down in his own right, Bop thrown in, it's been huge from proper four, looks to do it again, now it's going to be their turn, O2 throwing everything and the kitchen sink into this fight, finding all the frags onto Billy Billy, looking to stop him here at the end of point B, not giving away the point, uncharacteristically, O2 blast stabilizing, doing their best with the help of the Immortality Field, but it's not enough. Yachpun's putting out the blasters, and it's O2 Blast coming to close out the series. 3 -do. It's the curse, door. Every single game that we've cast today has been a clean free and no, but I think those scores really do disguise how close some of these matches have been. Especially King's Row between O2 and Billy Billy was so very close. And I don't think it was anywhere near as far apart as anyone expects coming into this. O2 have been favored to win the entire thing. Billy Billy have been trying to make a name for themselves and with the performance that they put on today, they've definitely done that. They had a couple of moments where they struggled, specifically on chokes, specifically walking through those. But as soon as they were able to actually move into those open spaces, when they were able to force O2 into putting Immortality Field down early, the inevitable punishment came immediately. And that was all you can ask for a team. Yeah, it's a classic 3-0, but it was close, and uh, it was close. That last map was ridiculously good from both sides. Billy Billy proved that they came to play, proved that they had something up their sleeve, but O2 Blast on the mirror matchup on the double shield was just too strong today. And my god, did they look impressive. Everything this team did just seemingly found them frags wherever they went and in their wake. Just pure destruction of the teams they've come up against. They are looking very, very strong going into the rest of this tournament. Ladies and gents, though, that's going to be all we have for you today. Be sure to keep tuned, though, because tomorrow and the day after, we got more and more and more action from the next tournament. You guys won't want to be missing any of that. Be sure to follow and subscribe to Monkey Bubble to keep up with all of the English casting. You can follow Moxie and I at our Twitter handles below if you like supporting us. But keep an eye out, especially for that next broadcast. You won't want to be missing it. Ladies and gents, that's all we got for today. Thank you so much for watching and take it easy.